Welcome to the official recap for Save vs. Games full-length weekly campaign, Curse of Strahd. I'm Greg, DM at Save vs. Games, and before we jump into our recap, I want to thank you, not only our Discord community for all their support, but my players as well. Stephanie, Lee, Jesse, Peter, and Jen... You've all worked with me over the last year to create and evolve this official module for our friends and viewers on Twitch into something that I'm truly proud of, and I'm very glad that we've had the chance to share. A random group of strangers on the internet have become cornerstone members of our community and very close friends, and you guys can watch our story unfold live on Mondays on Twitch at twitch.tv slash save versus games where you can influence the story by earning points while you watch and spending those points to help our players try to get out of Barovia alive. Come hang out with us on Discord, stay in touch with the latest news. The link will be in the description below and please like and subscribe and comment below what your favorite parts are with timestamps. Without further ado, let's get into our first recap video that brings us into Barovia and explores the infamous Death House on Save vs. Games Presents The Curse of Strahd. So, we begin our adventure in the town of Daggerford. It's a relatively small town, when compared to Waterdeep to its north and Baldur's Gate to its south. Recently, Duchess Morrowind has struck a new trade deal, and as part of the negotiation, she's offered to host the wedding of a nobleman and a wealthy merchant's daughter at Castle Ducal, her keep in Daggerford. With tensions high, secrets abound, and so much profit on the line, she has asked for aid and sent out letters to some of the adventurers she has hired in the past. Most of our players have received these letters, personally addressed to them, and uh, they've been invited to stay in town at a place called the River Shining Tavern. Okay, so the basic description of Midnight would be, you know, typical, somewhat of a typical ward forged, except they look like a giant black suit of armor. But, but if you looked further upon Midnight, she is the armor. It's a black suit of armor, like a feminine armor shape, accents done in gold, little uh, red little poof coming out of the helmet. Goes down to about the waist, almost resembles like a ponytail. In the slits of the helmet, there are about two light blue orbs shining through where you think the eyes should be. 
She carries a long black sword and a black and gold kite shield with accents on the front of a long sword and a sprig of belladonna. Awesome. All right, so this guy, uh, this bartender comes over. Hi, right, lass. How are you today? Hello, barkeep. I'm doing fine on this nice evening. Hi. Can I get you something to drink? What do you have? What's the best that you have for here? Oh, uh, well, as you know, uh, got some of that red dragon ale here. Um, kind of short on stock lately, but that's pretty much all we got for ale. Um, you want something a little stronger? This may be an odd question for you, but do you by chance have any oil? Uh, well, what kind of, this is a, well, actually, come to think of it, and he starts walking down around, and he points down at the fire pit down here, he's like, if you'd like, we can uh, grab you some of these grease drippings. Pig drippings be good grease. That'll do fine, I need to oil up my armor just a little bit. Well, help yourself, miss, uh... I assume, miss, that uh, uh, it's hard to, uh, sorry if I offend, the, uh, the, the ponytail there is, uh, quite nice. Uh, he, here's a ladle. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, like, you... take a ladle and, like, a mug off the bar and just kind of walk up and start <laughs> filling a mug. <laughs> Does he come back later expecting a tip? <laughs> Cole steps into the doorway. And he stops there for a moment, looks around at each of the tables, just to see a little glimpse of the faces there. And then he makes his way over to the bar as well and takes the second stool. He did glance at that pig on his way by. And he looks at the bartender and says, hello, my friend. Hi, sir. How are you tonight? I am doing well. I hope that you have salty water, as my throat is parched. Salty water? Um, hey, uh, Helen, you you got any salt water here? We left uh, no. We got soapy water. No, sir. I am a triton, a priest of Persana. I cannot partake in alcohol and. Obviously, soapy water won't clean the insides the way salty water will. Oh, I got an idea. And he goes over to the counter and grabs a glass of water and a sausage and pops the sausage into the water. Salty water. I'm sorry, sir. I said salty water, not sausage water. Oh, it's a pretty salty sausage. <laughs> okay, so... Krim walks in to the tavern, looks around um, for any open table. The first thing any of the tavern keeper or any of the tavern patrons see is a bird-like creature. Um, since kankus are, what do you call this, um, are less rare, I forgot the term, are less rare than Arakokra at first, they would probably think that it's a kanku, but seeing as how Krim is definitely not black, um, they would think otherwise. Um, upon looking at him, um, his wings are out, aside from the few pieces of clothing that he wears, he's hooded. His wings is, uh, his wings are mostly red or dark reddish, um, and a bit of blue on top. He looks around, goes to the tar uh, tavern keep or to the bar, wherever it is, so there you go. Sits by the stool, asks for it, and addresses the tavern keeper. Hey, um, do you have some grub? Oh, yeah. How's it going there, lad? Um, oh. You're nice and colorful. We don't get these wings. It, it's not as colorful as it used to be. Anyway, grub, please. Oh, what do you have? Sausage? Uh, pork? Uh, fresh seafood? Oh, um, do you have anything made of plants? I, I don't eat meat. Uh... Blueberry pie, raspberry Blueberry pie. pie. Sounds good. All right. 
Uh, you want to help yourself or uh, here, get, get your plate? It looks nice. There's a big then... knife there. Guest seat free if you're a uh, guest of the place, but if you're not taking a room, then uh, it's going to be f five silver. Oh, I, I have a room. I think then he rummages for his pack. He looks at, um, he takes out the note that was given to him, tells him, I have a room here, then gives, gives the note to the tavern keep. Room coming up for you, sir. Uh, just give us a little while, and uh, I'm sure one will be ready. Uh, Great. Pies on the house. Help yourself. Thank you. Then he takes the pie, moves on to another table, um, all prim and proper. Like then, every now and then, if someone's looking at him, they they can see that his head is um, bobbing up and down, pecking the pie while moving towards the table. Does he have like a regal air about him, like a, a air of nobility? Somewhat, because um, he recognizes that his kind is somewhat unique. So he revels in the fact that you know not a lot of people have seen Narcocles before. Hmm. Hypothetically, if he was carrying gold on him, how much would he be carrying? It doesn't look like he's rich, though. He just uh -huh. looks, yeah, he, he looks um, pretty. He's, he looks regal, but he doesn't look like he's rich. Okay. So Mira will walk into the tavern and she's looking around like she's obviously searching for something. Um, she would be fairly, a fairly unassuming human if you were to look at her, um, except that she seems to be kind of armed to the teeth. She's got two rapiers at her side, a crossbow on her back. Um, her belt is lined with small throwing tires and uh, she looks around um, but what's interesting is among that, she also has a pipe flute also on her belt. And she'll go over to the bar and she's looking for something, doesn't seem to be finding it. She'll go over to the barkeep and be like, Oi, barkeep. Oh, I... Give me a give me a mead. Oh, oh, oh no problem, lad. Dragon ale number three. Here it comes. Here you go, lass. That'll be five silver. Uh, any room discount? Uh, yeah, uh, you, you stay in here? I am. I believe I have a room under Orwin. Oh, are you a guest of the Duchess? Yes, no problem. Uh, yeah, here's the ale. Um, give us a minute. We'll have the rooms ready. No problem. Thanks. And actually, Mira, when you're taking a second to look around, you, uh, you do a double take because you kind and part of your your training is to never really, you know, be caught looking at somebody after you've noticed them. Uh, so you you did actually notice that over here there was a familiar looking face sitting at that table, kind of in the dark in the back a little bit. Uh, he's It looks actually a lot like the guy who walked into your shop that day. That guy who sells you wine sometimes. The guy who sells Orwin wine. She's going to down her mead like she's like stealing herself and she'll go over the, to the man. To Aragal. To, yes. Yeah, and you, you she'll... Remember, you remember his name because you remember him talking with Orwin. You, you've seen him in the shop a few times over the years mm -hmm. and he's like one of the uh, eccentric visitors that mm -hmm. Orwin gets sometimes um, and then she'll take out her dagger um, kind of incognito she doesn't want anybody to see her do it and smile and kind of lean over towards Aragal and put her dagger to his side not stabbing him but just put her dagger to his side and be like where is Orwin? Ah, Or Orwin. Yes, uh, I, I rec, I know your face. It is a fair face, <laughs> as fair as they can be, right? I must help in your line of work. <clears throat> Orwin. Yeah, I, I have not heard from Orwin lately. It is. Uh, how is he? I wouldn't know because I know your face too, and the last time I saw it was the last time that I saw him. Uh, well, 
the last time I saw Orwin was probably uh, a month ago almost. Uh, I have no idea where he is now. She'll kind of like dig the dagger a little bit, not like trying to hurt him, but like trying to intimidate him for sure. Um, okay. Roll a intimidation check then. Okay. Let's see here. That that would be a sixteen. Oh, I uh, I I I I don't know where the man is. It uh, is not uh, a lie. Uh, I might have an idea, but I don't know for sure. You might have an idea. He looks over at his buddy at the table, and he's like, "Well." It is troubling news that Orwin is gone. Uh, he was a good man, despite his uh, flaws. Yes, <laughs> this is troubling news. Uh, we must we must drink to Orwin, and he he trying to call for a drink, and uh, one of the servers sees him and starts you know getting some drinks together. He's like, I have an idea where your friend might be. Um, if he wandered out to find us one day, it's possible. Um, you're welcome to come to our camp later, see if anyone has seen him. I am, uh, you know, you can join us after the wedding tomorrow, possibly. All right, I would like to do an, this is going to go terribly, but I would like to do an insight check if I should be worried for my safety, should I follow him to his camp oh no we are uh, a peaceful people you will love the camp I uh, my family is actually um, the reason I come talk to Orwin was to uh, help him uh, or have him help me uh, build the winery we are uh, having problems making things happen quickly enough and uh, he may have been able to help hmm We have uh, fun and singing and drinking at the cavern caravan to do tonight and tomorrow. And it will be a wonderful celebration. And then we will go look. We will visit the in inner lands and find out if your friend is there. If you are lying, to me, there will be a price to pay. I uh, am not a man who minces words. And I am a woman of action. And then she'll put her dagger away. She says, I will see you after the wedding. I, I hope you do, ma'am. I hope you do. All right, and she'll... She's like kind of side-eyeing him back as she walks back over to the bar. He's like... Looking and for signals the drink for another still. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So then, yeah, we have our last PC coming in. Um, and now we have Chris walking into the bar. Okay. Uh, Chris strides in uh, with a sense of purpose and uh, business. He's wearing uh, simple but uh, well-maintained town clothes. They uh, are uh, grays and navy blues. Um, the folds and creases of them uh, have been um, pressed many times, um, but uh, he has taken uh, remarkably good care, kind of preserving this one good suit that he has. You can see that his hands are his hands are uh, a little bit uh, meatier, meatier than most. Uh, he spends a lot of time uh, working with wood tools, and it shows little nut uh, cuts and scrapes. Uh, there's a, a focus in his eyes, a clear, a, a clearness in them, um, but they seem to be lacking a little bit uh, in what should be a rich green color. It seems a little bit faded for some reason. As he strides to the bar, he sees the keep and says, Tobias, how's it going, my friend? Hello, hello. How, how are you? Is that bastard Argyle in here? I got part of the shipment he wanted. I've probably got about... Uh... Yeah, no, right back in the corner, as always. Oh, uh, yes. Loves to stick for the shadows. 
All right. Oh, look at this. Quite a crowd we have in here tonight. Was it so? What are you, Miss? You smell of bacon and look of steel. Midnight will turn around from the bar stool and greet Chris and say, "Hello, I'm a warforged." Is this mid application of of like greasing her joints? No, that she's already greased she's her already joints. Done. She's currently drinking the rest of it. Drinking? Oh my! You have uh, quite the appetite. Um, well, if I have. Uh, uh, all right, that's interesting. Uh, and he sees uh, uh, the Triton. Oh, one of the, one of the. What do you call yourselves? I've I've heard stories of your people, but I've never I've never thought to meet one. Welcome, friend. We are called Tritons. We come from the sea. Oh, uh, wonderful. Um, well, I won't make, uh, I always thought you were called Spearmans or something like, I, I heard that you could, uh, speak with, with fish. Is that true? Well, I'm not one to brag, but no, no, no. we don't speak with fish. We, we can communicate basic thoughts to them, but that's as far as it goes. Hmm. Well, that's definitely more than I can do. What about, I see that there's some fine specimens over there in the fish tank. Are, do they have any type of thoughts? How do they like the place? All I'm picking up is that they don't want to die. And, okay, that has to be really disturbing to be there with your meal and there's a bunch of creatures begging for their lives. Does that bother you? Hey, look, no. these... These uh, fish here, these these crustaceans were ethically sourced, all right? I don't need any trouble from you. Yeah, tap on the glass. Hello there, little friends. Do you know that you're ethically sourced? <laughs> Are you Does still... that make you feel any better? <laughs> Are you still in the they middle of no. the bar there? Yeah, I'm just I'm just walking around. I don't actually know where the fish tank is. Oh, okay. Uh, okay. Where is the fish tank? There's a, it's not a tank, it's a pot of uh, <laughs> lobsters and stuff. Oh, okay, so I'm standing over a pot shouting at water. <laughs> yeah. Apparently, Chris doesn't know what boundaries are. <laughs> Get out of the kitchen, Chris. <laughs> you jerk. Well, anyways, I have a, I have a delivery to make. Uh, it was a pleasure meeting you all. Um, if you ever need uh, uh, wine barrels or any sort of Cooper work, uh, my name is Chris Cooper, and uh, I am Cooper Extraordinaire. Um, Upon uh, hearing that, this man over here at the table stands up and walks slowly towards you. Are you the what was it? The vis vis visani vasectomy vistani? <laughs> I presume uh, you are Chris, yes. The one and only. It is good to meet you, Chris. Please, please, sit, have a drink, join me and uh, my vistani friend. Vistani. Uh, Vistani. Is that how you say it? <laughs> yes, that is it. Vistani. Hmm. It doesn't really roll off my tongue. Uh, I, yes, I have a delivery of uh, five barrels, and uh, the fermenter uh, is nearly complete. We should have it ready by tomorrow. Tomorrow? This is good news. Very good what news. What can I say? You hired the best. Uh, your boss, Evan, he told me uh, it might be a little longer than uh, tomorrow. Well, Let's you know, see. he always likes to uh, under-promise and over-deliver, and I'm more of a over-promise. And, uh, uh, anyways, how's the wine here? <laughs> oh, excellent. Here. And he, or he's still waiting for that same other drink to come over. But finally, she does actually come over, and she... Has an extra drink for, uh, or no, it's the wrong one. Boop, boop. She has an extra drink for you because she was going to bring one over for Mira, but Mira's ah, got her this own. This is a welcome sight after a long day on the road. So, Argyle, what do you make of those strangers over there at the bar? Uh, first of all, uh, it is Aragal. Uh, yes, Aragal, that's what I was saying. To you, Chris, my new friend. May your life be long and happy. And I if hope the lacking in the is. ladder, I hope the, uh, if it does lack in the ladder, then I hope the former is uh, shorter, yes? <laughs> yes, to uh, long days and pleasant nights. Yes, yes. So, um, 
you are to do uh, anything I uh, ask tonight, eh? This, this is what uh, Evan has given me the impression of. Absolutely. I always enter into binding contracts blindly. I have uh, a small favor that is all I have to ask. Wonderful. You know, the last small favor a uh, person asked me for, I, I ended up in uh, the uh, sober tank for a little while. <laughs> well, this favor is um, not that complex, I don't think. I have a bottle of wine here in my bag that I uh, wish to give to the Duchess. It is a very special wine, yes, and I know that she has a very special uh, celebration coming up. So this is the reason that I hire you, yes? Yes. Uh, if anybody is to be entrusted with a bottle of wine, it should be me. Good, good. This wine is very expensive, and your boss has ensured me that uh, you will uh, come through on this. It is very important that the Duchess does receive this. Oh, what were you saying? It is very important that Duchess. Oh does yes, the Duchess, this. of course. Yes, uh, yeah, sure. And so he was just like distracted by some <laughs> young woman that just came through the door. Is there a let letter, some uh, formal um, correspondence you'd like to leave with me to deliver to her? Yes, yes. And he pulls out uh, from the bag. He puts the letter on the table. <laughs> And puts the bottle on top of the letter. And he says, uh, You will give her this wine, yes? You have my word. I just would like to know, why don't you attend in person? It seems to be quite valuable to you that she receives this. And uh, This uh, celebration would uh, be tainted by my presence, I believe. Uh, that is a very foreboding and ominous thing to say. These these people uh, do not understand our culture all the time, and uh, some of them might not wish to do business with us. If they do not know they are doing business with us, no one is the wiser. What? Uh, I regret asking questions. Ah, oh, they only lead to more questions. Uh, okay. All right. Uh, I'm just going to pretend that I didn't hear that. And uh, pretend that I am not uh, running contraband. Okay. Uh, well, uh, this bottle of wine I will deliver. <laughs> okay, very nice. Uh, you, you will see on the letter there, uh, you will have a room here. It is my room, but uh, you can take it. And um, yes, we must drink. We must drink and celebrate. I will uh, be leaving tonight to back to my camp. But... You can come meet me tomorrow after the wedding. All right. Buddy, I'm getting some mixed sense here. You give me a bottle of wine. You give me the keys to your room. <laughs> no, uh, the camp. You can come tell me of the success of your journey to the <laughs> Duchess tomorrow. I will be at oh. my camp after the wedding. Y yes. All right. Um, well, I mean, you know, having your room keys and all bad, you know, a few bottles of wine. Who knows what will happen? I am leaving the tavern tonight, friend. No worries. <laughs> the room is yours. No, you can stay if you want. You know, it's no problem on my part. <laughs> uh, well, I will be at my camp. You uh, can stay here if you like. <laughs> All right. Well, you decide you want to learn how to party. Come back. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so he ends up... Uh... All right, let's uh... depart, eh? And Anton and Aragal walk out of the bar, elbow in elbow, laughing. Ha <laughs> ha great times, oh, yes. I see why I didn't want to stay. He already had somebody. <laughs> Investigation check on the bottle. Is it indeed wine? Oh, yeah, no, it's, a, it's actually a very nice-looking bottle. It's a protective wooden cage. Like a sleeve? It's a sleeve, yeah, but it's even... Like a wine more, koozie? It, it, it's an ancient wine koozie <laughs> made of, like, some type of bamboo-style wood. Yeah, okay. And uh, you can actually read the label, which is faded. It's old. 
It's very faded, but it says Champagne de la Stomp. Looks like wow, such a, a lot of care. A classy and refined name, looks, La Stomp. Exactly. Must have a proud heritage. It looks like a lot of care went into making the holder even, so the bottle must be pretty expensive. It's finely crafted. It's not like a... It's not a... Is this a palm that I'm holding? Could this be used to kill the queen? I, I, I'm... Just, He's seriously concerned that he is going to deliver some sort of weapon. Uh, it doesn't. It's not a weapon, is it? We'll make me an investigation check on it. Okay. And if, do, or if do, you do. like, you could do. Um, I am super good at investigation. Use your insight, if you like, your wisdom type thing. Okay. <laughs> yeah, to you, it's like just a really expensive-looking <laughs> dusty bottle of wine. It has not. One thing you can tell is that nobody's tried to open this thing. Okay. I'm going to go over to the three people dusty. at the bar uh, that had walked in earlier. And now that I've had a few drinks, which I would like to take that three on the roll since I've had a few drinks. Um, <laughs> uh, I rolled so low that I believe Chris would believe that this is some sort of uh, device of ill intent. Uh, and he needs somebody to help it look it over. So I guess he'll go... Uh, let's just roll. Roll 1d3. 1. Uh, the woman with the loot on her back. She seems worldly enough to understand uh, what is good and what is bad. Um, excuse me, uh, miss. <laughs> I, yes. usually wouldn't, I, I usually wouldn't ask this of a, of a person, but I've had a few too many drinks, and I just got this uh, amazing bottle of wine. I'm not ago. interested. No, I think it might be a weapon. Wait, what? <laughs> yeah, like I looked at it, and it's got this elaborate case on it, and I, I've never seen something like this. It doesn't even look like it's from this land. And uh, what is is this? Is this just wine, or is this something more? Okay. Uh, I mean, she's also Sarah has also be had probably a few pints of meat at this point right i was just gonna say look at it i need you to give me a um let's do a, another investigation check with disadvantage as well because okay. you might have seen this before but whether you can recall right now or not let's see <laughs> that would be a six that would be a no you you do kind of it's it's like for a second there you get a glimpse that it you recognize it, but then you're like, it's wine. <laughs> I mean, yeah, it, it's, I mean, I don't know. It's wine. It's good wine. I think I've had this wine. Have I had this wine? I don't, I don't, I have never seen it. Have you? I, I don't, maybe. Tell me, tell me of your mysterious past. <laughs> <laughs> when, when could you have come across this? Uh, uh, I don't, probably well, in what, the shop at some point. I, mean... I tell you, in the shop, I'll tell you what I think this. I think this is some sort of concoction that, when it's unbottled, it will catch fire and burn the whole place to the ground. And I think the only thing we could do to save the queen is drink it right now, save her. I'm gonna do a wisdom roll for myself, which is gonna go horribly for me. Are you trying? But we're gonna to... do it. I was going to say, are you trying to convince her? Because that could be yeah, a I'm persuasion. I'm trying to convince myself as well. <laughs> okay. All right, so Mira's like, that sounds like a great idea. Let's. I think we absolutely should open this bottle of wine. Okay, we open the bottle of wine. All right. And then he, like, pours some extra cups and, like, slides them down the table. It's, uh, it's, po it's, 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 uh, to, this is, uh, it's poison or, I don't know. And then it didn't catch fire. It's have you drink it? Did you drink some? It's absolutely delicious. You've what do you think? Your 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 drunk brain is telling you that you wish you weren't drunk right now because you think this would actually be really good. <laughs> I think it's delicious, and there's something I can't. I can't quite put my finger on it. There's something... I don't know. There's something... Otherworldly about it, yes. Mir, give me another investigation check. It has okay. certain misty notes to it. <laughs> <laughs> Mir, 
Samir's just tanked. That level was a five. One rolls. Level one <laughs> rolls. That was a five. Well, and <clears throat> yeah. Yeah, it's no idea. You do not no. recognize it. You've then drank a mind. few really expensive bottles of wine that uh, Orwin has brought into his shop, and you know, it, it kind of reminds you a little bit of something like that. Arakakura, Arakakura, bird person. You want some? Yes, this is bird person. <laughs> he goes towards the table. He smells with um. I've heard it's been a hard season for bird people. Particularly when it comes to to mating, and it's none of my business. But you're welcome to share a drink with us if you like. Yes, mating season has been particularly difficult this time of year. <laughs> uh, he smells whatever it is you're giving him. Can I roll an investigation as well to find out what it is? If it's actually explosive, or if it's just really good? Yeah, no, please do. You 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 try to check is out the bottle. Uh. Okay, so you can tell that this wine is probably something that came out of like a, maybe a mummy's tomb or something. It's probably hundreds of years old. And you, you, you don't see this kind of a bottle of wine being opened in a tavern ever. Hmm. Yeah, this seems really old. And from my time with, your, with other humans, they told me that old wine is a good wine. He um, moves his meat closer to it. And then... <laughs> it's wine. Thank you. Then he sits up and looks around. Then he, he's just a really blank face. You can't get a read on him. It's like he's a robot. Uh, Krim, give me a constitution save. <laughs> uh-huh. Nice. Krim handles his first taste of alcohol with uh, no problem at all. <laughs> so uh, what? what's your name, stranger? Where you come from? I haven't seen many of your your kin around here. My name is Krim. Well, people call me Krim. Uh, the name I actually have is difficult to pronounce for your kind. I've learned, so you can call me Krim. Oh, go go ahead and say it. I, I love to indulge other cultures. It's actually. I see. Uh, all right. Well. Uh, Krim it is. Uh, Krim de la Krim. All right. Uh, I've heard rumors about uh, someone matching your description along the coast, getting into various brawls, making people wish. Uh, I, I don't actually I don't remember the rumors very well. What what were they again? Oh, um, if you've heard of rumors about a bird beating up people, getting his feathers blue, his previously blue feathers. Look at his feathers. That's not me. See? I've learned that killing isn't something that's not frowned upon in your society, so that's not me. What? Who told you that? As he's like slinks away a little bit. We mean we ain't killing. How many people you killed? I I don't kill people. Okay, that is what a killer would say. This guy's over it. These guys over at the table take a take an ear to what you've just been saying. <laughs> they stop playing cards for a minute. Hey, anyways, well, uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna head out. Uh, there's a girl I know in town. Figure I'll check in on her, make sure she's doing okay. I'm use my rustic hospitality. Uh, <laughs> boop. The one time I think it will be used, uh, and let's see if she has a boyfriend. <laughs> Roll to seven. What does that mean? <laughs> so, are, are you talking to this girl here, Helen? Or uh, sure. Or is it somebody... just some girl? Girl at the bar. Girl that he knew knew from a previous visit. Oh, okay. Uh, he was gonna go touch bases with her, but he hasn't seen her in like six months. Okay. Well, I'm gonna roll a d10, and as long as your seven is higher, things go well for you. I rolled a seven for my insight. Well, there you go. <laughs> okay, so I am sleeping in the wagon tonight. <laughs> uh, right out front of the tavern. 
and I reject the room in the tavern because, as uh, Chris puts it, I'm not going to be part of sedition or, or deception. All right, then he takes a wine bottle and then throws it on the ground, uh, but it's so well built that it just goes ding, 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 and rolls uh, along the ground. <laughs> okay, so you still have the bottle. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I'm gonna do the. I got a crink in my neck because I slept in a wagon uh, <laughs> while drunk. You did actually <laughs> find a wagon, but it's not the right wagon. No, I'm just. I'm just. You just wagon me around. You wagon. Don't, you don't really notice it's the wrong yeah. wagon until the next morning when you hear hooves on the cobblestone road, mm-hmm. and a wagon <laughs> approaches the the, the tavern. And it's actually uh, more of a like a carriage. It's got really nicely made or ornate wood carvings and everything all around it. A driver in a tuxedo-looking thing, but you know, a little more medieval. Medieval tuxedo. That could be a name. Um, <laughs> it sounds medieval like a, tuxedo. It sounds like an anime name. Um, <laughs> so yeah, like. Uh, if everybody's is everybody outside kind of thing waiting for the carriage and uh i picked up the bottle and i realize it is empty uh chris looks around in a panic and goes oh no uh ooh, somebody drank all my wine oh shit uh and then he's gonna run back into the tavern and go uh, uh or william is is it william or is it his brother tobias walter, walter. oh walter that yeah. one walter's there yep You've been up all night, Walter? Wow, you sure? He, I do love working. Yeah, he woke up. Somebody he's... drank all my wine last night. Oh, that happens to me all the time. Yeah, but people pay you for that. This is different. I was supposed to deliver this. This is very important. I need something to put in this right now. The, my ride is right outside. Whatever you have. Um... And I mean anything. Well... All right, and he looks back, and he's like, "There's still a cup of water with a sausage in it." <laughs> he puts that on the table. <laughs> Boom! Slams it on the bottle. <laughs> All right, uh, thanks, Walter. Uh, and he kind of like blinks a little bit. It's Walter, right? <laughs> you betcha, son. <laughs> All right, I owe you, man. I owe you so much. Thanks. And then he's gonna <laughs> run out the door, catch his ride. The driver pulls you guys up to the. So the doors there, and uh, you know, you guys notice the castle is actually like really well built. It's dwarven engineering that at its finest. Uh, if I shall attempt. I do not attempt. Well, Neither lo- do I. I'm this still is a, healing that alcohol. This is a <laughs> lovely elven building. My, look at the heavy stone work. The uh, art, uh, the the brutalist uh, art style, definitely elven. Uh, okay, so as you come into this uh, corridor in this room here, uh, you you can you can proceed forward, and there, you're being ferried down the hallway towards the banquet hall, and there's a bunch of other guests arriving as well. You guys, uh, you know, you can choose your seats because the other guests are kind of a lot of them are actually behind you, and you notice that there's uh, a good assortment of tables still available. Your... Do I see any open, like, flames, candles, like large candles? Uh, there are candles all over the room. This whole place okay. is lit by I candles. I will clandestinely uh, take one of the candles and then exit the room and uh, pour it around the wax seal of the wine bottle. So it looks like it was never opened. <laughs> Perfect. Or I'll, do, I'll do my best to make it look like it was yeah, never I'm opened. Gonna, I'm going to need a check on that. Give me a slight okay. hand check. I'm really that. Okay. You feel like you did a pretty good job. I am amazing. All right. <laughs> this is possible for this to come back and bite me in the ass. All right. And so, uh, yeah. You guys uh, see the wedding guests coming in. They're starting to pile in. There, uh, There's actually more seating in the back, but you've noticed that when you sit down at this table, there's a reserve for guests of Duchess Morwen sign on it. If you bring out your letters and show them, and you're allowed to stay up here at the front. 
Uh, you do see that there's a a woman sitting on her own over here in the back. She's a, a fortune teller, uh, from what you can tell, because she's uh, got a crystal ball on her table and she's divining uh, for various guests that have, uh, you know, they're sitting around and waiting for things to move on. And then all of a sudden, the band starts to head towards the stage, uh, off to the left there of the altar. And uh, things start to get a little more organized looking. And right in front of your eyes, it seems like there is a wedding about to happen. It's it's truly a nice grand affair. There's a hundred guests here. Food. There was dancing planned. You can see there's a big section of the floor set up for, you know, where, where people could dance later or something. And the Duchess decides to make her presence known. And she introduces... Her wedding guests for the day and you you see her address the crowd and then sort of stand off to the side and allow the the priest to continue his sermons and such and uh, he says Lady Dun or Lord Dunbow and Lady Tam and they stand opposite sides of the stage and or the altar there and then they take turns taking steps forward and with each step, they make a new promise to, to one another, a new oath to one another. And when they meet in the middle, they embrace. So and beautiful. They, they share a kiss and, you know, <laughs> that the priest uh, says, married, they are married in Daggerford on this day in the eyes of all men and gods. And then the crowd... And so with the newlyweds off, uh, they run off to start consuming their, uh, consummating their marriage. And they, you see these trays of food start coming out. Hot, spicy soups and tenderly cooked pheasants, vegetables, roast, all kinds of salads and fish and anything you could possibly imagine is really coming out onto giant, giant tables in the back of the hall. All right, uh, Mira would like to go over to the um, fortune teller and say, hello, sister. Ah. She, she starts to focus on you. She's kind of seemed like she was zoning out. Like, she's not, like, really old or anything, but her eyes turned almost like they changed from white to colored again. She's like, oh, hello. Hello, dear. Yes, hello. Come I'm sit down. She'll sit down and she'll say, I'm afraid I'm at a bit of a loss. I've hit a dead end. And I was hoping you could help me. Yes, of course, of course. And uh, so she asks you to, you know, put your hands on the table and look into the ball. It's the crystal ball in front of you. And Mira, you see the energies begin to slowly swirl through the ball. And they begin to converge slowly into images. Mira, she says your name. You, you see the face of a beautiful woman. She looks to be in her early 40s. There are lines beginning to show on her forehead. And she has long brown hair covered in... Uh, like set into a braid on her shoulder. She's playing a, a beautifully crafted lute with a strange symbol carved into it. And the lady says, Your mother is in fact alive and well enough. And that's kind of news to you. <laughs> yeah, insight check. I... I want to see if she's... she's she's you can see that she's in a zone of her own in, in a way. If she's lying to you, then she's definitely good at it because she's her eyes are sort of turning white, and you can see in the ball you're seeing these things, right? So it's up to you if you want to believe them or not, but that's what you see. Would I? I mean, I don't have many memories of my mother, so w would I? recognize this woman do you think 
You could do um, a history check. Okay. Finally, you, a decent roll. <laughs> you may you you recognize this from a sketch that you've seen as a child, uh, or not as a child child, but as a young person growing up with Orwin. You recognize this as a woman that was sketched. There was a picture of her in the shop just seemed like a random woman being painted but now you're seeing her in this glass and then the image dissolves all of a sudden and forms into new patterns and you get a view as if looking down on a deserted cobblestone street in the night you see a man in tattered Vistani clothing running with a basket in that basket is an infant and it's bundled up it's only its face is visible the man he runs up and knocks on a door and you recognize that house it's the house of your patron Orwin the house that you came to recognize as a home and another man answers the door and walks out into the light and there's no mistaking him as he steps forward and takes the basket from the man in tattered clothing it's the face of Orwin your patron the man who became the man you know as a father and then the woman's voice again. Your father, dear, is gone. Sorry to say. But not at rest. He was killed but, in an attempt to save you. But it's, uh, save me from, from what? <laughs> it seems he's succeeded in doing so, doesn't it? Even if he did pay a terrible price. Worse than death it is, but still you are safe. Uh, You're asking yourself, like, what are you talking How could this... How you, you didn't know Orwin until you were, what, how old? Probably, like... I Like, five or six? Yeah, so how is... You're, you're seeing him being handed a baby so it just doesn't make any sense really but the vision but continues uh, just as you're asking these questions of yourself Orwin walks back into the house with the basket in his hand and the man in tattered clothing slumps to his hands and knees and appears to cry this lasts for a little while and then he's startled by something he gets back up and continues running down the street looking back as if something was chasing him all of a sudden then the illusion starts to fade away again. And then you're back, sitting in the castle ballroom. But you're all alone. The whole wedding party is gone, and it's just you and the fortune teller. The crystal ball on the table between you guys is looking lifeless and still. Diseased, almost. Suddenly the ball begins to glow. Bright green. The floor of the room is covered in a dense mist that starts to come out of the floor, right between the boards. We all, all see this? Way... You can barely see your own feet, Mira. No, the rest of you are sitting in your table, having a great time. I, was, I moved over and was intrigued by this and have been watching over Mira's shoulder. Is she okay? Yeah, Mira's sitting there at the table. She's uh, got her hands in the hands of the fortune teller and they're both okay. looking into the ball so the Vistani woman looks at you dead in the eyes and she could see that you know you could see she's clearly terrified and she holds your hands tightly and pulls you towards her and she's like until now now he has found you and then in that moment it feels like it draws out forever. You hear the doors of the ballroom open behind you. And then a giant wolf is seen entering through the doorway. I need you to roll me initiative. Oh, oh. okay. Um. <clears throat> oh, I cleared yeah. this one up. Oh. And Crimson just there eating medieval vegan tacos. <laughs> <laughs> vegan tacos. 
That would be a 10. Okay. So the wolf is up first. <laughs> you see it dart around between the tables. There's nobody at these tables. But it comes and it comes and it's moving fast. In a moment, it's, it's, it's upon you. You have barely time to hold your hand up and stop it from biting you. But you, you, as you scramble, you feel its teeth sinking into your skin. You look over at the fortune teller. She's sitting in her chair still looking down at you. Her face is, instead of, full, instead of fear, you see pity in her face and her eyes. And Just as you're feeling this wolf tear through your arm, the illusion just ends and you hear a shattering sound like glass breaking. And then... There was no wolf. There's no more mist. You're standing there. You're sitting there still. You're not even on the ground. The young Vistani woman is standing above you. The gla the, the, her crystal is shattered and she says, I'm sorry, dear. I'm sorry, dear. She comes forward and grabs your hand, tries to pick you up and help you up. What? What the fuck was that? He knows he knows that, where you are. I who, I would normally who, I don't know what to do in this scenario. Um I would normally never never tell anyone to seek him out, but no. You must see Madame Eva. She Madame she Eva? can help you. She is she is like me, Vistani, we are prescient. We can reach within and find the blood, find the future. Do I she still is... feel any like pain from where the wolf bit me or anything like that? No, you actually like it, it just feels like uh, goosebumps okay. more than anything else. You, you don't there's no mark there. There's no scarring or anything like that. You must see Madame Eva. You must see her as well, soon as possible. She will be able to tell you more than me. It is troubling what I have seen. Where can I find her? Well, we, we will be going back there soon. Uh, we, we, we come in for the wedding. We will leave after the wedding. Tonight we are uh, at our camp outside of town. You are welcome to uh, to come tonight or tomorrow before we leave. Madame Eva will definitely be able to illuminate you in ways that I have not been able to. I apologize that I have scared you, dear. It's not my intention. I am uh, amateur. Uh, do not do not look too deeply into this. How how can I? She she's just like her her whole world has essentially just been shattered with this fortune teller's ball. So she just like she kind of just starts to walk away. And uh, all right, uh, Chris Chris was watching this and clueless. He asked, uh, "So uh, what did you see? The winner of the next big race?" <laughs> If oh only. Gods, you look like you've seen a ghost. A ghost? Uh, are you right? Uh, here, I'll, I'll fetch you a chair. Uh, here you are. And and she just kind of collapses into it. Is it that they have um, some shellfish that might have been bad? Is it that? Oh, hello, hello Cole. Lady. How are you, the Honorable Cole, if it isn't you? It's good to see you. But alas, this it is, is a... It is truly a pleasure to have been here. I appreciate it. This is a time of discontent, my friend. I wish we were inviting you here solely for a celebration. Yes, your summons did mention that you had need of my services. I want you to know that we Tritons value our relationship and I am here to be of service in any way that you may need me. Of course, of course. I was more referring 
to the tragedy that befell your family. I wanted Imagine to reach out. Plagueis. I wanted to reach out earlier, but I'm sorry I didn't. May your father rest in peace. She cups yes, her hand. We to are her all chest. mourning his loss. She, it is uh, a hard time for our family. She walks over to um, a bottle of wine on the <laughs> on the uh, fireplace here and picks it up and uh, holds her cup up after filling her goblet a little bit higher and then, uh, you know, raises her cup to you. May he rest in peace. This wine is brought in from the north. It's um, a cherry blossom blend. Quite good. I, I know you don't drink, but this might change your mind. She fills her glass Very again. Well. I shall have just a small amount Oh, and she's excited and goes over, grabs another cup, starts filling them up and hands you a thing and then keeps filling hers up a little more. And then and she Cole takes his glass and he makes a show of sipping at it, but he doesn't really sip at it. <laughs> and he says, oh, this is quite delightful. To your father. Thank you. And to she's imbibing... <laughs> So she's imbibing uh, quite a bit at this moment. Uh, happy to be done with her duties, it looks like. And uh, she she looks concerned and stares at you for a second and says, to business, I suppose. We have reports yes. that your brother has been spotted leaving Daggerford, heading towards the valley. The valley? Yes, I... My informants assured me that it was him. I've since learned that he spent three nights at that River Shining Tavern that I sent you to. Um, he left with a group of those Vistani. That's all we really know. Um, it seems he's left a few of my men dead as well. So, I, I haven't known my loyal guards to stab each other. But when they, shortly after reporting him in town, two of them did just that, so. You have my regrets, Duchess. My, my brother has made such horrible choices. How many days hence was he last seen? That was at least three or four days back that he was, the last day he was here. I don't know what where he's headed there's nothing nothing good out there i i don't know what to tell you if you if you know what's good for you you will stay away alas i wish that i had that option but i have been called upon by the priests of persona to hunt down my brother and bring him to justice well if your brother has gone there he is lost Many of our mages from town have gone looking for these magical artifacts and such. None have come back. None have returned. They go seeking power and vanish. Alas, I fear my brother was lost long before he murdered my father. <laughs> yes, well. <sighs> she stops being so regal and slumps and sits down in her chair. Oh, I'm under attack from every border, my friend, from within, from beyond. This uh, evil that your brother has been into might be what's responsible for some of my people's strife here. If I'm to retain the authorities I have, I must figure out what's been happening to these farmlands south of town. These merchants are thinking my... Farmers are responsible for trying to ruin their sales, and the farmers think it's the merchants trying to mess with their crops, and none of it's real. It's all rumors. I don't know what to say. I believe it to be something much worse. Well, I've sent... <laughs> this is disturbing. I've sent patrols of guards out to the farmlands south of town, and none have returned. I don't want to alarm anyone, 
I know that if I alarm people, then panic will set in and all these contracts that we've been working so hard over the last few years to obtain will vanish like smoke. So I've invited a few other people that I've employed in the past and I'm hoping that you can work with them. Solve these dilemmas for me and ensure that this town is safe. If you have some trusted people that you feel you can send to investigate, I would be very pleased to be of service. I have brought 10 such people, invited 10 such people to this party. And uh, I believe together you will have no problem sorting out the misdeeds that have been done. Putting an end to these rumors. Dispelling these myths. So, I must, uh, I must, I will go and show my face back in the wedding hall, because if I don't, people will get suspicious. And she, uh, she's like, I will return shortly, and, uh, hopefully with some friends for you to work with. You might have already met some of them. Paul stands up from the table as they enter. Paul, uh, are you done polishing your armor? I wish that was all I was doing. I Don't we all? Don't we all? <laughs> One of the envoys sees you standing with the bottle there, Chris, and I, I presume that wine is for the Duchess? I'm told... One of those is oh. worth its weight in diamonds. <laughs> this one is just one that I took from the table we were sitting at. I I love the bottle. I I just I love to fill them with sand, uh, different colors. It's uh, relaxing. Oh, don't be uh, the, the wine that I left, the wine that I brought, is still back in the the hall, the great hall. You can go there if you really want it. Oh, why would you leave such an expensive? And she like darts because uh, that's where <laughs> all the guards were. It's more safe there. She darts and she's looking. <laughs> As besides, that's something you should enjoy on your your honeymoon. Or, or yes, or yeah. <laughs> I just find the wine and everything will be fine. And right. she's, she's. How like, long do you think that will take? Just. Uh, well, you you hit it or what? Where is it? <laughs> I. Well, I'm. I, I don't want to uh, detract any more than what's necessary, and you seem awfully busy. You, you know, if you if you have something that you'd like to tell us before you get the wine, um, that would be we could just get on that. Uh, Duchess, shall I? And she's like, "Go, go, dear." And so she oh, takes great. off. Oh, great! Uh, all right. <laughs> the Duchess's envoy comes back into the room with a bottle of wine. She holds it up, Chris, and she's like, Hey, look, I found it. It's good. We're good. She gives you the thumbs up. Hands it to the Duchess. She's like, Ah. Please tell Erigal uh, his gift is accepted. I wish his family, uh, I wish to accept their offer. Have him come by to the keep at his earliest convenience. Yes. We can work out the details sometime in the next few days when things settle down a bit. Do I recognize it as the same wine bottle from last night? Yeah. She's she's asking, she's telling Chris, like, you know, make sure that, um, you know, Aragal knows that he's, that she's happy uh, with it. Uh, yes, uh, but of course, with full uh, gratuities, I will be sure to inform him. <laughs> Thank you so much. You 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 do know that <laughs> Ergil and I plan to make a fortune on this. <laughs> it's uh yes, it's a vintage that's... that hasn't been seen in quite some time. Right. Uh well, uh, I'm sure you will uh have the unique flavor. Um anyways, uh there's a murder we need she, to take care of. She hands the bottle to her envoy again and she's like <laughs> giving up numbers and she's like, Yes, yes. Sorry, go ahead. Uh, yes, uh, I wouldn't want to interrupt your celebration, so uh, the sooner we can depart, uh, the better. <laughs> uh, 
Do all of us recognize the bottle? <laughs> uh, from last night, yes. You, you you all noticed that you know this is this looks like a lot like the stuff that you guys were drinking at the bar, like that got stuffed with a sausage in. <laughs> This is it, this it's is like sausage. it's like tequila, but with uh, sausage. Luckily, <laughs> with how hungover you were today, when you tried to get the sausage into the wine bottle, it wouldn't go. Oh, wait, I don't need that part. I made yeah. it. I made it go. He just shoved it in the bottle. Yeah. He just forced it in there with yeah. a fork. Yeah, <laughs> I'm good at that. <laughs> okay, so these um. <laughs> These uh, wine glasses that have been sitting on top of the mantle, the uh, envoys bringing them out to the table, and she's like, Duchess Mormon says, you know, in times of tragedy, in times of strife, is when true heroes and true adventurers are made. Do you consider yourselves to be true, to be just? Midnight it just kind of just le- just does an empty stare at Chris, and she's she the envoy is now hanging handing out all the cups around the table. She's like, "This wine has been probably sold for. <laughs> I could probably buy a ship instead of open this bottle, but opportunity knocks <laughs> once in a while only, and those who are bold enough will answer its call. Am I right?" And she holds up her glass. Okay. We are right. gonna. Chris will hold up a glass as well and uh, begin to toast. Paul uh, waves his glass off because it would be breaking his vows to partake. I mean, I just kind of stares at Chris, then back at the Duchess, then stares at Chris again, giving him the "Are you gonna tell her? Or do I have to?" kind of look. Er, er. Uh, in, in brightest day through blackest night no other group shall spread its light let those who try to stop what's right burn like my wine uh, friends light unite uh, a finer toast I've never heard and then she holds up her glass and drinks you're just gonna pretend to drink the knight would try to interject but before she can the duchess already takes us up she's just like just kind of brings her hand back slowly (laughs) Kim's gonna drink and is gonna go hmm this tastes tastes different from last night (laughs) (laughs) duchess is gonna decide or like let's see what happens here yeah the duchess (laughs) gets a few sips in expecting the sweet, savory flavors that she remembers that she got into this deal for. She's actually been waiting to try this for probably at least six months. And uh, (laughs) upon ingesting uh, slightly sausage-flavored hot doggy water, she she spits it. She spits it out and then starts dry heaving and running out of the room. I'm sorry. I, 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 I uh, yeah. I was going, going to, to be like. Her. I think it turned. <laughs> I was going to warn her that that wasn't the wine. I'm just gonna go. What do you mean? It it still tastes good. Then he drinks again. It's different, but it's good. It's his first time tasting sausage. He kind of just like stares intently at Chris and just says, "Mira." You and Chris drank the wine last night. Chris filled it with something this morning, I believe. I can smell it. It definitely does not smell like wine. Well, whatever that thing is, give me more and text more. (laughs) I believe it was with whatever the barkeep tried to get our friend Cole here to drink. What was it that the barkeep had in your class, Cole? I mean, it seems all subjective, really. Uh, I, I mean, there's bigger issues at hand. Uh, sh- sh- shouldn't we, we be out to uh, combat evil, save the day? You I'm some... good with that plan. Let's go. You hear some retching happening from right here. 
behind this like down the hallway but you can hear sort of through the wall a little bit through some cracks in the mortar you know some rough retching <laughs> it's just saying lady morwen murdered at her, at her yeah. wedding <laughs> she's oh, like yeah. no I'm, i think i'm fine yeah. she, she's <laughs> yeah <laughs> Lord. She's uh she's had a pretty good uh life of drinking before though, so she knows. She had a pretty good they... life. Yeah, she does have a pretty good had life. Had a pretty good life. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So she's uh c- quite content with uh <laughs> you know sitting here for a minute. If you Is guys... the wine bottle still in the room? <laughs> yeah, it's sitting uh one of the attendees left it back on the on the mantle over here somewhere. Is there like a bowl or anything that the contents could be poured out of to see what's in the bottle? Uh, I'm sure if you went back into the dining room, you could quickly grab one. Yeah. There's a plant. In the <laughs> I think upper Midnight right. would like to uh, quickly walk into the dining room, grab a bowl, walk back in into the mantle, and uh, start just place the bowl on the table and just start pouring the bottle out into the bowl to see I what guess. exactly they drank. Um, First quest, bust Chris out of prison. Are, are there any guards about in the room still? The the guards have just left. They've uh, they've gone to investigate Duchess Morwen, and she's like giving them the. You know, well, every moment that we delay now, it's just another moment, an innocent man stays in bondage. Right. Okay, yeah. where's the exit? Does the sausage plop out into the bowl? As you guys are leaving, she's kind of she kind of comes out into the hall again. Oh, um, you're well. That's wonderful. She's she's down here in the in the corridor. I thought you guys were pulling out of the room. Yeah, I'm, midnight's I'm emptying going. that wine bottle into that bowl. <laughs> They're right, trying to okay. see what exactly they drink. Mirror quickly. She wants to look for anything kind of a value that would be easy to grab and not mi- missed. Uh, there is actually I... there is actually some nice uh, like actual silverware. There's um, some beautiful looking glasses and like little tiny th- decorative things everywhere, bits and baubles, but they're all nice kind of thing you might see in a palace. All right. She's going to try and swipe one of the smaller. Uh, give me a sleight of hand check. See if anybody notices. That is exactly what I was going to say. DC yes. 13. Because nobody here is really watching for... Midnight's you know, the, highly distracted and pouring that bottle out. <laughs> the reserve Out of character. Out there. of character. You're welcome for the distraction. You're welcome. You're welcome for that. So uh, what What did she take? Any... Um, I'm, I'm going to give you a... A rolled chart thing here in a minute, but yeah, okay. it's it's just a bobble of some sort to uh, something that has the Duchess's seal on it, maybe. Okay. Many balls. A, a bobble, a um. Oh, bobble. A doodad, or, a trinket. A doodad, a trinket. Yes, a tr- I got a trinket table a for you. A a trinket. Pocket just, full of call traps. There's a lot of different places where it could be hidden. This little table, so I'll just give it to you later. Okay. Okay. All right, and and with that, yeah, she'll be done. She'll be like, let's move on and kind of follow Chris, who is also trying to make a quick exit. Oh, no, no rush, but if you insist, and as he's out walking you. (laughs) Yeah, Chris is going to follow suit because Chris mentioned someone's in manacles and needs to be freed. Gotcha. Okay, so everybody's kind of heading out. You know that um, the way that or when when you guys do leave, you see the Duchess kind of um, bobbing in and out of this doorway and saying like, you know, thanks for coming and oh, you, I'm you know, thanks for having. <laughs> like, oh, okay, yeah, no. And I will kind of just turn around for like a brief second, say and says, "Don't finish the bottle." <laughs> <laughs> She's what like, do we do with Monty? I must have just had some bad fish or something. Monty, the guards will stop if he tries to get out of the room, but mm. if he's uh, if he's just in the room, he's he's okay there for now. The envoys are watching him. I'll say to Monty, 
I'll turn to him as I leave the room and I'll say, we will try to find the truth so that you can be freed. I, I never, I never meant to upset people here. I, I apologize. I, I, I really let everybody down. I, oh, mama. <laughs> All right, Thank you. Um, and Mira will go up to the Countess, or Duchess, I'm sorry, not Countess, Duchess, one last time and be like, my lady, have you seen Orwin in the last few weeks? Well, no, I, uh, no, he's, he and I are, <clears throat> hopefully he's gonna get me better wine than this. And then, yeah, back to feeling like throwing up and she's got a bucket going and she keeps kicking like actually if you're talking to her then you're down uh in this room now and hmm. know what's going on down here um yeah she's she's got a bucket where this fruit is she's locked this door and has an attendant outside here and uh she's uh sort of like just kicking a bucket of you know <laughs> this hot oh, dog what she's wine. been throwing up <laughs> yeah under the table and pretending she's not throwing up <laughs> and then like hot dog water up. she's leaning on the table very regally looking and then all of a sudden she'll pull the bucket out and turn right away from you but yeah she's <laughs> um <laughs> she's like i i haven't seen him i oh, oh he's well he's he, he's supposed to be working on this contract for me though Hopefully, if you guys head to the farms south of town, mm -hmm. uh, to the east, get that job done for me, and then by then I'll have some word, maybe. I'm expecting to have more travelers come through after the wedding is over, so they might tell me more. All right. Well, the next time you're at the shop, I'll make sure you get a much better glass or bottle of wine that did not turn to vinegar oh, i'm not sure who to blame here but at time <laughs> <laughs> well i've had that before but i've never reacted that way i hope it's uh not gonna happen again <laughs> this is quite a bit of money <laughs> invested in this already <laughs> She'll kind of salute and be like, to your health, my lady. And she, <laughs> she leave. Kinda, yeah. She start, the room is starting to smell a little bit, too. <laughs> yeah. And I wants to, you know, turn to Krim and say, you mentioned not eating meat, right? Yes, I do not eat meat. It's against my vows. How does that translate to water that has meat been soaking in it i believe the word you're looking for is soup yeah is I, this... I don't drink those two it would be against my vows i mean i just kind of gonna put a heavily heavy hand on his shoulder and say i think you broke that vow when you drunk from that bottle no that bottle was wine i poured it out as everyone was leaving that was not wine then he, he looks. He slowly looks down on the floor, contemplating on his life decisions and what brought him here. <laughs> Been a hard year for bird person. Right. Poor bird person. And now two people have ag had existential crises. See, oh, I'm working no. on everybody's dark backstory. <laughs> oh, that is so cruel. He'll just pat his shoulder and says, it'll be fine. You can restart that vow. He's just going to shake his head. I hope the person who, does, who did that will never find his one true mate. <laughs> she just kind of turns her head to Chris, giving him that deep, just blank stare. Wait, does, does Midnight's head, is it on like a rotary axis? Like, can she just like, oh, like owl? Like, <laughs> 180. Now she had to turn her body a bit to, you know, get okay. the full look. Just okay. the, like the dead stare at Chris. And she'll just turn back to hey, Krim and say, just, I, I'm sure. Hey, I'm clears, sure. Clears his throat, looks to the ground. Got a phone call. 
She's kind of Mirror up. follows shortly after. She's just like, hi. This uh, seal just uh, burning a hole in her pocket. I can't believe my first character development is sausage related. <laughs> <laughs> so we're going to assume that you guys are taking off out of the castle now because you're, you're trying to run with before vigor. the wine. Yeah, okay. I assume we're all agreed that we will be moving south to check into this situation. To the uh, old farm first? That makes sense. Away. Chris, are you with us? Uh, I'm actually ahead of you. <laughs> I don't blame you. So you start heading out of town and uh, working your way down did the Duchess give us a horse? Or at least there aren't some very sort of many transport? horses today, but um, if but tomorrow you there will back, be. Yeah, is, if you end up back just out of stock. Days, they are right now ferrying all of her guests in and out of to the ports and all that. Apparently, we're but, not just investigating a murder. I don't really guess we don't deserve an actual amount. I mean, nothing bad. It's only that. a couple of miles down the road to yeah. the farms, and so then it's from there. Away anyways, yeah. I'm glad she's poisoned. But Actually, it does sound like <laughs> you give us a horse. This is all Chris like mumbling some... under his breath. <laughs> Just gonna do the scene change thing. Up. Oh. Farm time. Old farm image switch. Old farm time. It does sound like the skies are active, eh? Oof. The winds are coming in. As you guys uh, approach down the road, you see normal farms, normal farm life, nothing sticking out as uh, being out of place yet. Um, I want to turn that down for a second here because that is some serious thunder. <laughs> so I didn't hear it. Oh, really? I was hearing hear the thunder. boom and thunder. Anyways, so yeah, you're walking down the road. Everything's sort of kosher, normal at this point. Um, all of a sudden, mm. some of you, Krim, you have a pretty high passive perception, eh? Yeah. In your in your uh, jaunt down the street, there, you and a couple other people. I think uh, Cole, you have a pretty high one too, right? Or no? Does the passive need to be? I'm super high, clocking in at a 10. I got 14. a 12. <laughs> a passive 14. perception. Yeah, I got a passive of a 12. Nine. Nine. Okay. Well, Krim saved you guys with a 15. So, yeah, he, he notices um, just to the north of the road here, there's some motion going on in one of the buildings. So... Let's, uh, you guys were walking down the road, set the stage again, as you, okay. uh, passed this, uh, farmhouse here, as you come upon these, uh, honest people's homes, uh, all of a sudden something stands out as being slightly awry to your north here. Um, you guys are walking, um, on a southbound road, but the road sort of curves and bends as it goes. And uh, right now, you're, these houses are to your northeast. And uh, yeah, so do right. you... along the journey, Chris will be, you'll start off kind of frustrated that uh, she didn't provide any horses, but then it kind of actually segues into a paranoid rant about how um, people just can't be trusted and that. It's like, you know, she's just setting us up for failure. It's, you know, a bunch of strangers out here in the field. She's already got the man arrested. I just don't, I, I don't, I don't think, you know, she can be trusted. She, she's obviously doesn't, she doesn't want us to succeed. Like, Does no one can, hear this? He's kind of talking to anybody that will listen. Are... How, when people get really emotionally worked up, sometimes mm -hmm. it's just a fountain of words. And and she'll just kind of like, apparently she's doing the arm touching thing again, to kind of like, get him out of his head. Be like, mm -hmm. hey, you okay? Uh, 
Uh, oh, <laughs> sorry. I just um, I, I I I have some trouble uh, trusting um, uh, sometimes, um, and uh, I do I do get wrapped up in my head a little bit uh, too much. Uh, but uh, thank you. Um, but it is kind of weird how she didn't give us any horses, isn't it? I mean, she probably doesn't want us to even. I mean, a person in power like that, and it, I don't. It, do you think we can trust her? I don't think you can trust anybody, but that's just me. Uh, okay, okay. He'll draw his dagger and walk cautiously. So, as you guys are noticing, uh, there's movement in that house. Mm-hmm. Um. Give me a perception check now, everybody. Right. Um, so uh, you you had said that we all kind of noticed that there were some bodies over there. So yeah, Mirror will kind of um, stealth up and try and get the lay of the land a little bit. Midnight okay. is fully incapable of stealth. <laughs> so Krim and Midnight and Chris, you guys all spot what's been moving in that house there. There's two wolves and they are busy. You can see they're preoccupied looking down at these fresh victims that they have found. It looks like it was there's... definitely wolves. Let's go, go back. It looks like there's some guards in this, uh, in this house as well. Why are they guarding the wolves? Oh, I dun, see. Dun, they're, 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 are, are the guards... I can't see. Are the guards dead? You said something about guards. There's guards in this... Uh, in this barn, and they look mm -hmm. like, yes, they are dead. <laughs> There's some bodies that the wolves are making a meal out of right now. And, uh, well, I think this is all the evidence we need. Do you think she'll really take our uh, word for it? No, yeah. no, she's far too clever for that. If we she's should, out to get us, then we'll we need definite bring her proof with us. I think the guards carry insignias. If we take get one of the insignias from us and bring it back to her, then she won't have any room to pin it on us. I'm pretty sure that's what she's trying to do. Midnight, do your thing. They're eating their. You're meal. like made of metal. They won't want to eat you. Go up there and like get the insignia from the guard. I mean, Chris, I don't why think are you they... back there? Why are you all the way in the back? Because it's dangerous. I don't want to get bitten by a dog. You don't know what kind of diseases they have. But you do see they are wearing full suits of armor. It could just assume I'm another armored figure. I don't know what dogs think, all right? You know much more about them, obviously. You you, you go talk to them. I know what dogfish think. I, I can't talk to wolves. Oh. Okay. Okay. One of the Weirdest. wolves looks up. I'm going to shoot one. One of the wolves looks up and howls. And you don't expect it because you've been... Thinking oh, okay. that they're sitting there just having Midnight, a good old Midnight, how back? Meal. Quick! <laughs> it's trying to communicate. <laughs> there. Combat has been initiated. Have fun. <laughs> we have Mira up. And... All right. Mira is going to shoot with her crossbow the one that howled is now howling in pain as well okay all right and then um i'll end my turn i don't want to move closer right now Krim, it looks like you're up yeah, yeah i'm gonna fly guess. and i'm gonna perch on top of the room then as soon as they go out i'm gonna throw a dart at one of them okay Holding yep. your action to throw a dart. Nice. So yeah, this wolf snarls and decides to start running straight at you. Here we go. 
<laughs> he goes Krim. charging out. Krim goes. Krim sitting up on top of the roof there, just watching it before it can even make an attack at Cole. The thing's body falls limp on the ground. Midnight, you're up. Should have the womp womp sound effect. Kind of go, just try to boink. <laughs> okay. Long sword. Wink. So it took a, a nice chunk out of this wolf's shoulder, and this thing is uh, like it was just having dinner. Now it's missing body parts almost, and it's not happy. Just after you slash at it with your sword, it returns the favor. Ouch. Hey, look at that. Oh, wow. That, oh, wow. I'm downed already. Look at that. Level one combat. Level one combat, Enjoy. everyone. After you've yeah. uh, fallen, it um, decides it's going to start moving. And it goes to here. And then pauses and looks back. Chris, you're up. Uh, all right, so he will... Um, just say, I knew it. I knew she was sending us to our deaths. And he's going to take the dash action. Oh, 30 feet. I guess he has to. I'll take the dash action and then end this turn right there. Okay. There's a little button if you want to hit it, or I can end your turn. Oh, I can. All right. Boop. That way I don't accidentally end people's turns if I get in the habit of, you know. All right. So the, another wolf starts pounding the pavement <laughs> out from this direction and charging at you full speed. And it, that's right there. And Cole, you are up. I'm going to cast Healing Word on Midnight. Woo. What, what kind of a word do you give her? Describe um, your spell. Um, fourth. There. <laughs> that's that's a healing word. Okay, so Krim, you guys are starting to hear some thunder in the distance, and the weather is slowly starting to turn. Krim, you're on the roof thunder. there. Give me a perception check. As perception the round check. changes. Oh, coming up on my okay. Yeah, that's good enough. Uh, you notice from where you are that a few more of these wonderful friends are stalking from the brush. And there's actually a bit of a fog that these guys are kind of coming out of from the farmland here, from the wheat grass. And they're sort of emerging from the depths of this mist. And Mira, you're up. Before right. Hurricane comes up, I'm gonna shout down to everyone. Gonna go, guys! More of them are coming. I think we should run. Mira's gonna go run where? Don't uh, run! Climb a building. Dogs can't climb. <laughs> I'm gonna point towards the opposite direction where I saw the wolves. All right, Mira's going to run kind of in here, 30 feet, and then she's going to look at this wolf, which I think is in range. Yep. And she's going to go, ah, and cast Dissonant Whispers. Ooh. Boom. Wow. Oh, uh, wow. Wow. I don't oh, like these man. wolves at all. I don't like these, these wolves. They're OP. These wolves are deadly. These, <laughs> these are level five wolves. <laughs> No. So, Krim, looks like you're up, bud. So, yeah, I'm gonna go to. I'm gonna fl fly 20 feet above the wolf that um, that saved the Dissonant Whispers, and I'm gonna throw darts at him. Okay. Water. That is a hit. And the dart does its work. So, yeah, this guy finally. The one who <laughs> did the damage is fallen. And you hear a howl coming from back here, and that happens. A vicious howl. Midnight. As you get back up and you feel the healing word kicking in, you're out. 
midnight still feeling not entirely their best is just gonna raise their hand a bit starts glowing a white light and kind of just touch their shoulder as they heal themselves for five more using the lay on hands Chris looks like you're up okay seeing well from his point of view the battle's turning uh, he will then uh, I guess move over here and uh, ready his dagger at his uh, side and say to Cole this is it this is how we die I know what she betrayed us beast out of heart are you throwing a dagger or are you just holding it nope I am holding it I only have one and I'm holding my action to stab a dog if it gets close okay let me now do this Uh, be thou not afraid I don't think I can do these all at the same time I gotta do them one at a time unfortunately at this stage unless I just do this this is just a little test to see if this works hopefully it does I'm trying to add these guys to the initiative did a thing oh. did a thing nice okay oh so it was just Chris's turn and uh, so yeah he's gonna charge in and yeah he might as well go for there it's gonna go for you there Chris cause you're taunting him there we go cool okay I'm gonna drop my crossbow at my feet and I am going to lift my shield and my whalebone mace. And I am going to smack this thing upside the head, I hope. Maybe not with that roll. <laughs> the wolf deftly dodges the mace just in time. Barely, but it does. However, these wolves from the tree line are now rolling in on you. Mira. You are up. All right. Mira is going to regret this. Like, she does many things. Um, she is going to... Yep. Run up to this wolf here. Pull out her rapier. She's still got her hand crossbow. She's going to swipe with her rapier. And I get advantage because I'm flanking. So it's a 24 to hit. Yeah. Eight piercing damage. The wolf falls limp at your blade. All right. And then because I attacked with a one-handed weapon, I can use a bonus action to attack with my hand crossbow. So I'm going to turn and attack this guy with my hand crossbow. Okay. Yeah. Sometimes. The monsters are Monster. We? That's awesome. Are they the monsters or are we... Oh, there you go. Yeah, that guy can make it. Hey, guys. Yeah. <laughs> it's been fun. <laughs> they can both make it. I'm so squishy. <laughs> bum, ba -da -bum. All right, this wolf the page. charges up towards you. And that's all he does. Yes, okay. <laughs> <laughs> he didn't have enough moves. Somebody help me. Krim, you're up. <laughs> um, I'm gonna throw a dart at the one close to me first to thin the herd. Nope, doesn't thin the herd. Doesn't thin the herd. All right, so you're 20 feet above it. You toss the dart. You missed. Then I'm gonna move here. I'm gonna fly down 10, 10 feet lower just to taunt the other two dogs so that they won't go towards Mira right away. Let's see. Time to run back into the fight. We. So as Blank you guys are me. as time's passing in this battle and the wolves are coming out the the uh the fog that was concealing these wolves in the in the farm there is sort of creeping along with them and you guys are 
sort of noticing this, uh, the feeling of claustro claustrophobic feeling coming on you as the fog wall moves toward you and sort of, it's actually starting to block off the road that you came down a little bit too, as it, uh, forms behind this farm a little bit. I've got a bad feeling about this. I get advantage, I get 12. <laughs> it hurts my soul. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's not going to work. Chris, you're up. Okay. Do better. Uh, being a tactile genius, he will quickly skirt the wolves. All this time, and the woodshop was really just hiding his true agenda. He's the great assassin, soul ripper. No, actually, he's in a panic, and uh, he's just going to stab the one right next to him. <laughs> oh. That is nice a... roll. Nice stab. In the Didn't want to come stab. here. I told you, I told you she'd kill us all. You stab with your dagger. Can, can you hear that? No? Yeah, mm -hmm. I can. Yeah, I can hear the birds. Yeah. I just imagine while these, these wolves are nipping uh, at... Uh, uh, at his at feet. A, at... Um, our, um, at her, uh, he'll take the, the take the dagger and just come in uh, right behind the neck, uh, above the shoulder, and just like get a lucky blow, uh, cutting deep into the wolf's hide. Okay, I am going to cast Sacred Flame on one of the wolves. Okay. And do almost uh, no damage. Burn in holy fire. <laughs> and the wolf does not but burn not in holy fire. <laughs> He's... He's dancing. He's dancing. Hey, so as this round finishes, the fog creeps farther towards you. And you see another shape of a wolf. And even a larger wolf than before. Mira, okay, we need to run. You're starting yeah. to re you start to recognize that one wolf from your diner experience with the uh, with the fortune teller earlier that evening. All right, can I see it? I'm kind of just kind uh, of a building, unless Krim like tells us more coming. Oh yeah, yeah. I don't want to move them we too much to rip you off from thing, but you guys see them from there, right? If that ends, uh, that's ten feet of their movement. Okay, that way I'm not being unfair. Um. But yeah, I do want you to know that you, you can see them from there, so you're not being surprised, that's all. Um, so the wolf that is standing right here, well, yeah, he's going to join his friend and attack Midnight because then he gets advantage as pack tactics go. Oh, no. 16. That doesn't hit. <laughs> he tried. He failed. <laughs> Mira. Do I take two opportunity attacks? Disengage action. There's always that. Yeah. Because this is looking like it might end up a tactical retreat. I don't know. All right. Um, and you're saying the fog's closing in from over where we came in, right? As well as where the wolves are coming out. This whole this area is starting to become foggy. Can you see right. that shape I drew? Yep. Yeah. And uh, it's kind of creeping in around that house. And now, you know, so the, the road in front of you is fairly mm -hmm. open still to this side. But uh, behind you where you came from is now pretty foggy. I mean, it's just, it might just be fog. It's just hard to see down there. Yeah, we might actually lose them in the fog. Dun, dun, dun. I'm scared. Lady yeah. Ezra shall protect us from the mists. And Mira is going to take the disengage action. And how far can I move when I do that? Only 30. Okay. Your movement. All right. Five. Persona, protect us. 25, 30. And that's my turn. Don't just stop with one god. Ask them all to protect <laughs> us. <laughs> He'll do an attack with advantage on Chris. And it's a miss. They're just or all missing. 13? 
13? 13? We might actually win this. That's my AC. Oh, no. oh no. Meter beat. The wolf sinks its jaw into your arm as you're holding it out. <laughs> Conveniently. Oh, for my, it. my favorite <laughs> arm. <laughs> That's my posing arm. <laughs> my armor polishing arm. It smells it. that sausage why, on your fingers. Why it's so sturdy. It smells the sausage. <laughs> Fools, you've bit my polishing arm. <laughs> Tis merely a okay. flesh wound. Then I'm gonna fly over here. Then I'm gonna throw a dart. Yep, I'm looking down at them like. <laughs> then I'm gonna pew, pew. throw another dart. The one who bit him. Oh! There you go. There you go. Like my vision. 2020. And now it's this one's turn. Um, it's also going to take a bite out of the well-dressed man. Oh, there goes the well-dressed man. <laughs> That's a big bite. Oh, <laughs> that hurt. <laughs> The well-dressed man is not feeling so good right now. The well-dressed man is unconscious. Thoroughly. One has already crit me and bonk. Oh. Yeah. I don't want the bonk again. <laughs> the I'll bonk just is do deadly. a nor I'll just do a normal one and hope I hit. No. Uh, oh. oh wait, I've got the perfect sound for this. Okay, hold on. Let me see if I can yeah. get this. No, hold on. Yeah? <laughs> I I didn't hear anything. It was bonked. There's no bonk. There was. Just a sword. Sounds like you're just hitting a plastic bucket. Yeah, it just it's, sounds like you're hitting a plastic bucket. It's a sword not bonking and not hitting anything. It's the air. <laughs> Come on, guys. Oh, like a whiff? It just oh, sounds like a whiff. So sure, much time it is. With himself doing it's that. supposed to be a whiff, okay. but it sounds like a trash can being hit for me. Good job, DM. Good job. Yeah, totally got that. Yeah. Leave the sound yeah. to me, DM. What do you do? die on the very first adventure. I remember you, you pulled you it have because we got you. There okay. was some good RP somebody, earlier there. For somebody a made a pun, and I thought we we're mm. getting pun. I thought we we're getting punished. <laughs> no, no. So you, Chris you, gets to try to wake <laughs> up, right? No. Regardless, you still save. You do have an inspiration as well, though. So. It oh, can inspirations be used to stabilize? Since nobody has brought him back yet, uh, he's doing a, a death save. Mm -hmm. As Wait, long as it's Chris a d20 room. This is our first death save. Let's. Uh... Can his inspiration. Yeah. Oh, bummer. Oh, there you go. <laughs> he passed a 10. That's a pass. You can mark yeah. that as it. Mark that wow, as wow, wow, wow. it. It worked for me in high school and it works for me in DD. Passing. Not a one. <laughs> I am going to do what I do. And I am going to smack with my whalebone mace the closest one to me. I rolled a 10. Maybe you should use the digital dice instead. I don't see the 10. Oh, you rolled a 10, like with real dice. No, I, I lied. I lied. <laughs> Don't yeah, use real dice. Say, this is a digital game. Real dice. This is a digital have, game. Uh, that's okay. a hit. It's a it's a whale born hit. Whale bone. Well, but what? Now you're twisting. You know yeah. what it really is, though. Whale bone. Wait, whale boner. Man. Oh. See, that's why I don't <laughs> like the digital dice. The wolf took a bonk on the head. The top wolf here. Besides the dog. To let me die. Hey, how Besides come my wolf didn't go? lose any hit points? Oh, it froze. It did. It says um, nine of nine. You're looking at your hit points. That's your hit points. Oh. They're not as squishy as us. Do you want me to take those out? <laughs> I could. No, <laughs> I could no, I think you should add three to them, though. So the wolf that keeps, keeps on biting midnight in the same spot and hitting armor every time tries again. <laughs> If it's advantage. advantage, it hits. So nine hits. more damage to the Warforged 
it's taking a beating. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna be disengaging and leaving after this because I ain't gonna survive it if I stay. Target is creature to succeed on a Okay, so spell. as the uh, top of the order came around and that wolf is the top of the order wolf. Uh, I need to roll see, my save, I believe. You see these two, but they're not moving. Wait, quickly. why? Are, I was like, why are they moving at the same time? <laughs> uh, they they just kind of you just notice they're kind of like walking. What? Like meandering. One wolf is riding on the other. Yeah, one wolf's riding on the other one's back. I'm just saying they're not gonna be. Um, they don't look like they're gonna attack you yet. Do you, does the big one? What's the big one doing? Like, it's like uh, just kind of actually. Give me a uh, perception check if you can from there. All right. <sighs> perception is not my insight, strong suit. But... Maybe a nature check if you want. Uh, nope, that's not better. I'll just do a, do a, uh, actually, yes, I will do a nature check. That is better. Eleven. Did you roll a one and get an eleven? No, you rolled no, a ten. And got, yeah. I rolled a ten and got an eleven. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, whoa. Um, that is a lot better. Uh, okay, well, yeah, you can tell. Um, this wolf doesn't look as angry as um, it's just a giant wolf. It's more observant than angry. I was just curious. I think that went out of the window when you shot it. Okay, so that wolf had her chance already, and now it's Mira's turn. Okay. Um... Uh, I'm going to regret doing this, but I'm going to point at the dire wolf. Not that it can do anything. I'm taking a little chance and I'm going to, yep. I'm going to point at the dire wolf and I'm going to cast message. Oh. Oh. Okay. And... Who's a I... good boy? <laughs> Who's a good boy? I'm confused a little bit, but I'm, I'm listening. Well, you said that I recognized it when you it first came out. You don't recognize it as a person. Uh, you just mean—I I just mean that you. Oh, I, it's the same type of wolf that you saw in the thing, but not the a, same. It doesn't wolf. have an NPC name. If that's what you're going for. Okay. <laughs> but okay. if you want to, you can message it. I'm just, I'm just confused. See if it understands you, common. I wanted to get All to right. where your brain was. That's yeah. That's where my brain was. My. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I, no, was, I was going for the story, okay? But if I that's, think if I, it, just looks at you confused. Uh huh. Hmm. Kind of gives you a uh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> doesn't understand you don't think okay um and i can't <laughs> sorry um <laughs> don't run back. okay you're like don't run back because right. i'm about to run because <laughs> i ain't staying here to die i ain't dumb <laughs> healer's not healing i ain't staying Oh, never tell me the odds. I'm going to run back. Not that like, I can do freaking anything. You know what? No, I'm going to stay here. I'm going to stay right where I am. So he can jump six feet and bite your ass. <laughs> Ouch. So yeah, it's a, it's a snap miss. He gets a feather. So I raise my feet very slightly. He gets a feather. Just from an ankle. I'm gonna... Throw another dart. Then I'm gonna move here. I'm gonna throw another dart at this one. Okay. Yeah, that one right in the front here? Yep. The one These that darts to are doing work. After Cole's bludgeoning and Crim's darts... And I think Chris hit that one with a knife too. Yep. Hey. As as Chris lies on the ground, <laughs> conscious fading. <laughs> good good job, guys. Good, the wolf good job. lies next to him. <laughs> I have six more, and then enter. 
Okay, this one will attack Midnight as well, because he was oh, working no. with his buddy. Oh! I'm down. That's a bite. Man. Okay. Who are you feeding your dice? And it's Midnight's turn to make a death save. Oh boy, you guys are making this a little nerve wracking for me. Success yeah. one. One success. Nice. Mark the next episode of Storm King's Thunder. <laughs> this is what it feels like, honestly. Boom. That game is Chris. suffering. Immediately changes campaign. Oof. Oh no. <laughs> oh, that's not a that's not a pass. Okay. Someone needs to be Inspiration. Cool. Inspiration to reroll. He does have it, but that's not a natural one, so maybe save it. Oh. <laughs> It's up to you. Um, Calls up. Right. Decisions, decisions. Heal. Have Heal somebody if you can. Two fists round party is dead. Yeah, but Please. I, I wanted. We're not Save staying in combat. Socks. You'll need them later. Don't use them. I'm not staying in combat if I get is, healed. Is Krim injured? No. no. no Krim's not me. flying. Them. Kill Krim. And enjoying the the view. Crim's at full HP, I think. He's loving this wolf attack. Well, if I heal Chris, he ain't gonna do as much damage as I can do. But Midnight's not gonna stay and fight when they've been down twice. They're not stupid. Well, neither is Chris. Yeah. Cause I'm, I'm sensing voting... that Chris is a little bit of a coward. Cause I'm voting on like picking Chris up and running as a tactical retreat. Mm -hmm. You're you're gonna do that? Like, what if I get if I get like my HP back? <laughs> I'm going to pick him up and start like walking away as a tactical retreat. You're both down, and you're like, I'm gonna take you. I'm <laughs> like, gonna... <laughs> like, if I get back up is the thing. That's what I'm saying. If I get back up. Oh, I gotta. That's yeah, on do something. Chris. Oh. All right. Nice. Ten healing on Chris. Okay. Ten healing. That nice. puts him at six, right? Puts him no, at ten. Puts me ten. <laughs> no, he's just. Well, he he's was minus four. He he's no counting it off. Uh, yeah. Yeah, Coral, I never thought negatives. I'd ever want to hear your sweet dulcet tones any more than I just did. Thank you. <laughs> now, help midnight. Okay, so as that <sighs> turn happens, Certainly. a wolf is up. He is going to. Come around here and attack the healer. For a 12. Finally a wolf missed, eh? Hey? Uh, alright. Mira's turn. Oh wait, at the top of the round was the thing, or what? Where's my other wolves here? I just gotta make sure. One is done. Two. You just did this wolf. You just did, um... Right, this the other two wolves move. are back here. Yeah, this is the top of the order thing. So yeah, the oh, the, you you haven't added them into the order. Right, right. Unless you want okay. me to. Uh, no, okay. <laughs> no, no. It's perfectly okay. We're good, so we're this good. wolf here, we're fine. Um, the the dire wolf, he comes and stands like right next to the other wolf, and actually, um, the other wolf steps forward more. He doesn't disappear. He's he steps forward. And uh, you see as he starts to change into more of a human shape. All right, I'm out of here. He starts to pet. You're on your own, Midnight. He starts to <laughs> pet the dire wolf and smile. And it is Mira's turn. I don't have any heals left. All right. Um... Am I close enough? Sorry, I just moved five feet. Uh, yes, Come I'm on, just guys, enough. you can do this. Okay. All right, I'm gonna run over here, and I'm gonna cast Cure Wounds. Yes. Yay! All right. This is my last spell slot, guys. It's fine. It's fine. <laughs> We're fine. We're just dying. It's fine. <laughs> For five. <laughs> It's enough to make me want to yeet. <laughs> <laughs> that is enough to make you yeet, and you get back up. 
It's enough to make me want to yeet us, delete us out of here. Alright. Can you, you have the cure that's... wounds, you have bonus action? A bonus action. I'm going to give, who's up next? I'm going to give Krim inspiration. Awesome. And Krim, you're up. Okay. I'm going to move here. Sorry. I'm going to fly down. I'm going to try to grapple this wolf. Fingers crossed. Ba -ba -ba. <laughs> Four. Makes everything I have. 219. 24 26. I forgot which one is the bardic dice. Is it, which one's the boy I think uh, that's 1d4? Sorry, 1d6. Uh, one D6. Okay. D6. That matters. Oh, man. Yeah. Not this time, though. <laughs> there would be a tie either way. It could have mattered. That could have mattered. That was close. Could've... Yeah, he, he wiggles out of the thing. And then I'm going to move away. He's used and to eating birds. Tell everyone. <laughs> Oof. Go ahead. I'm gonna tell everyone to run away um, now. Where? To? So the way you're running there, Krim, the way you're moving is straight towards a wall of fog. Just to let you know. Oh. The uh, okay. You, as you notice, because it's sort of been moving forward towards you, it's actually moving like. Uh, wait, can I grab this? Yeah. It's actually about here now. Uh, that it's blocking out, and the the area where the wolves were before is sort of, the mist is coming in through the building and starting to wrap around places well there's no telltale signs that the fog or the mist is harmful to us right not yet it's just fog it's just hard to see yeah so i'm gonna run towards the fog i'm gonna tell everyone we can lose them in the fog all right it's tactical okay so and you entered you the fog away a little bit yeah did you did you Sorry, enter what? into the fog bear yeah are you running yeah Okay, I'm gonna have to get you to make me a constitution saving throw as soon as you enter that fog. Guys, don't run into the fog. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so you are incapacitated, which means you probably fall. Uh, you can make another save next turn. Uh, oh, did I skip that wolf? I did. He gets to attack. He will attack the same one as his friend. So he's going to come in and bite at the healer. Wait, didn't he just walk away from two people? Wouldn't that be he, opportunity attack? Yep. He did. Oh, Should and he attacks. needs... <laughs> if you guys don't kill him, he might kill Cole. <laughs> I oh, there you go. Oh, no! <laughs> yes! As this thing ran away from <laughs> from you to, to take a bite at your friend, yeah, you, you took him out. His Revenge! Body falls <laughs> that Revenge. was close. That would have been 12 damage, Cole. Yeah, yeah that would have taken you down. Vengeance is midnight. <laughs> <laughs> Nicely done, midnight. Uh, so yeah, it's probably it's your turn now, actually, after the chop. There's less things that can kill me now, so I, I can try to move over here. Advantage. Longsword. Uh, yeah. That's the end of this one's life, too. Yay. You got a pile of wolf bodies here on the ground <laughs> that are next to chalk outlines of your own bodies. Someone cut a head off and let's get out of here. The head will be evidence. I don't think we can go back the way we came. What happened to Krim? I don't know. He went into the fog and he has not come out. You guys can give me all a perception check to see if you can see him because it's going to be a disadvantage though. DC 13. Said with disadvantage. Wow. Yeah. I don't you can get much worse than that. Cole, oh, you notice? Hey, uh, oh yeah, no, it's it. <laughs> yeah, no. 
Cole, you notice that there's uh, some feathers just five feet in through the fog on the ground. But the fog is still moving towards you. Okay. Chris, you're up. Okay, uh, with the feral dog down, the wolf, uh, I look around the battlefield, I see the large humanoid wolf man uh, with a uh, ally by his side. Are they holding their position? Are they moving towards us? They're holding their position for now. Um, it looks like the dire wolf here, uh, the werewolf is, has its hand on the dire wolf's head. And the desire wolf is getting more aggressive. He's uh, starting to bare his teeth. Bare his teeth. It's not good. Uh, okay. Uh, I'm gonna point uh, the knife at him and say, "What is it you want, fiend? You've killed the guards. You try to kill us. What? Why?" Uh, he doesn't really respond to you with words. Just a, you hear a snarl, and uh, he looks down at his dire wolf. Okay, then I held my action to stab a dog if it gets close. Okay. And uh, oh, Chris does not see the advancing wall, fog wall uh, as his back has been to it the entire time. <laughs> and nobody seemed to care about it, so... That makes sense. Cool. You're up, sir. Okay. I'm going to come up to right there. I'm going to pull out my rope and my grappling hook, tie the rope to the grappling hook, toss it over there, and drag. Just so, just so you know, the, the smoke starts right here, like where Krim is pretty much, and he's just like one. Actually, let me try to move that smoke for you so it's a little easier to. There. So that's where the smoke starts, and there's where Krim is. You've saw, you've seen his wings there. You don't need to stand that far back, but the smoke has been moving towards you. So if you do stay and finish your turn here, you can assume that the smoke will intake, overtake you soon. And it's not okay, really smoke. Well, it's, a, it's a billowing cloud now that you're closer to it. You can see it sort of looks like, like a fire pit that you just threw water on, and all of that steam comes up. It's sort of doing that constantly, just flowing with steam with uh, new fog coming out of seemingly nowhere. Okay. I'm up to where I'm at right now. I'm going to throw my grappling hook attached to a rope over there to hook him. It's going to hurt him a little bit. Okay. Probably 1d4 damage. And then I'm going to drag him back. Well, you have to roll the hit because you aren't necessarily uh, going to grab him with this. Why not? It is, it's, you're, you're not necessarily a cowboy. <laughs> Would, wouldn't he get advantage though? Because it's a, he's like not, he's stationary. If it's, he's prone. If, if, which should give you disadvantage on a ranged attack. It would be yeah. disadvantage, but I'm going to give you uh, cancel to that because he's not moving um, at all. So he's like basically a stationary object too. So you, you okay, I have. Okay. All right, yeah, you you feel like you have sunk something on you, you've you've you're a pro fisherman. <laughs> After years of throwing <laughs> fishing line into the water, you don't need it, but you just do it anyways. And uh, yeah, you've got one on the line. And then I'm gonna drag him back out of the fog. Okay. Probably and I went 5, 10, 15. So, I, yeah, I dragged him about 15, 20 feet. All right. It, what condition is he in? He's uh, coughing, not really um, moving very much. Well, I get so damage I... from being dragged along the ground where pebbles and rocks and other hard stuff are probably on. Uh, well, no, he... but you you did get a, a stake or something. What was it? A, a grappling hook? Um, so roll 1D4. that. 1d4? Yeah, roll I that. I rolled a one. Piercing damage. <laughs> so you get, uh, you feel a sharp prick. Hey, don't call me that. 
Nice. Uh, Mirror's like, uh, guys, we need to get out of here. And 5, 10, 15, 25, 35, 45, 55, 60. And that's my turn. Wow. And the dire wolf is up. Hey, just so I don't mess up his movement. Yeah, I thought it was high. All right. Yep. Oh, directly eats the crease. He's a running. Oh, no. And I believe that Chris was, you were holding an action? To shank, I believe. <laughs> he tried. Just disengage, guys. Just run. Oh, there goes Chris. Uh, Looks oh, like I'm picking no. him up my turn. All right. The dire wolf comes in and just takes a huge chunk out of Chris's shoulder. He does not look good as he falls to the ground. This game is rigged. Krim, you're, um, you cough and you realize that you're not in the smoke anymore. Damn, that could have been bad. <laughs> you you have a feeling like, you know, I never want to breathe that again. And then uh, uh -huh. you get up, but that takes half your movement if you would like to get up. Yep, I get up and then, yeah, I start flying away, I dash away, so I get to go 75. Half your movement's gone, though. Yeah, from so 25, up. then dashing, that's under 50. Okay, yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. Bird people. Bird people. All right, midnight's up. I want to pick Chris up and make a run for it. Okay. If I'm allowed to. So I believe I can carry quite a bit. Yeah, this guy, I think, would receive an opportunity attack, or no, that's not movement out of the space. On, he's just being dragged out, then I don't think it gets one, actually. Yeah, it's forced movement. Yeah, because it's forced, so yeah. Um, you're going to have half movement, but yeah, you can pick him up. Yeah, I'll pick him up and just, like, dash, so I can go at least 30 into the, either with... I'm either going to go, t should I go towards the group or attempt to go into the grass? I hate to be that person, but can you dash and pick him up? Actually, it's it might take action an action to grab him. Yeah, it's going to take an action to interact with him. <laughs> to interact. And... Unless I can use my inspiration to dash. That's use DM's your inspiration call. to dash, eh? Um, I want to get him and me out of here. Yeah. No, you and can't have inspiration have to dash. No. Aw. Sorry. It's a you know, it starts here as a slippery slope. So. <laughs> the inspiration can be on a roll though. Any roll you want. I I will not stop you from using it on a roll. Any roll. Any roll. Even. Okay, I'm gonna like, add it to my damage roll. Even next time you want to fool somebody with hot dog <laughs> wine. <laughs> I'm gonna do 1d4 plus 1d20 damage with a dagger. So How's Midnight looking? Is she like looking like she's trying to decide where she's going? Because I'm like I'm trying to like decide like should I go towards the like looking towards the group, looking towards like the field of hi hey that's over there. All right. Hi it, hey. <laughs> I, I'm gonna go. Don't go towards the hay. The fog is coming. We've got to get away from it. Yeah, you do notice okay. that when she says that you Agreed. see. Mist is kind of creeping in through the bottom of these, the bottom of these stalks of grain. Yeah, then carrying Chris, I'll go here. Since that's as far Run as I into can the go. light. Okay, as you lift Chris up and throw him over your shoulder, you can hear him uh, just kind of muttering, trying to trying to say something to you. It's coming for us. Don't let it get me. I don't want to go back. Go back. Uh, Chris, you're on a first death save again. <laughs> While you <laughs> mutter words, Eight, I don't oh, I like it to be. Uh, I think that's yeah. a pass. Yeah, that's a that's one save now. Yep. 
Nicely done. Okay. So this guy starts to walk. And he's kind of pacing. And he no, don't ends walk. behind the tree. I have a healing kit. But I haven't had time to stabilize. Cole, you're up. There's a wolf in front of you and everybody's ran away. <laughs> okay, I'm going to run over here and use my healing kit to stabilize um, Chris. So, he is stabilized. Okay, you're at zero, not negative two. <laughs> okay. No more death but saves for him. Not death right. saving. It's funny because Cole runs up behind <laughs> as as the <laughs> giant yeah. warforge is carrying the bot the limp body of a mumbling lunatic in a very nice suit. It's not that nice when you take a closer look. <laughs> a Triton runs up behind and, <laughs> and slaps it on him. Just slap <laughs> Flex seal. <laughs> <laughs> Be healed. Mirror's up. All right, Mirror's going to dash, and she's going to dash to right at the end here. So the big wolf comes. Oh, no. How high are you flying up, Krim? Just curious. Um, just about oh, five feet up. Oh, no. I don't like where this is going. Yeah, just well, about five feet up. It really does like the taste of birds. Who doesn't? And it is in view, a range of a bird. So it runs 50 feet and makes a lunging bird bite attack. Oh no. Oh. Is that yep. what? Is it? Oh yeah, this is gonna ouch. Oh That's man, an ouch. come on. Yeah, that hits, and I go down. Triton oh, might have to take on a person as well. So Crim's on a death save now. Wow. Watch me Man, we you. need another healer. This healer sucks. <laughs> <laughs> nah, oh, these no. animals suck. That's a pass, though. That's a pass. And Midnight's up. Chris is on her. He's starting to mumble a little louder. Feeling a little better. Midnight will tell Cole, go get Krim and run as she takes the dash action towards Mira. And can someone, can Chris move like right above me? Because she's still being carried. I gotcha. Thank you. Okay, so there you go. I feel so lonely. <laughs> Grab Krim and go. <laughs> Everybody's running. All right. Run away! <laughs> we are scared. So this werewolf at the tree here. You guys know it's it's his it's its turn, and uh, you see it. Well, it thing. starts to lean against the tree, and it's smiling, and doing one of these like <laughs> kind of leans. Is that a female? It is. I'm a handsome triton. Good, good eye. <laughs> and it is your turn. Leave. So what do you want to say to the the, the female? I am she's smiling, watching my... you. Like I'm gonna a, like puff up. A, you know, She's blue skin too. Almost to look like you'd give kids watch like playing in a yard or something. She's like enjoying this whole thing, you know. I'm gonna look at her puff up my chest then my eyes go wide and I point behind her and say look out and then I run over here I pick up Krim and that gives me right there with Krim I'm gonna try to uh, pew this guy with my hand crossbow oh the pew does in fact pew. The pew, pew worked. Pew the pew. Pew. <laughs> he took the crossbow bolt like right in the cheek and he's hurt. He, he kind of whimpers and uh, 
but he you can tell that like even with a crossbow bolt in his cheek he still wants to rip your face off <laughs> yeah and I'm I'm just trying to give a little bit of time for them to get further away from him and that's my as it leaps on your face while the crossbow bolt is in its face it, it, you hear a whistle from the tree and the uh, werewolf kind of uses a reaction and the wolf stops it was it was running and it stops in its tracks looks back Crimstern. that's a death save isn't it yeah there you go oh Told nicely it. done oh he's stable uh, yeah um, death saves you have a one point of health don't you yeah and i still get to my turn well that's wrong. what's your ruling on it yeah does that you know mean what? i can put him down I think I mean, yeah. he can probably fly up if he needs to. <coughs> the 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 jostling when you're carrying him got him breathing again, and he flies off from yeah. shoulders. So I, I I woke up, I center myself again, and then I put my arms around Cole, and then we fly off. Yeah, we. So oh. I carry him, so bouncing myself, I guess. Roll up, reverse. Up and away. <laughs> Nicely done. And as yeah. I fly up in the air, I have an eight intelligence, so I'm like, it's the rapture! <laughs> so Finally, the I'm going to see Persona! And then it's going to be Midnight's turn. Me and Chris are going to be running off screen. <laughs> okay. As you're running in that direction, give me a perception check. And Mira, you can too, because you were... Mm -hmm. You were oh, hanging no. out down there. Not the perception checks ever do me any good. Hey! Oh! Case in point. What do I wow. see? <laughs> I see nothing. What do I see with my glowy eyes? <laughs> yeah, I was too see... focused on the wolf. Mira sees fog in front of her. But uh, Midnight, oh, with her um, eyes on escape... No, because you, Mira, you're looking towards the wolf, right? Oh, so you right, see the fog. Right, right. You see the fog coming in, and actually it's sort of like... Uh, passing over where this werewolf was standing on the tree and now the, ed the edge of the fog is sort of where this dire wolf is now and it's really following in and uh midnight with your passive per or with your perception check there you notice that there's a fire in the distance on down the road she'll just point while well, dashing she'll just point out this way there's a camp so with a yes. 22 you would yep. notice that this fog is sort of now reaching up all the way to the sky and sort of encompassing you like a bit of a canopy about 200 feet up. It almost looks like the clouds have dropped, but they're connected to the ground and that's not normal. I'll say and bye, beautiful. They are, you get the feeling that they've enjoyed this exchange. It's just well, pissed because well, the woman reminds me of this dogfish I used to date. You can't see her anymore. The fog has, uh, blocked her vi your vision of her okay out. i cast sacred flame on the dire wolf Ju i i just missed the save throw it's two damage though right oh. yeah mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. two so radiant you see just as the wolf is smothered by the fog a f <laughs> the the holy fire lights upon its back like a little light show and then it disappears because you cannot see him anymore if Mira can't see them anymore, she's just going to turn and run because she can't shoot to distract it. So she's self-preservation kicks yeah. in at that point. Right. I say we run. Prim yeah. is injured. All right. So as I'm this... not injured, but hey. I am injured. As the, the other wall man's of fog injured. approaches, and you, you get the feeling that these wolves are still sort of creeping on the edge of it um, not really chasing you anymore as the fog has begun to do that for them in a way you feel like the, the wall of smoke is actually pushing you in this direction it's a little bit unnerving let's make like a school of fish and swim away 
Midnight's so, already gone, and you can just hear this kind of running in the distance. Junk, 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 junk. I think it goes like, it goes like from slow to. Is that like, what's who was doing that? What is that? That's my soundboard. I was like doing the gradual running faster. That is amazing. I love that. Yeah, sound. I found this this morning. <laughs> okay, so coming down the road. You guys see this in the distance, and we're going to be stopping here, but I'm going to give you the vision of what you see. There's a couple of horses sitting on the road, and you can see that there's a fire dancing in the distance, around which feet. there's a group of people, which uh, I guess, like the... yeah, if you want to give me a perception check from where you are. Then you can maybe see if you recognize these shadowy figures, because it's not it's not the middle of the day anymore. <laughs> Alright. We got a few good enough here. A uh, few not so good, but a few good enough that yeah, you you've seen these you've seen these guys in the bar. You recognize these as maybe the people you were supposed to meet even. And uh they're you can hear sound of like dancing and music and laughter we'll call it a night for there and uh for now tonight and i think that's a, a good start guys uh good start you're being chased by died. mist we survived the wolves barely lady of the mist save us so this is our like uh session zero i guess <clears throat> or, or session one because we ended up uh, well i'm greg <laughs> and I'll be your dungeon master Hi, Greg. this evening. Greg. As we follow Hi, the Greg. story. Hi, Hello, Greg. Everybody. Hi, I'll Greg. be your player. We're going to follow the story of this uh, wonderful group of adventurers who have unknowingly volunteered for a job that they are generous. highly unqualified for. <laughs> what? The dire wolf and werewolf did not pursue them, but rather faded into the mist as the party moved down the road and spotted the dancing lights of a large campfire in the distance. It seems they have found this Vistani camp that Aragorn had invited Chris to, and Mira was told may hold more clues to the whereabouts of her patron. So we pick up there with a group of Vistani people, a hundred feet away, gathered around a campfire, playing music, dancing. They seem oblivious to the dangers of the woods around them as the party wearily and haggardly approaches. Tired and beaten from this fight, but adrenaline still pumping. What do you guys want to do? Uh, limply droop un as an unconscious sack of potatoes from my ally's shoulder. So I'm going to turn to the rest of the party and be like, I'm glad we got out of there. Um, you know, I, I have an open invitation with the Vistanis here, and I think that's them up ahead. Should we go talk to them? Maybe they have healing so we Maybe. can get this one awake. Yeah. All right, let's go. Go. It's uh, basically a, a nice jovial time that they're having out here in the middle of the woods. Laughter, drinking as you get closer, you can see that they've all got a drink in their hand. Anybody who's not doing something right now. Okay. Um, do I see Aragal? Yeah, I mean, uh, how far are you guys away? They're probably, they're starting to maybe clock you too. There's a guy, you actually see one of the horses um, notices you uh, and doesn't really react. Okay. Just kind of, you know, looks at you and then looks away again. All right. Aragal, are you here? Ah, hello, my friends. Come, come, come! Hello, Aragorn. and he's he's giving hugs. He's got his arms out, waiting. Anybody who wants to give him a hug. <laughs> um, Mira's just gonna be like, uh, "No, thank you. We need a healer, rather desperately." Ah, oh, yes, yes. Uh, you, oh, I can see uh, one of you is uh, sleeping. Yes. <laughs> how about uh, we get? How would you like some stew? We have some stew on the fire. You can see that there's a, a, a pot bubbling on the edge of the fire pit here 
It's uh, contents look nice and steamy. There's there's wine casks all littered about this camp. Um, this this guy over here is an older gentleman, and he's um, kind of staring right at you guys. And everybody else is sort of doing their thing, uh, j ignoring you pretty much. Uh, who needs uh, healing? Yes. Give me a one minute here. I will be right back. And he goes into the tent. And comes out again. And a minute later, he's got a, uh, he's got his hands full. He's got five healing potions in his hands. Uh, have a seat at the fire. Enjoy this uh, wonderful time. We are, we are celebrating, my friends. We are celebrating. We are heading back to Madame Eva in the morning. Madame Eva. Yes, Madam Eva, she is, uh, she's our spiritual leader, you say, yes. Ah, hello, colorful bird man. You don't look so good. Drink, drink. Yeah, um, I nod the guy, and then before drinking it, I shake it vigorously to see if there's any meat chunks that's gonna float to the side, then I drink it. So, Let's Chris, see healing. Like yeah, you gain for... 5 HP. Mm, yummy. Then, like, when you come to, I'll hand you the other potion and start drinking on my own. Uh, but... Where are we? Uh, oh, is this wine? What is this? It's a healing <laughs> potion. Hello, Chris! How are you? Uh, I've been better. <laughs> Yes, I uh, see that. <laughs> yes. Uh, good times, good uh, times. Come sit around the fire. It, is it really? Because I've just been used as a chew toy for wolves. How long have I been out for? Mm. What year is it? <laughs> what year is this? A week. A week? Are you asking them? I'm just asking They're messing the group. with you. It was a few minutes, maybe? All right. Oh, all right. Uh, so, uh, so we're safe. Oh, well, um, well done. Um, thank you. I, I, I was worried. I, I didn't know if I could depend on you. Uh, not as a detriment to your character, but I mean, we just met yesterday. Um, but thank you. I, I owe you. You never leave another party member behind. Okay. I don't know how you're defining party, um, but if that is your rule, I would like to repay it someday. Are we a, are we a party? Is that it? Well, we're a group together doing a quest for the Duchess. Because all the parties I've been a part of in the past involved a lot more drinking and a lot less getting eaten by wolves. Ah, Not yes. that type of party. <laughs> and he's he comes back from the, the he's got like his hands full of drinks. If anybody wants one, he's got you know five or six cups full of wine, spilling it everywhere. Ah, uh, yes, I'll, I'll I'll take one of those. Thank you, sir. Ah, um, uh, yes. Gonna grab one. Oh, uh, it's you. I recognize you. Uh, uh yes. Yes, uh, my Fistani friend. Did the Duchess like my wine? Oh, she she loved it. Uh, oh, it was yes. it was it went over great. Um, could not have gone any better. Um, very very happy with that. Thank Although, you, my friend. Yeah, yeah. Um, I knew I could count on you. Right, but you see, uh, somebody uh, switched the labels on the bottle. So, she thinks that your wine is swill, um, and she what? thinks that that um, that other um, the Trevani wine is amazing. So we'll have to sort that out. But this is, this is disturbing. Yeah, I mean, there you got to keep an eye out for them. They'll do that. Um, How? Oh, this is not. But good. I, I think if you just talk it over with her, 
and bring like uh, another bottle. She already likes the stuff. She's she just got deceived. Somebody switched uh, the label. Yeah, so there's a bit of a mix up. So can, she is yeah. she is uh, interested in doing business. Yes. Yeah, yeah. She really likes it, and uh, she just needs to be um, illuminated on the the truth of your product. Uh, she's already she's already tried it, and she already likes. It. She loves it. She just thinks somebody else made it. So. Once we get that all cleared up, I must up. Uh, get in touch with her again soon. Then I. Oh, we to, can uh, go. We can go right now. You know, we could just. If you want to, I mean, there's wolves, but if you want to come with us, help us get past the wolves, back to safety, uh, where there isn't uh, this. Hmm. Well, friend, it is not uh, advisable to uh, travel through these forest woods at night. But it, it, right. Uh, but I, I really morning, would like to get out of here. In the morning, it, I will head safe. back to Daggerford, and uh, the caravan will continue on. They will, they will go back. Towards Madame is it? Is it now? I'm worried about this fog. All right, there's something. There is. There's not right about this mist. We need to get away from here as ah. fast as possible. <laughs> yes, the fog is. Um, it is a tricky one. Yes. Yeah. It's, yeah. Uh, disappointing to see you here, actually. Is far out. Your camper. First light, we will head to the Barovia. All right, Visit all right. Madame Eva. Okay. You can feel free to come with us if you like. As long as there's walls and we're, yeah. then there's no wolves, yes. There are walls, yes. Then we'll go to this Barovia. Very nice. Very nice. I, I must introduce you. Uh, would you like uh, one minute here? <laughs> kicking your torch. Uh, is, would you like to feed the horse? Oh, my, by the gods, those are some colossal horse you have there. Horse? Are they... What are, What breed is this? These are They're the as big as a... Horses. They, yes, they are as big as a ship. They are um, mighty horses. Paul has been feeding the horse uh, seaweed. Mm. Oh. They don't eat people, do they? Uh, no, not at all. <laughs> no, <laughs> no. He's, no. This one's just like drinking from his flask and it, leaning on the horse and bu uh, brushing it. You know. When he's he's too drunk to actually like brush the horse normally, so he's just kind of leaning his face on it and brushing it. <laughs> I will when, pet the horse. Did when no one the... is looking at me, I'm going to cast fog cloud near where. Chris is standing. Okay. So, so that... Chris immediately freaks out and runs away and <laughs> shouts, it's, it's coming for me. It's coming. It's happening. It's happening. <laughs> and then he's going to sprint uh, in the opposite it's... direction from that uh, recklessly. Uh... If he's just kind of charging off, like off into the woods, Mir is going to kind of step in his path to stop him. Wham, runs right into her chest. Uh, but, Mira, oh. you need to get out of here. It's not safe. The fog, it's alive. It's coming for us. We need to leave now. Wait, and, what? And I try to grab her by the wrist and run away. And I'm going to kind of like look back at the fog. and it's Yes, it sprung of... out of the ground. It's not natural. This is not natural. You saw what it did to Krim, and it was moving towards us. It was moving towards us. We need to get out of here right now. All right, I hate I hate to say it, but I'm I'm trying to determine whether or not this fog is the fog or just fog. <laughs> you see, Aragol just heading back to the campfire and laughing after watching that whole <laughs> thing. Uh, the fog is uh, sometimes from the weather. Not a not a problem here. We will we will be fine with the fire here with all our friends here. There is no reason to worry. Just, uh, there's a man on the street corner. Um, he knew everything and talked for hours <laughs> about it. <laughs> really, nobody else would listen to him. They're all crazy. Oh, yes. But, uh, My cousin, he does this too. Yeah, yeah. Um, truth seers, you know? They see truth in everything. Um, like, yes. uh, why, uh, some people break out in rashes when they eat peanuts. It's like tiny demons. And uh, why some people uh, can't uh, drink milk without getting sick. 
it's because uh, they've committed sins in their past lives. You know, it's all pretty straightforward. Ah, yes, yes. This is. This sounds like common knowledge. Yes. Yeah. In fact, if you're not feeling well, I can help you out. I'm pretty good uh, with uh, uh, carpentry tools, uh, particularly the plane. And if you are a little low in like the libido or something. I can take my plane and just shave off a few layers of skin, and that helps send out the bad spirits. Send out the bad spirits. Uh, maybe we will uh, get back to this uh, some other. I time. have my tools with me. I can do it right now. You see, I just I just shave it off. It scares the spirits, and your libido picks right back up. It's amazing, guaranteed. Perhaps people you'll show always... my cousin Boris there. Yes, hey, people Boris. always feel better when I stop. Boris is sitting over, standing over by the tent. <laughs> okay, Boris, I think uh, this man wants to show you something he can do. Uh, <laughs> anyone else? Uh, would you like to uh, meet my family? We'd Boris. love to. <laughs> um, but then this man, Stanimir, stands up. Uh, or you guys don't know that yet, but um, his name is Stanimir. Oh, hello! Hello, everyone! Nice to meet you all! Hey... Nice to meet the fellow travelers on the road. Uh, would you care to, uh, eat some, have some soup? And, uh, my family has prepared some wonderful meal and ale. Smells great. You have seat to run fire with me and we tell stories, yes? That sounds lovely. However, I don't require food or drink. I don't require sustenance like the rest of the humanoids. Just a little bit of oil usually does the trick. Crazy world we have here. Walking armor. Hi. He's like, gather, gather around the fire, everyone. Gather around the fire. It is time to uh, tell our tales. And you see them all kind of like, hey, okay, story time. <laughs> story, story time! time. <laughs> okay, story time! Hey, I love stars. All is keeping his distance a little bit because the fire dries out his skin. <laughs> nice. That's awesome. Sounds like he needs a fresh coat of oil. <laughs> no, I Do you have any extra bacon grease? <laughs> As you're all gathered around here, this old man, he's drinking from his mug of ale and he finishes it and puts it down and then he's got a bottle around his uh, waist it's on like a rope he's got a few of them actually they're kind of dangling around pops the lid off and you hear a bunk and then he fills his mouth with this wine substance or whatever and then he spits it into the fire and you see how the flames turn from an orange color to a green. And everyone around the fire just kind of gets quiet, music stops. And he and he looks at you all and We come from an ancient land whose name is long forgotten. A land of kings. Our enemies forced us from our homes, and now we wander the lost roads. The dark shape in the fire <laughs> takes the form of a man being knocked from his horse, a spear piercing his side. Stanimir continues. <laughs> One night, a wounded soldier staggered into our camp and collapsed. We heard his cries and nursed his terrible injuries and quenched his thirst with wine he survived when we asked him who he was he would not say all he wanted was to return to his home but we were deep in the land of his enemies we took him in as one of our own and followed this man toward his homeland his enemies hunted him they said he was a prince. Yet, we did not give him up. Even when their assassins fell upon us like wolves. And then he 
kind of sits back again on the log. Deep in the bonfire, you see the dark shadowy figure standing with a sword drawn, fighting off a host of shadowy shapes. This man of royal blood, he fought to protect us as we protected him. We bore him safely to his home and he thanked us. He said, I owe you my life. Stay as long as you wish and leave when you choose. And now that you are on my side, you will always be safe. The figure in the dancing fire van uh, vanquishes its final foe and then disperses in a cloud of smoke and embers. And Stanimir's face becomes a somber mask. A curse has befallen this noble prince of ours, turning him into a tyrant. We alone have the power to leave this domain. We have traveled far and wide to find such heroes, perhaps as yourselves, to end the curse of our dread lord and put his troubled soul to rest. Our leader, Madam Eva, knows all. Will you return to Barovia? Speak with her. Mira will kind of lean forward towards the fire and towards and and say, I for one would like to meet this Madam Eva. I know that she would want to meet you as well. So Mira's going to kind of like scooch over and scooch in between this guy and Aragal and kind of whisper to Aragal. And, and she's like, I, I don't want to say it in front of the group, but what was so important about the stone? Ah. Yes, well, my family, we are... We are picking up where the pieces have been uh, dropped, yes? There are lots of folks in Barovia who are struggling, and the wine seems to be a good way to lift the spirits of the people in such dark times. Times of change and times of struggle. But without the gems... It can be difficult to grow the grapes for the wines. So, they have become rather important to us. This. We do not have hope of continuing this business without reacquiring this gem. We are hoping that you are our ally in this. Orwin certainly is. She'll go, well, I can't promise you anything. The safe was empty. I get the feeling uh, Stanimir is not a fan of this venture. I never introduce my uh, whole family to you. Uh, this is my daughter. Her name is Damia. She is a seer as well. Um, much like the one you met at this uh, wedding I have heard about. And, uh, my son, over here, his name is Ratka, and he's, and he's like, hello, my name is Ratka, and he's, you know, he's wasted, <laughs> and, Ratka. uh, does it, he does a cheers with the guy next to him, and, uh, he's like, hey, uh, what's the other name, sir? Hello, my friend. Hello. How are you? I am well. Cheers, Cole was basically drink. trying to hide from the fact that he was scoping out the backside of the of his sister. Well, she didn't notice, so you're good. Green <laughs> hair does something to him. <laughs> I just you're still looking at her. <laughs> <laughs> like, uh, you met my sister, Damia. 
Oh, like, why? No, I have not. Hello, hello my blue dear. man. Hello. I hope thou art doing well. Oh, yes. Very nice. Wait, that's your girl voice? She's a girl for starting fortune teller. They all sound the same. <laughs> What's that, mm. Chris? I'm sorry, my friend Chris needs me. <laughs> <laughs> Do you like women with chest hair? <laughs> Mira will uh, pull out her lute and start playing an actual like tune for them while they're dancing. Uh, and then this guy will join in too. <laughs> Um, and as she does that, she's kind of walking back over to Stanimir. So, like, she's playing her lute, walking back over to Stanimir. And, like, as she's playing, she's not really paying attention to what she's playing. Whatever kind of jig she's playing at this point is muscle memory for her. And she'll turn to Stanimir and go, So, about this curse, um, any idea on how to break the curse? Well... Our Dreadlord has been cursed for many, many years now. And... Uh, what's a Dreadlord? Oh, well, it's, he's the prince we have saved from the mists, from the death that he might have faced. And you call him Dreadlord? Why, why do you do that? It is uh, an honor to teach you of his greatness. You see... He comes from a royal bloodline, yes? His father is the great King Barov, who was the once ruler of these lands. Before many years, many years before Strahd was ever born, these, these lands were taken over and the people moved, displaced from their homes, some even killed. Our great lord, he came through these lands and saved everyone. Salvation for everyone. It was a bloody war, though. And naturally, the locals, they, they have come to, come to know him as the devil. It is not something uh, hold, that Hold on, we... hold on there. I feel, like, I feel like there's a bit of a jump here. He went from being the, the savior and conqueror of this land, and now everybody reveres him as the devil? Well, this is so long ago that generations forget the sacrifice of the ones before. Just like my struggles when I was your age are long forgotten now by everyone. So me. they're they're just ungrateful, and they they don't give him they don't give him the respect that he deserves. To call him a devil, though. Well, how... so, this just is, how old is this man? This is where the curse comes in. You see, you must speak with Madame Eva to learn more about this. I am not one of these seers, right? I, uh, I do, I tell you what I know, but I do not want to give you the wrong impression. Adam Eva is the one who knows all. Your daughter is a seer. She is, she is. She is a young seer, though. Yeah, I, I can see her right there. Doesn't that make her eyesight better? Ah. Uh, <laughs> sight comes with age when you are stunned. All right. Uh, your ways are mysterious and unknown to me. But uh, as long as you can get us out of here safely, I don't see any wrong with it. Yes, we will travel down the old oh. Spanish road. It will show you our great valley in Barovia. We'll Bring it to the village of Barovia first. And then farther down the road, we will come to Valaki and Madame Eva. And that is where you will learn all you need. 
for now. It is getting late. Uh, do you wish to uh, stay up until the sun? I don't think I can do this with you anymore. I am too tired. Yeah, well, I've kind of had a long day as well. Uh, if we can find a place to that's safe. Uh, is it right if I sleep in one of the wagons? Well, the wagons are uh, going to be for me and my family, the elders. This is the traditions that we have. Right, um, but, you know, there's a lot of wolves out there, and they like the taste. They got a taste of me, and I think they want more. So if I one of you don't there mind. there should be room for you in the tent. In the tent. You will have uh, okay. to ask my son. He is uh, the one in charge of the tent and the guard and all of the such things, unless I wish to take over. All right. I'm sure you won't mind. Which one is your son? Oh, he's Ratka over there, looking at his right. shoes. Uh, Ratka, uh, up here. Uh, the wolves aren't on your shoes. Yes, I... Uh, uh, hello? Is... I, it is... It, it's good to speak with you. Uh, how goes the evening? I was looking at this soup. Sorry. Sorry. I, yeah. Yes, yeah, it's, it's, it's good soup. It's magical soup, you know. Of course it is. I don't see why you shouldn't be looking at the soup when you're on guard duty. Not like there's packs of hungry wolves out there he's, ready to rip our throats like out. He's taking two steps forward and one step back. And he's got his soup bowl, and he's going for the. Going so, for more soup. I was wondering, uh, could I stay in the tent? I had kind of a rough day, and uh, would like to not get eaten. In the tent? Yes, yes. You want to? All right. uh, yes, there is. All right. That was a good talk. Uh, thank you. Tent. Yes, of course it is. Yes. <laughs> Good, good job guarding. You keep doing that. Thanks. Do you good know night. why they call these uh, uh, the magical frying pans magical? The, why is that? They are they are cast iron. Yes. Uh, oh, because that's very clever. Uh, Look at you. Go uh, here, I think I've got something for you. Here's a copper coin. He's back in the tent, passed out with his soup. <laughs> Thing he's Paul fast. is laying down where he's at with he's his head on, resting on a branch. While he falls asleep. Oh, you're you're there. Okay, yeah. Yeah, I'm gonna be going to sleep. All right, Mira kind of sidles over to midnight and goes, "Was that guy just in charge of the watch? I think he was, and now he's sleeping with soup." Hmm. Okay, I think he had too much wine. So, do I, I notice not... anybody on watch right now? Uh, yeah, there's a, there's a guy with his horse still. He's uh, leaning on the horse. Um, okay. Everybody else has been drinking all night. You hear the wolves howling in the distance still. They seem to echo back to each other. One calls and then another one answers, but then... Just like a clock, the hands on a or the the numbers on a clock, you feel like you're in the middle of it and surrounded by wolves at every hour. Okay. Um, so I don't know about you, but I think we should also keep our own watch and not just trust these guys to keep watch for us. What do you think? Oh, that would be easy. Since I'm not like you humanoids, I don't I sleep, but not like how you sleep. I can oh, still I can still hear and see while I am inactive. Oh, well, that's interesting and useful. Paul is snoring loudly. <laughs> I'm just gonna perch on one of the trees. Midnight's just kind of kind of stay sitting and entered like her sentry mode. Well, as, as she, like, enters sentry mode, you see the bright blue orbs kind of dim a little bit. Alright, okay. and... And Dim as mode. the night kind of winds down, you know, Mira goes from playing this jig on her lute to kind of, you know, gently slowing the music down. More of a... quiet... peaceful... sound. 
And when she thinks that nobody can really hear, she'll start kind of humming to herself. And you'll hear something that goes a little bit like this. This stunning daughter, beware, I heard him cry. His voice carried across the silver moon as he cried up to the sky. When he did flee to save his daughter's life, one hope he had for her. Because he'd found a fate worse than death, his precious daughter he'd give up. I heard, I heard, across the moonlit trees, the woman warning me, beware, beware. This stony daughter, beware, beware of me. And then she'll kind of hey. just kind of. Yeah. That was really good. Thanks. Yeah, I'm oh. sure midnight will talk yeah, about it in the morning. <laughs> Paul had his head turned toward her, a tear running down. And then she'll just kind of like, she kind of plays herself to sleep against the trunk of this tree. That was beautiful. Okay. So, a couple things happen when you drift off to sleep. A few hours after everyone's gone to bed, this fog begins to roll in and the fire flickers and struggles for life. Midnight, who's been keeping watch and making sure, you know, to keep it going, keep putting small logs on and stuff like that. At times, midnight, you notice that the fog comes in gusts and it rolls in and to, the, to the point where sometimes you can't even see your own feet. Midnight did not, however, see in her time when she was monitoring everything, these Vistani even leave. They must have pushed off at some point when the fog was at its thickest. You're not quite sure. Uh, perhaps the fog scared those horses away. Perhaps you didn't even, if you're trying to put all this together, you didn't hear the horses moving. You didn't hear a wagon. You didn't hear any voices. The only thing you have heard all night is the sound of wolves howling. They seem to be still everywhere around you. And then as the sky starts to brighten up and the night sort of becomes day again you can see how you know the shift of the hue of the sky and everything you can you can tell the, the fog around you is still thick but it seems to be more lightly obscuring now rather than heavily obscured and, and midnight with her sensor abilities has uh, determined visibility <laughs> to be about 60 feet and so the rest of you all sort of wake up in the morning you got this chill in your bones the fog in the air you can switch out your your backgrounds as well uh, but the fog in the air begins to run backwards towards the trees where like no light from the rising sun has hit them yet as it does, you begin to see the details on the trees that are nearest to the road again. They look like gray ghosts that are starting to form as the mists reveal their whole, uh, the trunks of all these trees throughout the forests. And Grim, you have a moment of sudden realization as you take in the look of everything. You're, you've been sitting on a tree all night, right? But you didn't notice that the trees around this tree and even the tr this tree that you've been sitting on this branch it's not the same tree you sat down on yesterday. All the Vistani seem to be gone. There is no sign of them. You notice that the trees above you come in like a canopy now. 
Whereas before they were just on the other side, opposite sides of the road. Now the the dead twigs that meet above your head before they, before you can actually get out, and sort of feeling like this is a bit of a caged in situation. Like everybody else, you have forty feet. Like who cares? But Krim, you feel the, the difference here, where you can't find any pathways to get up to the sky. Plus, the fog is the same fog that it looks very similar to the way it moves as the stuff that you choked on the other night so you might not be as inclined to fly right into that uh you know up to you but yeah um i came myself downwards like he just flies as fast as he can downwards to where everyone else were uh everyone else were and then he's gonna go we need to go now what what's wrong um Guys, they're they're covered. Uh, it can get out. We need to go. Well, well, this isn't good. What? What is going on, Krim? We need to Wait, go. Where? Just, where's the Vistani? We're traveling yeah. with them. We'll just stay with them. Where'd they go? They had to have left sometime in the night, but I didn't hear or see them leave. It, is that possible? Oh man, there's I need so to much really fog. Stop drinking as much as I need. Uh, well, they're probably not too far ahead of us. Is, is there any sort of tr tracks? Like, we can follow wagon tracks. Are there any wagon tracks around here? Yeah, you can tell, Cole. These are not very fresh. Like, it's not like the Vistani just took off from this exact location last night. These look like maybe, it, like, there's no tracks here where you would expect to see, because like, that's where the horses just were. You don't even see any horse hooves from horses sitting here all night, like, there is something wrong here. Something very wrong. Uh, do you have anything beyond that? I mean... Can you not sense it? There is an evil permitting this place. I can feel it in my bones. Him looks around for any exit or any part, any path that there, that is not covered by fog. This end of this road seems to be, you know when you're in one of those situations where you have a left turn and a right turn to make? Mm -hmm. And one of them seems to close in, and the other one seems to open up more. But you're getting that feeling from this, and on this side everything seems to close, and all the branches seem tighter, all the trees seem closer together, and over on this side feeling it like it's more open there's more light that way i mean i don't i don't know it doesn't seem that strange it seems rather familiar i mean what do you mean well, i mean familiar? i mean the forest is still here and i mean the fog is kind of keeping its distance i guess that's good and and what about that or and he shoots an eldritch blast uh, across the canyon Ah. Uh... You do that the whole time? No. Okay, that so describe is... what just happened as far as visually. Oh, it's like a, a twisting uh, rope of uh, fog with uh, several like fangs protruding at the very tip of it, and it just slams into a rock and it blows a, a chunk off of it, leaving just a smoldering uh, tendrils of wisps uh, of mist. Uh, that's new. Um, I mean, what was in that wine, right? <laughs> yeah. Uh. What? Uh. You could I, do that all this time? No, I couldn't. I could not do that. I mean, I was literally eaten by wolves yesterday. If I could do stuff like that, I would have been doing it, all right? Just stabbing it with my dagger. She is going to kind of, like, grab him by, like, the collar of his shirt and, like, what? put one of her, <laughs> her daggers up to his throat. Cole is pulling out his uh, trident of persona this? and holding his shield up. What kind of magic is that? It's not I, right. 
if this is about the other night, I'm sorry. I mean, I just didn't think it was a good idea. You know, you were drunk and I didn't want to, you know, take advantage. I'm sorry. What? No, I'm talking oh. about that magic that oh, you just shot yes. from your Oh, hand. of course. Yes, that's what I meant to say. Uh, I have no idea. I'm sorry. I, if I knew, I... <laughs> it's just this. I don't know. I, I just woke up and it, I just kind of felt like all this was familiar. I felt invigorated. I don't know. I don't what know. do you mean familiar? Insight check. It's familiar. In in a there's a, there's a seeping nostalgia to it. Oh, is this well, as if like deja vu? Samir is like looking him in the face, and she's really like she gives it a moment to just kind of like be like, "You mess with me, like I, I'm gonna end you." And then she'll put her dagger away. <laughs> she's like, "Guys, I don't I don't like this at all. I feel like we're being." Corralled. Well, we're off to a good start. <laughs> good morning to you, by the way, Mira. Yeah. You mean like how the mist could be pushing us to have gone to the camp? There's no mist in that direction. I mean, it seems like rational after we had that bad run in the other night, and I'm no fan of it myself. Uh, I think we should just go where it isn't. So you think we should go that way? The way that every fiber of me being is telling me not to go? I don't know your body. I don't know what your intuition is telling you. But what I can see is a path with no mist and a, and, and mist. And I want to go not in the mist. Away from danger is the prerogative. We are being forced along that path. We are being led. Can you not sense this? No, I... It's ridiculous. Some sort of powerful wizard taking time out of his day of ruling the world to <laughs> take a bunch of common to people and Put them in a maze of some sort. What kind of wizard would... You know, oh, that's exactly what a wizard would do. Yeah. Oh, shit. I want to see if we can find Madame Ava wherever she may be. All right. Well, let's find an inn or a tavern or some place where there's neither mist or wolves or mysterious disappearing Vistani. Um, start there. Just as you say, wolves again. I'm oh, sure no. you're hearing them in the distance. Paul approaches to the spot he's at, and he he stares into the opening in the mist, and he shakes his head and looks behind the, on the other direction on the road, and then says, I do not believe we have any choice, but we should be on our guard really you're, as you as you have time on this road you're realizing that you are there's there's nothing natural about this you are being directed towards this area and as this happens uh the mists in front of you slowly begin to clear up it it stops becoming so obscured um you're you're able to actually see like a regular day almost in the distance ahead of you and as you come down the road and around a slow bend in the whole thing you notice that something's approaching in the distance looks like a mountain maybe hard to tell exactly but then it sort of comes into view this wall for lack of a better word it's not a mountain carved something and this edifice stands before you as you come out of this tree line see that's good news for civilization just right around the corner if there weren't people here there would be no walls and uh -huh. how long have we traveled um you've probably been traveling for like an hour this morning something like that 
Uh, anybody else concerned by the fact that they have no heads? It's very old. As you get, as you as you spend more time looking at it, you realize that. Like, first of all, this looks like something that couldn't possibly be man-made. It's gargantuan. It's reaching up to the heavens almost. Grim, you're you're noticing that the tops of that statue is where the air starts to thin a bit any higher than that and you start to be, you know, a little woozy. And, um, yeah, I mean, it's just very, it's an ancient gate, but it seems to, um, seems to be magically preserved, possibly even, and be older than it would be if it was man-made in this state. Go down, I'm more calm than before, then I go, well, the sky is broken. Sky is broken? Broken how? So many ways, the sky is broken. I, I wouldn't fly up there if I were you guys. Well, I can't fly, so I think we're covered there. I look at my wings, I look at your signs, and I go, oh. Oh. Uh, shall we continue forward then? I mean, a warm bed and uh, cool ale is uh, waiting for us somewhere out there. We can find out where we are once we go through those gates. Yes. <sighs> All right. Mira will pull out her hand crossbow and her rapier and kind of go through the gate. Paul still has his trident and his shield up, but he's very hesitant to go in that place. And as he looks upward at the statues and the walls, he kind of shivers a little bit, shaking his head, and then he steps through the gates. Um, After so we enter, all... I'm going to turn around and shout out the doors. Do, do you want us to close it, mighty wizard? And just as Don't you say draw that, more attention. Just as you say that, the gates hmm. they begin to close on their own. Hospitality, they want us here. Come together, and as as they do, you notice that the fog wall that's been chasing you this whole time hits them and stops. Yeah, see, it's protecting us. This Whoever here is them. protecting us from evil. And Mira's oh, gonna like slap him upside the head and how, be like, "How? Why, Mira? Why do you hit me so?" We're locked in now. Locked in. Look at look around. We're protected from the fog that kills people. It nearly killed Krim. And these gates automatically opened, let us in, closed, and now are protecting us. We're safer now than we've ever been. Or we've walked into the trap. That. Okay. I mean, I for one am excited to meet whatever is going on here. I mean, if if somebody this powerful wanted us dead, they they could have killed us while we slept. Are you all still suspicious of Chris? To be fair, I'm kind of suspicious of everybody. Except for maybe you. I'm very suspicious of Chris right now. Well, I'm suspicious of Blue. As you're all looking at each other Jeez, right now, you got this sort of, uh, you know, this eyeball circle going on while you're walking down the road. And while you're doing that, um, give me a perception checks with advantage. There's up ahead on the road, just just off the road, if you've like a like a foot off the road, you see a leg hanging out into the road just a leg it's a, a, a well it's got a boot <laughs> leg and a boot is the leg attached to anything or is it just a leg by itself <laughs> oh thunder is that is that leg attached to anything or is it just a leg it's a boot i'm gonna pick up a stick and i'm going to poke the leg i well i'm poking it with a stick is he dead or not uh, it's well it's half buried in the ground He's definitely dead. Well, Cola this is walk, Cola this walk is forward and grab the foot, get a good grip, and just pull. And as you Cole, do this, why? you get this terrible, 
terrible feeling, Cole. You grab the boot and you pull as hard as you can, or relatively hard, hard enough you feel. And as you do so, you you see the skin tone of this corpse as it comes out of the soil. And you, you'd recognize this oh, man anywhere. Why? It's your father. Oh shit. His father. Your father. Spitting image. He's there right in front of you. Like, even younger than he was when he died. Uh, Cole just kind of drops the leg to the ground and stumbles backwards in shock. And then as you do that, the whole thing sort of dissolves and bubbles into ashes and then maggots and they crawl away into the ground. Cole drops down to one knee and he's almost hyperventilating. He's so freaked out. Cole, are you okay? What did you see? Did you not see the skin tone? The the no, the I didn't. Face. Well, what as soon was as left you, of the face? You grabbed the leg and yanked on it. I raised my arm to protect myself from viscera. What did it you was, see? Did, did it you was know my was? father. How did your father get out here? I do not know. When was is your father? Uh, is was it up until this point was your father still alive is this new my father was murdered by my brother that is why i'm here i'm seeking my brother my brother he was he was not like me he studied necromancy in secret and when my father came upon him practicing his evil art not secret they enough. they they argued and fought and my brother killed my father. That's, that's that's horrible. I'm sorry to hear that, but I wish I wish that on no man. Did a proper burial happen? We fed the body to the sharks. All right. Well, then Triton this obviously could not be your me. father, since your father has been fed to fishes. This could just be an illusion. I, I, he's obviously so shaken he can barely speak. He's trembling. He, he starts praying under his breath to Persana, asking for strength. And he just well, doesn't know what to say. Cole lifts his head, stands up from one knee from being on one knee he stands straight and anger is on his face now and he says my brother he must have done this somehow his dark arts I must find him and deliver justice upon him mm. that's the spirit a little revenge helps you stay hey, focused and persona's name I add real quickly, even though you know it's really for me. Cole stops walking for a moment, lifts his arm wide and yells out, Rafe, I'm coming for you. And then he continues walking. Right. Certainly found his purpose in life. Mira, as she's walking, she's going to actually kind of take a little bit of a page from Chris's book, and she's just kind of mumbling to herself, like, great. You know, hell people, necromancers, evil wizards guiding us. Parents, I never knew about it. This is turning up to be a great day. Right now, even Mira's mumbling to herself. Chris mumbles to himself. Yes, he mumbles. <laughs> and as you guys are all mumbling and bowing and... <laughs> Grim's just Midnight, you want to get in on this mumbling? Mumblecore. No, the only thing... It, the only thing Midnight could mumble would be like maybe a, a small prayer from her church, but there's not that many prayers. <laughs> Do gods get angry when you mumble prayers to them? I, I, would, I, I would think they'd want clear alliteration. Like pronunciation, like you don't They're want. They're happy to hear from us at any time. Are they though? I mean, are yes. they though? 
Sometimes they don't want to just go and smite a fool. It's my job. Yeah. All right. Okay, so we mumble our way to town. You see that the mists are cleared enough to reveal a small village ahead. Three or four. Right now you can see three or four houses or something. The distance there. Three or four buildings. The first two are looking like they're a little smaller. Um, actually, one of them looks maybe like it's burned burned out, maybe. This larger house that's standing all... It looks from here, it looks like maybe there's a, a large signpost in front of it or something. But you notice how to the south of this road, all of the, the soil seems like it's been freshly tilled. These seem It seems like a giant farm area. All this land... As far as until the in the way in the distance the forest begins to take over and the land tilts down into the distance and to the north see how the, the land sort of rises up and again mists become creeping out from the forest and so this sort of looks like well maintained farm areas like where you know somebody's dug the weeds out at least of this area and there's as you get closer you're seeing fresh fr fresh vegetables growing on these vines see, what did i tell you civilization yeah you're starting to see how you know it must be where the people are you don't see yeah. any people but things are looking up uh all right i see a house 200 feet off in the distance uh hello anybody home uh you, you see somebody's face. It looks like a little girl's face, even. Oh, don't, come on, come on, the, little girl, the front porch. Uh, darling. She just pokes her head out and then uh, pulls back. Hi, uh, we, we're and we're in a spot of trouble. We're a bit lost. Um, do you know where we are? As you get closer, you can see. I'm shouting at her from 200 feet away. Oh. Like Look. I'm standing on the edge of their property, and I'm like waving. Right. Well, then you would see that. Um, the edge of their property is maybe about, yeah, 100 feet from the road. And when you when you get close enough there, you can see that she's actually standing next to a little boy. And she's, like, holding him back. Um, Are your parents arm home? Around him. And she, you can see that, that this little boy is crying. And you guys are pretty far away, but she's like, you know. Help. Hello? Help. Well, as you get close enough and everybody's sort of now standing sort of in front of this house, okay. say, you can see that these two are, are um, there's an age difference between them. Um, the little boy is maybe like three or four, four years old, and uh, it looks like this girl protecting him must be his sister. She's probably getting closer to ten. You hear her say like, Hello? Um... Is... I'm sorry. Just be quiet. Be quiet. Please. Um... But do you... Can you help? Uh, uh, certainly, the little dear. But where are your parents? Why are you here all alone? There, there, you hear the little boy kind of... <laughs> They're inside, and she's uh, she's like shh, like they, uh, our parents are inside the house, and the, there's a monster inside. Are your parents okay? I I don't know. My our mom told us to to go outside and wait for oh. them to come get us, but. Maybe That's Walter's all right. We'll, we'll go in there. We'll have a look. We'll make sure it's all safe. No monsters under the bed. And then you hear the little boy say, "Baby Walter's upstairs. He, he he's crying." And you can I now, don't hear him. You can now actually, when he says that, you're picking up a. Sounds like from maybe the. Give me a perception check. And see how accurate you can. Okay, so you don't know if yeah, it's I don't, I don't hear anything, floor, darling. on the second floor, on the third floor, but you're already hearing some faint crying. And Krim, I you know, do hear faint crying, though. You're like, third floor. <laughs> baby, third floor. <laughs> there, that's knows what's baby. 
All right, we'll, we'll just we'll just have a quick peek inside and make sure your pants are all right. So Mira remembers what it's like to be a kid on the streets, barely, but she remembers. So uh, she knows that all kids cannot be trustworthy, and she would like to kind of watch them and see if she thinks that they're trustworthy. Insight check the children. Hell yeah. <laughs> As far as you can tell, these kids are terrified and they want this monster gone. Uh, it, they're pretty scared. Uh, there's, You can hear a baby upstairs. I'll make sure that you are, are doing, your, your parents are all right. And, uh, and I open the door and begin baby to walk inside. Walter, we, we didn't get him. We, I forgot to bring him down when mommy said to come down, so he's still upstairs, and I don't want to go back in. We'll uh, bring you... him out. Yes. All right, guys. Toss him out the first... window. <laughs> we will not toss him out the she window. Krim may fly him out the window. <laughs> we can have Krim check the windows. Since yeah, he can now, fly up to the windows. That's a great idea. Uh, yeah, Krim, you, uh, I, I hear a, a baby up above. Could you maybe go and get it? Fly up? Look through the windows? Or at least look in the windows and see what you see? I guess. Then he flies up, looks in the windows, and see what he sees. Can he tell what window, what room the baby's in? The girl points up. My baby Walter's up there. I'm gonna go towards the window that she's pointing at, and then I'm gonna try to open it. Or I'm gonna stare inside first to see if I can see the baby. Um, it, the window's locked, uh, but you can peer just inside. You see like a crib in that room, and it's got like a, a mobile hanging above it. Okay, then I'm gonna. Um, Wrap some cloth around my arm, break the window in more to, try to avoid the shards, and I'm gonna look for the baby. I'm gonna go and look for the baby. But, Krim, as you get closer to this window and you peer in. Yeah, so there's a crib there. Fancy. When I was young and didn't have cribs, I just had a nest. And I had to share it with like five other birds. The room in here, you can see from the outside, everything looked um, a lot nicer. Um, inside this bedroom, uh, you're seeing like cobwebs. Um, you're seeing like the weird stuff on the walls and things. It looks like rot and mold and stuff in here. And over top of the nursery crib is a, a black shroud with a mobile hanging above it. It's playing like a little creepy little song to you. I slowly approach the crib being very aware of my surrounding. I'm purposely talking slow because it's creepy. And then I'm gonna move the shroud to the side. As you do that. What do I see? You hear behind you the door to this room fly open. Uh, as just the same time you touch the shroud. As the door flings open, you see into the crib there is a shrouded baby looking figure. And right behind you, as the door opens behind you as well, this this room opens up behind you, and it's a larger room. Um, you see standing there the ghostly visage of a woman, and she is looking at you as your hand reaches for this crib that uh, for this thing in uh, the shroud to move the blanket out of the way. Um, you hear her scream. Um, a, a blood curling scream and uh, roll initiative. 
Back in my tribe, we call that a no. For so. some reason, my picture showed up as the torch I'm carrying. Oh, <laughs> you, um, I'll just leave that. You're the torch now. You selected the torch. <laughs> I'm I think. a torch now. Uh, yeah, I think, yeah, the torch could have been selected instead of yours. Yeah. <laughs> Too late, it's no cannon. <laughs> you are a torch. As this ghost screams at you, Krim, you have one chance to do something before uh, you can see it's going to be... It's already started to like fly at you. Looks very angry. I throw a dart. Can we fade to black while it's in midair? And it's coming nice place. at you, and you have 10 feet between the two of you, and a baby in the crib behind you, maybe? Maybe. Uh, Might yeah, be fake. Things are, things are looking interesting now. Chris and Cole, you guys both hear a unintelligible scream sounds like a lady's voice and it sounds like it's coming from the house but it's hard to tell samir is gonna like shout up to the window krim how are you doing do i believe the scream came from the house or yeah you would have with that perception check you would have known it was coming from somewhere in the house um but it's hard to tell exactly where all right, so I'm going to just drop what I'm holding and turn to Midnight and say, My Lanather, uh, someone's screaming in the house. We need to get there. Then I'm going to move to the house. Krim, you are up, sir. Green here, I think. You see this thing coming at you, but it's um, it kind of looks like it's got um, maybe servant's clothing on it. Uh, it's a It's an apparition. Its hair is wild, and it's moving at you, um, looking at the crib directly. Okay, then I'm going to throw a dart at the apparition, because it's, in it's instinctive, the crib, okay. unfortunately. So a 16. And then I'm going to grab that. Yeah. Okay, well, that hits, and you can see that the thing... Its eyes go from the crib to you. <laughs> that it doesn't look like it really hurt it that much. Um, uh -oh. It went through it sort of, and uh, it did sort of take some of the wisp out of it, but not as much as you would have thought from a nice throw like that. My wisps, they're melting away. Okay, then I'm going to grab the baby and then fly out. Okay, so as you grab the baby... Uh you realize that the shroud is um, just a shroud and it's a blanket uh, that's coil curled up to look like there's a baby in it and it falls like to a blanket in your hands. But as you look towards the window, you realize that the window is boarded up with bricks. Oh. <laughs> so it's bricked up. Oh. Okay, so I'm going to go inside the room with the ghost and then check out is this one a door and can i open it <laughs> yeah you can open the door um go ahead and move on through if you like yep i'll move on to the door okay so as you do that you come into a corridor there and you see in front of you uh like a suit of armor standing at the top of the stairs um and another door at the end of the far end of the hall there's a spiral staircase heading down it looks very nice uh, ornate spiral staircase and it looks like it there's a railing right here in front of you as well i'm gonna fly down yeah okay wait one second okay. as you're right here you notice that something is gr trying to grab you from behind and <laughs> boy am i popular in this session oh, man it's just like the men's locker room all over again oh no and an animated oh, suit no. of armor <laughs> decides it wants to grab you it makes uh two melee attacks the first one is going to be a grapple instead of a slam it's going to try to grab you with both of its arms 12 no I fly way down. Um, I think Bird's wingspan is about their height, so um, he's going to dive down with his wings furled, and then just before he hits the ground, he's going to open it up. 
you land in this room and it seems to be uh, completely empty. Um, you can see this wide hall area runs the width of the whole house and it's got, oh, wait, you're still there. So there you go. It's got um, like a black marble fireplace at one end and the red marble staircase going up and um, mounted above the fireplace is a long sword with a windmill um, symbol that you can see. It's quite a large windmill symbol on the hilt. And uh, there's wood paneled walls that are ornately sculpted along the outside of this room. It's quite a nice, nice foyer room. Okay, so I am going into the building. Okay, so you pull the giant wrought iron gate to the side and open it up, and the children are watching you guys intently as you enter. Is the door closed? That door is closed in front of you, but it's um, it's unlocked as you if you tried it. Well, just for style, I'm going to kick it open. I'm going to roll through and come up standing holding my shield before me with my trident in my other hand. You can still move 10 more feet into that room. And uh, you see Krim standing there when you do. And I'll say, there you are. Out now, run. Okay, so I'm going to walk up to and like stand in between the open doorway right here and think there's a lot of screaming going on here. I think I'll use my divine sense. Yeah, you're you're picking up that upstairs there is uh, an undead presence in this house. A feeling of, yes, upstairs somewhere there's some undead. Possibly even downstairs as well. On the edge of your senses. Mm -hmm. So I'll shout out and tell the others there's an undead upstairs where Krim should have been and there might be something undead or evil downstairs where's the baby did you get the baby (laughs) you guys inside the house don't hear that not oh so crim has not answered me and i can still see a broken window on the top floor right uh yes you can still see that the window to the nursery upstairs on the third floor is broken Okay, I'm going to I'm going to look at Midnight and Chris is out here with us too. So I'm going to look at Midnight and Chris and be like, "Okay, he hasn't answered. Do either of you have a rope?" Rope? I'd be like, "Yeah." Love the passion for a potentially life-threatening situation. Yeah. <laughs> Mira, Mira <laughs> I'm doing what she would do, not what I would do. All right. I know what's up there. I warned you. It's your funeral. <laughs> How do you know what's up there? I yeah. used my defined sense. I told you, oh, I yelled right. out to inside and outside the house, there's evil upstairs and in the basement. Yes, but now Krim is stuck that's, inside, and so is Cole. That's really vague, and I feel it's a little a prejudice, <laughs> honestly. Just to say something is All evil, right. you don't even know what you're All doing. All right, Mir- Mira's going to go up to midnight, hold out her hand, and be like, give me the rope, and that's the end of her term. Okay. Rogues not having their own rope. <laughs> I'm not a rogue. Bars she not being evil. Rope. Esoteric or is there like a monster in there or is there just like a bad person? Like, I don't know what you're talking about. And as he's walking, he's getting more and more uh, nervous because he heard the scream and people are just disappearing. And as, as he's walking, the mists uh, are wrapping up around him and forming uh, opaque, uh, almost like plates uh, around his uh, shoulders and uh, thighs where greaves and pauldrons would be. Well, that's fancy. So then I move into the house and I look for danger. And then I end my turn and say, I have some rope here, if that's what you're looking for. I I pull it out of my bag and I'm like, I have rope, I have rope. (laughs) (laughs) Whoever needs it. Krim, you can hear uh, upstairs above you um, that suit of armor that attacked you (laughs) is or tried to it took like one or two steps it sounds like it's not uh following you down the stairs right now 
Okay. So I'm emboldened by the presence of my part mate. I regain my composure and go, oh, okay. I look up, wondering where the animated, where, where the armor is. Then seeing as how it's not going down, I fly up, check, check on it. You're able to kind of hover in the staircase then, I guess. And you can see the animated armor standing there, looking around. Okay. I'm going to quickly fly up, just above him, and then try to grapple him by the shoulders. You yeah. got it by the shoulders. Because of all the foreshadow. Then I'm going to grab him through here and then let him fall down the stairwell. So how much weight hole. can you lift? Is Not it a sure. lift or a drag? Uh, That's about I think it's four or five hundred pounds. Oh. It's a pool? I don't know how much I can lift. Don't make me do math. Actually, um, um, I know D and D beyond tells you. It's fifteen times okay. your strength. Let me check. Yeah. If you do like D D Beyond, go to equipment and click on your carry weight, it tells you exactly what you can carry, push, pull, drag, etc. Uh, yeah, it's 15 times your strength score, I think, in pounds. We'll say it's a 300-pound suit of armor. Oh, then I can't carry it. Oh, wait, I can carry 360 pounds. All right. Yep. So there's a ledge oh, cool. here, and the ceiling here is about um, eight feet tall. So it's going to be tough to pull this thing past this ledge, I would think. Um, almost impossible, uh, but uh, I would give this thing maybe a deck save to try to grab the ledge because it's so big compared to the gap that you're going through. <laughs> uh, <laughs> that's the only thing I can think of to make it uh, kind of fair because you're, you're picking this thing up and bringing it over a ledge that's it's about a four-foot gap, five-foot gap above it, right? So maybe, yeah, okay, let's just do it. So you're bringing it over to here and dropping it down the middle? Yep. All right. I can. Boom. And so oh, okay. it falls. Uh, thud. So that's third, uh, wait a minute, 12 feet plus 10 feet, so 20 feet, so 2d6 of damage. You want to roll that? More like good bonk. Yeah. I race forward, well bone mace. Hmm. <laughs> uh, this thing, <laughs> your club goes bonk, and you can give me the sound if you want, but yeah, <laughs> it goes right off the armor, and the thing hardly even notices it. I'm gonna call out, "What kind of beast are you?" And that's the end of my turn. Does does Cole ever not yell? What? I think like that's kind of his trademark now, is he just yells everything. He's very passionate. He is a passionate person. I'm going to keep my shield braced before me to defend myself against any moves he makes. Getting worried about the party being possibly injured. She's going to start walking through the house. My rope! <laughs> <laughs> She's holding the rope out and walking in. <laughs> so come get it. She's going to go through. These doors are open, right? Or any sign of someone has gone through them? Yeah, there, it's like a push door with uh, or pu push or pull, and it's got like a circular Wait, ring on it. Is it is it push or, or pull? Because I mix those up, and I often find myself stuck out of buildings for great lengths of time. It's, it's like a saloon door. Except there's okay. no there's no like place in the bottom to see through or top to see through. It's got a an arch top, and so you could walk through it and the doors swing back and forth like that. Gonna push the doors open and go through. Ah, well, I, I was standing here. You walked right into me. Just like knocks me over. <laughs> yeah. Let me attempt to pull the torch out on. There we go. Now 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 it is. Another animated suit of armor is behind you. <laughs> The whole house was a mimic. So yeah, you've, Chris, you've noticed that obviously this suit of armor fell in front of you here, and um, I, I've noticed a suit of armor fall from the second story. You know, I will kind of just take a step forward and just say stop, 
I'm just saying, I'm just oh, like asking it to stop. Oh, okay. Stop in the name of Lady Ezra I'm, before I have to get to messy. I'm counting to three. Smite. <laughs> Not until level two. And she was still kind of holding her hand out for the rope, and Midnight just walked away like, okay, I guess we're going the slow way to go save Krim. All right. And she's going to walk in the front door. Okay, so what do I see in this room? In this room, you see a bunch of pictures on the wall. It looks like family portraits of some kind. They're all individual drawings or individual uh, portraits of people, not uh, group photos at all. Uh, but they are all uh, like there's a, a, f- a man, a woman, and two children in these drawings. Oh. Okay. All right. And they do not look like the two children that talk to us. They actually do. Um, now that you can see, like the boy is a little younger and the girl's a little bit younger than she looked outside, but they those those two line up. They look uh, pretty similar. Okay, well, I guess they are who they say they are. Um, she's going to swing through saloon style. Oh, hello, everyone. Ah, Why didn't you, you guys respond I was, when I called? I just like get knocked down again. <laughs> the threat of the curse it. Uh, yeah. I'm paying you back for running into me last time. <laughs> <laughs> just like uh, I get like a big old welt on the side of his head where it's like the door just hit him on the forehead. <laughs> so you can definitely see there's an animated suit of armor on the ground in front of Krim, or Cole and Krim is gone again. <laughs> okay, so I've just gone. Um, I mean, I don't know if this will do anything, but yeah, I'll shoot it with my crossbow. Uh. All right, Chris, you're up. Chris is gonna kind of walk around here, inspecting it, uh, and uh, uh, say, uh, "Look, I don't know what you are, but if you don't uh, learn to behave yourself, uh, I'm gonna knock that chandelier down on top." And then right when he says that, a bolt of Eldritch energy uh, slashes up that uh, weaving fog, uh, cutting into the chandelier in an attempt to knock it down. So this thing, uh, looking up just in time to see a chandelier fall on its face. I'm going to fly back down. I'm going to fly back down. I'll be down, and then I'm going to kick oops, the armor. You can tell you put a giant dent in this thing's armor with that. Uh, right in the chest, it went bonk. <laughs> you can bonk that again if you want. Just until you get your smite. <laughs> so the unarmed strike is a miss. Sad bonk. And now it's Cole. Okay. Cole is going to whisper. No, I'm kidding. I am going to take another swipe at it with my whalebone mace. You feel that? Very, very solid connection. So this thing's not looking very good anymore. I'm going to cast Shield of Faith on... Um, I'm going to cast it on Krim. Now the animated armor gets to go. And so it stands up, gets its feet behind it, and um, it's going to uh, attack the person who just attacked it. So I knew that was coming. Ow. So the spell drops and you lose your little bonus, but that's okay because it's just a bonus. All right. So yeah, it uh, it did all it could, and midnight is up. Okay, just making sure of something real quick. Gonna go walking up to it, and I'm gonna try and get a little smack in. Robot fight. Mm, I don't think that hit. So Mira's going to just sidestep over here, ignoring her advice to not stand in front of the doors and go, ah, <laughs> cast <coughs> dissonant whispers. So that would be 13 damage. psychic damage. You can see I'm how... i fan of folk music. You yeah. can see how the armor, uh, it definitely got in there and it rattled around in its head for a second. But it just went right back out. Uh, I think it needs a brain for that to work. Maybe. Uh, 
the whispers okay. echoed around and floated out hmm. of his head and didn't cause oh, the damage you're used to seeing from that kind of thing. Because yeah, he's Chris still within range of the other two. And Midnight would get one. Let me try and see. As he went to here. Nice. Yay. Okay, that definitely hit it. And <laughs> Chris, you can see your dagger stub and it just stopped on it. You didn't quite get it, dig it far enough in. Oh. Uh, Cole, you get one too now. <laughs> Opportunity attack? Yeah. yeah. Hit it with your stick. M my big boom stick. Nat one, yeah! Uh, once again, he's going to try to pursue it up the stairs. And you know what? I'm just Now I'm going to throw my dagger at it. <laughs> uh, seeing it run up the stairs. It's a hit. Tink. Okay, now it goes tink, flies up, and lands on the stairs. <laughs> okay, and uh, another curse it. What is that? Midnight, what is that? I'm going to strike it with my quarter staff. And then headbutt it. Finally. Okay, so as you strike it with the quarter staff, you notice you do quite a bit of damage, and it, the, the life force that holds this thing together seems to be dr slipping apart. And as you headbutt it, the suit of armor falls back down the stairs in pieces and crumples to the bottom. What was that thing? Midnight, do, do you know anything about that? Well, it obviously looked like a suit of armor. Am I being, am I being a bigot? Am I being racist by assuming you know about that? Midnight, am I? A little bit. A little bit. I'm sorry. I, that wasn't my intent. I just... <laughs> Yeah, show a little respect, man. But regardless, what was that? And is that is that the monster the children were talking about? No. The monster no, they were no. talking about is still in the basement. We're stopping our initiative for now. You guys don't see anything coming from upstairs. Uh, Krim, you, you don't hear any pursuit from the the apparition you saw. But you do, you guys all do hear on the other side of these doors. There you go. So you hear the sounds of like a, a feast coming from the other side of this door. There's laughter, conversation, like, like plates clinking against each other, that kind of thing. All right. Uh, Mira will turn to Krim and be like, what about the baby? I give the blanket and I go, here's, here's your baby. Krim, I heard, I heard there was screaming at that, that armor stuff didn't seem much of the yelling type what it sounded like a woman what did you did you see anything that may have caused that noise was the creature I, upstairs a ghost i don't know i didn't yeah hear there it. was something upstairs it was translucent perhaps a ghost i've never seen one before i threw a dart at it it just went through it don't think he got it well, my divine senses were telling me it was more on the undead type of persuasion i think <laughs> Want to check it out? Go upstairs, or does anybody else think it's weird that they're having a feast when two little kids ran outside looking for our help? Weren't the parents injured? I don't know. This whole place is strange. I'm getting a I, I'm getting a really bad feeling. I feel like we should just leave. I've had a bad feeling, Mr. DM. I rolled a twenty on my perception to search the room. Okay, yeah. Well, you would see uh, pretty much the same thing that uh, Krim saw when he landed at the bottom of the stairs here. This is like a, there's a black marble fireplace that Mira is standing in front of. Um, there's a red uh, marble staircase that you guys have been battling the suit of armor near. There's a long sword above the fireplace behind Cole and Mira. I would um, like to grab that. Okay. And look at it. It's got a windmill, which seems to be like the crest that you see throughout this house. So it's probably like a family sword or something. Would any of my teammates like this sword? I already carry my own long sword. A uh, long sword's a little heavy for me. Okay, then I will tuck it into my backpack, sticking out a little bit, obviously. Is this, is this common for Trident culture to just... I mean, this is somebody's home. They are stricken with a some sort of creature in the basement, and, and we're just picking up uh, their possessions. 
Well, if they are in trouble, then we can give them their own sword to defend themselves? We have no possessions in the Siren Sea. Uh, I can see why. People will just take them. <laughs> Krim, how come you didn't just fly out the upstairs window? I tried, but it was brick. I Bro. saw that. Wait. The window was boarded up with bricks. Wait, where? It was bored. What? Yes. Yeah. I don't know why, right. but that phrase is just stuck in my mind. It was boarded up with bricks. <laughs> uh, Mira, hearing that Mira is going to like run toward towards the entrance. You notice that when you tried to do that, uh, these swinging doors that swung so easily, uh huh, don't swing anymore. All right. So she'll run into the doors. Oh. Just like running into a wall. All right. She'll. She's like. Are, are there handles on them? Not on this side. They they right. just push or whatever. She's just kind of like banging against it, like trying to open it, like uh, starting to panic. It like, rattles and it feels like you should be able to get out, but you can't get out. It doesn't open. No, 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 no. This house must be magic or something if it's keeping us from leaving. No, I, I saw this trick before with other mercenaries. We We just have to find the lever somewhere here and then all of this is going to open find the lever you said find the lever all right she's going to like freakishly try to find some kind of lever nothing standing out it's all very clean very nice but you can hear like i said it sounds like there's a dinner party going on over here i think we should stay away from the loud room in case there's more monsters about it's just a so, trick. It could just be the their parents. This could all just be a trick from the, the children. And, and so that the could children have, that... are suddenly bricking up the windows and locking us in? Well, we live in a world of magic, and I don't know how it all works. But the thing is, that could have been just their security guard, and they could be having dinner next door, and we could just be ruining what would otherwise be a marvelous evening for them. All right, Mira's going to charge in this door because she thinks they'll be able to let her out. As soon as you open the door and enter the room, the sound stops completely. There is um, a, a whole table, though, that is actually full of food and like this. There's a centerpiece in this wood panel dining room. It is, an, is a giant mahogany table. There's eight high back chairs surrounding it, and they've got sculpted armrests and cushioned seats. It's a really nice looking dining set. A, sh a crystal chandelier hangs above the table, and it's covered with like uh, silverware and crystalware, polished. It's shining and dazzling. The table's piled high with platters of food that's like steaming hot. Wine glasses are filled up with right to the right to the like good pours on wine glasses, and uh, there's a fancy candelabrum in the center of the uh, table, and then mounted above the fireplace to your left is a um, mahogany framed painting of uh, just a nice um, a nice veil uh, like an alpine um, mountain view uh, oh, and are these windows yeah there's windows on the outsides they're kind of covered up with drapes um, you right. assume that there's windows behind them all right mirror's gonna run over there and like try to open the drapes to open the windows to try to get out Okay, so as soon as you pull the drapes apart, you realize that the windows are all boarded with bricks. <laughs> right. They're literally bricked up. And Mira, she's just like, no, no. And she's going to check all of them. She'll check all of them. I'm assuming she'll find the same thing. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. All right. And as you um, as you're looking around and spending a little bit of time in the room, I need you to make me a DC 15 wisdom save. Yep. Yep. Uh -oh. yep. That's gonna go very poorly for me. It'll be fine. It'll be fine. You'll be fine. Maybe you'll be fine. You're not fine. <laughs> you you feel that you're you're hungry. You can't not try this food in front of you. So you sit down at the table. You start eating. Oh. Anybody okay. else? Is that as good as it looks? You can't really respond to them. You're just shoving your face full of food. 
she wouldn't really respond at this point anyway. <laughs> she, she, yeah. She would go nonverbal. Yeah. Okay. Well, um, I guess she worked up a healthy appetite. Are we taking um, turns or? Yeah. Okay. Go ahead. I, I, he's now really the time to be eating. And I kind of put my hand on her shoulder. So you're going to go in the room too? Yeah. Okay. You're in the room. I still say. You go around and put your hand on her shoulder. Mm hmm. She, now, was, is that something I would react to with what's going on? Um, give me another wisdom save. The answer is going to be no. <laughs> 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 so you're still here. <laughs> Chris, what do you want to do? The oofs are big. Uh, is there like a pudding or something? Yeah, it's kind of like a little bit of everything. You see some like uh, cakes and puddings and things that kids would like. And then there's some vegetable dishes, roast vegetables and a nice card. I'll, I'll try some of the pudding. Okay, that's a wisdom save. To try it? Once you start see. eating. Yeah. Okay, oh, so dang. Chris, you realize that after you've try to bite of this pudding it's not pudding as you look is over it, at mira ooh. is it ooh? Is yeah it ooh? as you look over at mira you uh see a sight that you didn't really want to see well that's kind of rude please the tell food... me i'm not eating humans <laughs> or poo <sighs> that, would, that would just be even worse Slowly... than humans which is worse Slowly, the, the reality of this situation kind of hits you, and you um, you kind of come to grips with, like, even one, one little bite of the pudding, and you're like, wait okay, a minute, okay, wait a minute, was something's having... off here. Mira, this isn't organic. Come on. You... It's, it's, got, it's got processed flour, bleached flour. Come you on. You realize that you're standing in front of a table that is gluten. covered in maggots and rot. The turkey is green. Natural. It's bloated. It's oozing off of the bones. There's uh, the the cakes and ice cream are all fallen over and just covered in fuzz. And Mira's uh, having the time of her life. All right, Mira. Uh, no judgment coming from me. Um, but you do know all this food is rotten, right? Go ahead and make me another save there, Mira. Every chance I oh, we gotta get lucky somehow and get her out. Okay, so you're Akuma Matata. You're you're now poisoned, uh, Mira. So you're suffering from the poison condition. Okay. Oh, if we can get her out of that, I can fix that. I think. And yeah, uh, you can see Chris that she's not in control at this point. You're kind of realizing that she's not listening to you or not hearing you. All right, Mira. We're all friends, and this is a safe place, but. Uh, mid at midnight, come in here. We need to do an inter intervention. Uh, like but this just isn't there. healthy, so we're going to take you outside and we're going to talk about this like adults. All right, all right, one more right. wisdom save before we forcefully try to remove her. <laughs> before you realize that she's just not listening, because I think we're gonna have to forcefully remove her, Chris. I, 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 I hate to admit it, but I think you're right. I mean. I don't hate that. I I don't uh, I hate to see her like this, but I think you're right. Mir, can you make one more wisdom save before you uh, your your companions? Okay, <laughs> you, you, before you companions still, manhandle. You still just completely ignoring them while they're <laughs> surrounding you. <laughs> wow. You should never do we save again. So what happens no, when you tell wisdom? It's going to go badly for her. Just get, get him out of the way now. The last thing you want is these rolls to be death saves. Mira, you snap out of it when you when your companions pull you away. And you don't feel so good. Oh. You are, basically, you need to throw up immediately. As you see right in front of you, maggots crawling around the table. 
this table is moving. It is alive. It full of Oh my disgusting... gosh. Oh. I bet Krim is standing there like, why is this bad? I love bugs. <laughs> <laughs> and then Midnight right, is just I... like, oh, fleshies eat stuff. This is totally normal. And, oh, uh, come on. Give it more power. You're still, you're still poisoned. She's turned green. Everybody know, or who can see her notice. I'm going to have Midnight put a hand on her stomach and a hand on her throat. And Midnight's hands are going to start glowing a bright white. And she's going to use her entire lay on hands pool to neutralize Midnight, poison. Midnight, you've been in here a little while too. Um, wisdom save. Just as was neutralizing the poison. And Krim, you've oh, walked in. It. You're standing there looking at everybody. Wisdom save. Okay. Guys, it's it's rotted food. You don't need to eat it. Oof. Okay, so you're both um compelled to eat even though I don't compelled to yeah, give it a shot at least. Meanwhile, I have no idea what's going on. All right, if everybody else is eating the rotten food, I'm going to eat it too cuz I don't want to be an outsider. <laughs> don't do that. Yep, I'm if doing you say it. that outside, I'm saying if you're saying that out loud, Mirror's like don't. Well, don't Chris, do you it. at least oh, know okay. that it's rotten. <laughs> yeah, I know it's fun, but everybody's eating it. And I'm just like, I want not be. But she told I, me not to, so I'm not going to. Why? Went, Am I, I not went, good enough? No, I don't, I don't do that. <laughs> <laughs> I went from panic to I must eat this food. We've got to get out of here. Okay. So I pick her up by the shoulders, uh, like underneath the armpits, and I Ow. help her out. So, Krim, you notice what's hey. going on. Midnight, you still don't, but you're lucky because you don't suffer from the poison condition anyways. <laughs> you won't be poisoned by anything that you shove in your face. And Cole, are you still standing outside the room? Yes, I am. Okay, so what are you doing there? Cause I would like to open that door to my right. Okay. You, you just hear so. the party throwing up in the next room. And you're like, oh, I'm just going to open up this other door. Yeah, they can work I it out on their stupid. own. They can handle it themselves. <laughs> I heard and I really barfing. Could also be cursed. I heard barfing and I have a weak stomach. Okay. So yeah, you open that room if you want. You can walk through. Meryl. Okay. What do I see? <laughs> okay, so in this room you notice that this is sort of like a kitchen pantry area. Looking around, checking for some see if there's anything of use. Not Any really. spices? There's a knife on the desk, on the or a kitchen knife on the table. Uh, there's some, there are some dried spices. Yep, some little uh, jars of dried spices. They're unlabeled. Any garlic? Um, it looks like I some, love garlic. Looks like some dried garlic flakes, maybe. But While you can't you're doing tell. this, you hear <laughs> yep. in the next room. Yep. I'm going to take the garlic flakes. So while Midnight is um, trying to stop Mira from puking, she's also shoving food in her mouth. <laughs> and, Can Midnight uh, even be puking? No, Midnight's not puking, but Mira is. And uh, Midnight's still eating, so she can make another wisdom <laughs> save. Krim, you've started eating Come too. Come on. Um, yeah. wisdom. God damn. But you, oh, you, man. you ended up saving before you uh, took in too much. And right. midnight is still not making that fifteen. Yeah, still got to get it. Like it's like you're like at a all you can eat buffet or whatever, and your friend wants to leave, and so you're you're kind of moving away, but at the same time, like oh, just one of these. <laughs> yep, yeah, Mira uh, is gonna try and like drag midnight away, which is go Heavy. gonna be. Uh, midnight okay. will uh, tell Mira to come here so I can fix her poison uh, okay uh, oh. she'll put a hand on her stomach a hand on her throat her hands are gonna just glow a faint white light and using the full lay on hands pool the poison is gone <sighs> oh. that was amazing how did you do that oh thank you well i am a paladin i do have divine powers you see Grim still eating the maggots. Yes, he <laughs> picked around them, rot, and then starts eating the maggots. Yes. And I'll come out of the kitchenette with a bowl in hand and say, "Did somebody need this? Was there an exit over there?" Uh, no, there wasn't. 
All right, let's try this door. Let's go. Let's get out of here. All right. Okay, so okay. those two rooms Bribe up there led to women nothing. Sure are weak stomached. So as you enter this little, or as you look into this room here, <laughs> this oak paneled room looks like it's uh, some kind of a hunting den. Mounted above the fireplace is a giant stag's head. Um, so th there's taxidermy wolves sitting around the room, and then Ooh, I want a wolf. stuffed stuffed wolves uh, on the ledges around the room. So you see two uh, padded chairs draped in like animal furs that are facing the fire, and there's an oak table between those two uh, with a pair of uh, like goblets, wooden goblets, and a cask of wine. And a chandelier hangs above the table in the back. Um, it's basically a little table surrounded by four chairs. It's got like uh, a cloth. It's sort of like what you would maybe send a kid to eat at kind of thing. It looks like it's stained with a few stains and things. Um, there are two cabinets that stand against the walls. And yeah. I, I already up, don't trust this room. I pick up one of the wolves. What is what is about the room that you don't trust? The wolves. <laughs> what about the wine? Is it corked or is it open? I don't know. I've always liked the wolves. The wine is corked. It's a cask of wine. It looks like somebody's probably already had some. Okay, so don't eat anything in this house. Don't drink anything in this house. Trust nothing in this house. So when you said you sent something evil, you weren't talking about that armor were you no i said it was at the top of the floor and in the basement so you oh so it's not just like a general sense it's a specific i know thing. where the things are oh i see i thought it was... i can do it again to check if they moved but i'm not entirely certain they moved since we last since i last checked oh yes we don't even know what they is um but the house itself, it doesn't seem... You didn't feel anything from it? I can only detect creatures, and as far as I'm aware, this house isn't a giant mimic. It could be a giant mimic? Is that what you're saying? No. No, no. this house is not a giant mimic. I cannot you, detect You said it, it could be a giant mimic. No, I did not. I said... <laughs> All right, minute. well... Just armor um... thud. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Mirror will quickly check check the windows because she's going to be doing that and then you see the same thing you saw in the other room before you started eating food uh these windows are also bricked up Cole is checking the cabinet next to him All those right, cabinets guys, I... are locked i pull out the long sword and i use it to pry open a door stick it down in the be, behind the door there and kind of pull down to okay to you can break make me an attack roll It'll be the same to hit with your club. First off, it is not a club. It is a whalebone mace. A whale it's, gate. It's a bonk and stick. This. It's a bonk and stick. I rolled a 12. The bonk and bone. Okay, so you've, you're trying to get the sword in there. You can't really find a good way to get it in. These are pretty nice wooden cabinets. Um, they've they've stand, stood the test of time. Everything I in here looks fairly temper. new still. I lose my temper, pull out my whalebone mace, and start bashing one of the doors. Oh, this one. Whoa, 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 whoa. Open, blast you, open. And yes, I am yelling that. I just assume you're always yelling. <laughs> Did, that, that's it's another better attack. better if you just tell me when you're not. It's just natural state. Yeah. <laughs> what? Uh, that's, that's another attack then, I guess? Give me an add advantage, too. Because you are... Because it's blinded. Cleric raging. Yeah. <laughs> oh, cleric rage is not the good rage. I Okay, so you guys notice that elite. Cole is starting to sweat. <laughs> 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 He's uh, not having any luck. Okay, I back up, pull out one of the chairs by the table and sit down. You got down. that, Cole. There is, a small, it more. there is a small lock on the front of the door still. And it's... Yeah. There's a lock. Yeah, there's a there's a lock on the front of each of these cabinets. <laughs> All right, Mira's gonna try, and I could try to pick the lock. All right, I could try I... to bash it in with a warhammer. <laughs> All right. 
Hope you're better at rolling than me. It's better than my wisdom, let's put it that way. This Wilmo mace is defective. Nope. What's this? Here comes Midnight with a steel chair. So Mira <laughs> oh. <laughs> can't quite get in with her. <laughs> Here comes Midnight with a warhammer going punk. All right, all right, all right. Guys, here's the thing. Uh, 20 with the warhammer. <laughs> so the warhammer goes straight through the doors and uh, Jumps off the top they of shatter. The, table. <laughs> <laughs> the doors shatter. And uh, inside of the one, you find uh, a, cro- a, a heavy crossbow and 20 bolts. Ooh. And yep. I'll just assume that you have taken the time to beat the crap out of the other one. Uh, yeah. Give me a perception check while that's happening. <laughs> Chris and Cole both noticed that the two remaining um, stuffed wolves that are on the shelves aren't in the same spot as they were... When you entered the room, Chris. And you Midnight, grab... did you pick up one of the wolves? I mean, I thought I I was just picking up one of the stuffed ones, but... Oh, don't tell me that they... Did that thing just move over there? Let's get up. Let's out. Out the room. Out, out, out. Oh, all, right, all right, all right. Which one of you picked no it up? No more wolves. One oh. of you picked it up, right? Out no. the room you now before that, right, they Chris? start moving. Well, I didn't see them move. I just assume Mira or Midnight picked one up. You know, very interesting. Both uh, uh, Mira and Midnight uh, start with M. Um, oh, well. We M-, M and M now? So yes. does Mutt. <laughs> and here's Chris saying that to Cole and Krim. And Chris. <laughs> yeah. All right. Oh, all gosh. Right. We're the CCC. All right. M M. <laughs> Yeah, Midnight's going to start uh, trying to exit the room because she doesn't like that mo- wolves moved on their own while we weren't looking. Well, and Mira's like, there's the no heavy... exit in here, so I'm going to go. In the I front like of here, you guys do notice that this door here looks different, the one you're standing in front of Midnight. Mm-hmm. It looks um, like a smaller door, two by two opening or something. Well, might as well try this before we try another floor. And Just I'll so open you know, the I'm door. pulling that door shut behind me. Okay, so right in front of you there, that is, uh, as you open it, you realize that it's a dumbwaiter. Uh, Most of you guys, uh, with the exception of Cole, know what this is used for. (laughs) And uh, it looks like (laughs) it goes up. dumbwaiters underwater. (laughs) (laughs) Under the sea, they got no dumbwaiters for you and me. Didn't, Didn't the kids say their parents were down in the basement? That's where I sense the evil at. Or the kids said their parents were. I'm not sure we should trust those kids. Why wouldn't we? Well, this there was house no is obviously cursed. And they, they lured, I, I feel like they lured us in here. And now we can't get out. And we can't get out. Well, I mean, they didn't. Krim broke a window and then flew into a nursery. We heard a scream and ran in. I mean,. How how does that count as luring us in? False we, pretenses? By screaming when the stranger breaks into your second story window? There was no baby. There is a undead creature in the upstairs. We're well, a ghost. Yeah. <clears throat> so you think the children are in cahoots with these ghosts? They're in cahoots they're... with something if they're luring people into the house to their doom. All right. Well, I, I oh, do agree not yet. that I don't know what's going on here, um, and that uh, it's dangerous. So, but as far as those innocent children, I, I just don't see children being wrapped up like they still have their innocence. I just mean, because they're a child does not mean they're innocent. Yes, uh, <laughs> no true words have been spoken. Hey, I- What in the world was that? So what what's going on in my mind? I'm imagining a two or a one year old just slamming on the keyboard, <laughs> and she just just randomly hit the unmute button, and the mom was like, "No, no, no, no!" Midnight. Is it is it possible that if we took care of this evil, we might be able to get out? That I could not mm. tell you. I don't know what the specifics are to leaving this house. 
We do know where we've been doesn't lead out, so the only place to go is where we haven't. Which is down, which I'm not even sure if this dumbwaiter will all hold me. Been that uh, I have an so idea. So we cannot yeah, we, fit. We're not, it. we're not gonna fit. Let's, let's, fit get, in there, let's get the armor pieces from that thing that we fought earlier, and we'll put it in there. If it holds it, then we'll know we're good. But we can't, but we can't fit. fit it in there. You I mean, I, I'm probably the smallest of us, and I couldn't fit in there. So we have to find another way down? All right. Well, that's just absolutely not going to work. Okay. All right. So... Then I guess we go up. Like, Cole, you didn't see any way to go down over here? Okay. I'm afraid I did not. All right. Well, then I guess that leaves up, right? <laughs> and yeah, wasn't there a... The ghost. I race oh, up prepared the stairs. To, well, what ghost? We did tell you like several times there's a ghost upstairs. Zoe, Telling you guys there's a ghost. I, yeah, I mentioned upstairs. it like five times. All right. She's going okay, upstairs. So as everybody goes up the stairs, I'm going to try to grab everything at once so you get your torches too. But... Krim, you did not mention that there were more suits of armor up here. I feel like that would have been good to know. There are four suits of armor here, and uh, you it it looks they look very similar to the one that fell. Um, there's unlit oil lamps um, on the walls here, so if somebody wanted to light those, then they'd be permanent light here too. Uh, hanging above, um, there's a, like a mantelpiece here too, like where the the fireplace from downstairs continues up, you know. Mm -hmm. And there's a portrait of a whole family there, and it's um, actually got five people in the portrait. It's got um, a mother, and her two children are in front of her, and the daughter is in one, uh, like her her hands are on their shoulders, and yeah. her father, her her husband is standing next to her, uh, which you assume Miss, Mrs. and Mr. Durst. And their two children, and the chil the two children are the ones that you recognize from outside. But the father is also holding a baby, which you would assume to be baby Walter at this point. And you can see that the mother is looking at the baby in the photo, and she doesn't look very happy. She's got her children under her hands, but she's also scouring towards the baby while the photo is being painted, I suppose. I'm going to reach up and cast light on one of the lamps. Sure. That should be light for everybody, too. That's a handy trick, uh, Cole. But can you carry a shield while you do that? Why, yes, I can. I touched it with my nose. You can feel that uh, as you stand in the staircase foyer a little bit longer, you can feel a cold chill. Um, rolling down the stairs from upstairs. Uh, Krim, you you recognize that from before, but it's colder than when you found it originally. It seems a little colder than when you were up there before. Okay, do we do we go up further, or do we investigate this floor? What do you guys think? As you guys are debating that. Um, you do hear it's a faint bit of music. Um, how does it go? Kind of like that. Like, so yeah, the to your north, there's the fireplace uh, with the painting, and to the east up here, there's the double doors that look like um, they're a little nicer. Um, they've got. The, nicer than doors that you've seen around the house before. They've got glass, but they've got paintings on the glass. And it's dark in behind. You can't really see. Okay, and where do we hear the music coming from? The music is coming from the west side of the house, where towards the entrance end. Okay, well, Mira's intrigued by the music, so she'll kind of sneak through. And she wants to go over and open the doors and see what happens. Cause... So in this room here, you see it's a very nice, elegant uh, hall. It's got... Uh, the, the ceilings here are 
a little bit higher. There's uh, 12 foot ceilings in this room and in the area here, so it's a little bit more fancy looking than the first floor was. And oh, this is lovely. A harpsichord oh. sits over here. I a werewolf. Uh, yes. So you see crouched in the corner, uh, sleeping is uh, the form of a, what appears to be a werewolf. Um, Mir is going to like immediately turn around and be like to everybody. Vatica's day. And right now I would like to. Um, invite our guest to join us when she joins us. <laughs> might be just after the. We might just go to break now, but um, yeah, we're basically, you guys see a werewolf in the corner. It looks like it's um, half asleep. It's uh, sort of emaciated, looking hungry, and uh, it looks like it's seen better days, but. Uh, as you move about the room and stuff, you weren't being very stealthy, and you see it sort of waking up. And we we welcome Jen. Hey guys. Uh, we'll do a fifteen minute break, and sorry to bring you in right away, and then you know go out again. But uh, nope, it's okay. I was folding laundry, and I was like, "Oh shit!" <laughs> <laughs> Is Jen here to kill us? No. When would I ever do that to you, Peter? Okay. Now I'm really suspicious. <laughs> well, okay. you have to roll your own insight check. <laughs> Welcome back, everybody. We are now uh, on the second floor, and the party has come into this room that looks to be a musical conservatory of some sort, and they see a harp and a piano and a wolf, a werewolf, sleeping on the ground in front of them. And it's coming to uh, sentience now. And you can see that uh, as it starts to wake up, it is shifting back into a humanoid form. Looks to be uh, some sort of an elven lady. All right, Mira kind of had already turned to the party to be like, shh, and yeah, then she's going to try to sneak out of the room. I would have done. I was on the same page as her. I was going to do the exact same thing. Uh, as she's waking up, she'll see you guys and go, no, wait, wait, wait. Chris is just going to freeze in place and then slowly turn his head. Uh, I, I, I'm sorry, you were taking a nap. We were just going to leave you be, you know, no. let, let sleeping dogs lie and all. I'm 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 not a dog. That's very rude. No, it's just an expression. You know, like if you see a, a, a somebody that is asleep, then it's best not to wake them. Getting mad, run. But uh, you were clearly a something of of canine in nature just a few moments ago. And it uh, seems to have and faded. I don't know what madness you're talking. As you can tell, and she's going to, like, throw her hands up. My name is Avare. I've been stuck in this house for who knows how long. Walls move. Doors come and go. Children are laughing. Food is not what it appears. I've been here for days. And I finally found this wonderful music. And I'm so very tired. And... Are you guys, are you guys even real? And she's going to go up and try to like, who's, whoever this is in front, she's going to go midnight. up and, and she's going to look at, at midnight, but she's going to be very confused. She's going to look at everyone else. Is, is this suit of armor with you? Uh, I don't very know, much I so. don't know if you've noticed, but things are not what they appear here. No. Yes, we've already been attacked by one suit of armor. And this one's with you, you mm -hmm. say. It's safe. Unlike well, the rest, I can actually talk. I I do apologize. Things... 
I hear there have been voices. I don't know how long you've, you guys have been in this house. There are voices coming and going. Not, pictures are moving and talking. I don't know. I apologize. I mean, no offense. I would never uh, dare to assume on a normal basis that, that you are something that you're not. And she's going to look over at Chris, who called her a dog of some sort. <laughs> Can Mira tell that she seems a little like emaciated, like underfed? Yeah, she can definitely see she's uh, not looking yeah. like she's her strongest right now. Have you been wormed? Wormed? I've. Are you referring to to the table downstairs? Yes, yes, of course. Yes. Uh, yes. We so had a bad run in with that ourselves. Well, lucky, lucky for you guys. You guys. I'm assuming had each other. I had no one. I woke up. I was so, I ran into this house and I was in here. I don't even, at least a day. And I was so hungry and just happened to stumble across that. Mm. And it was the most delicious thing. And I ate and I ate and I ate and I woke up and I was sick. I don't know how long I've been in this house. Mm. Yes, we were in the same predicament. Uh, we are on our way out. We're looking for the exit. Would you like to come with us? If, 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 if you take me with you, I will, I, I have everything behind me. There, there's, there's magical bows, there's oh. magical arrows. Well, if you share that with us now, it would help us Take it, take it, out. and she, and she points to everything. I have my swords. You guys, uh, you are more than welcome to to any of these things. And you guys see that there are three okay. quivers. Can of... can you handle yourself in a fight? Very, very much so. Very much so. Uh, I'm not too uh, bad with the dagger myself. Any any uh, but go. I interrupted you. Go ahead. No, she'll uh, she has two short swords on her side, and she'll pull them out and do all kinds of cool whizzy Whoa. things. That's, uh, you nearly cut the hair on my chin. That's amazing. You're so skilled. Now, do you have a nose for traps? Yes, actually. Very much so. I've been training for, oh, for 50 years. My father and my brothers. Uh, Mira's going to look at the pile of things that she pointed out. What, what's Same. there? Three crossbows with really nice looking quivers. Um, the quivers are actually the magical item. Okay, uh, Mira's going to take the crossbow bolts for sure. This house seems heavily inclined for anyone who uses ranged. Uh, when she says that, uh, uh, hang on, hang on, hang on. She'll go into her backpack. Or she'll, she'll because there's, there's also three also three backpacks. One is her, she's going to put it on. And Wait, one of them... why do you have three backpacks? She's going to look down. She's going to look very sad. Um, I... You have a problem with buying things, don't you? <laughs> I wish it was as innocent as that. Um, uh, my father and my oldest brother and I, um, we were hired to investigate a... Um, a unknown source of issues and we ran afoul of what appears to be a wolf pack of some sort highly intelligent wolf pack um they my my it's my very first time and i was, I was so I told my father i was ready for it and he kept telling me no but i've been training for 50 years and she does like the like the like a little half-hearted sword twirl again 50 years i i sorry it's just that uh i haven't trained a day in my life and uh i've just made barrels honestly so i feel like you uh, outclass me significantly i'm glad that uh i have the fortune of meeting you um wow, this is great what a, what a boon well this bag here she holds up what looks to be very well worn bag um this this one was my father's and he did not particularly care for the the bows he much preferred daggers and things and she'll hand it to the kind of like skeptically hand it to the warforged 
She'll uh, there, open up there, the bag. There might be something in there. She'll just uh, hand off the bag to Krim and Chris to see if there's anything they could use in there. All right. Well, welcome to the team. I'm sorry. I, what, what was your name again? Array. Array? Ava Ray. Ava Ray? You call me Ray. My father called me Ray. Oh, I like and, that name, Ray. And yeah, she'll nice she'll uh, kind of do like this like nervous tick kind of thing that Jen also does, this thing. <laughs> and uh, you guys are going to see that she has very long pointed ears. Okay. Um, is it normal fluffy? for elves to turn into wolves? Uh, I mean, not not particularly. Why? When Why you came ask? into this room, you were a wolf. I assure you, I would know if I was a wolf or not. Guys, I, I just think we're barking up the wrong tree here. If she knew so anything, puns. she'd tell us. So many puns. <laughs> I fell down, and that's how that's how I lost my my family. I fell down. Okay. You well, fell down where? We were attacked. We were ambushed on out outside by by a great. Uh, somewhere between a forest. Around a forest? Well, maybe the same wolves that attacked us uh, attacked you as well. I know wolves have a very, very large territory. It's very possible, especially if we all ended up in the same house. The only reason I came to this house was because it seemed there, there were children laughing. Yes, it seems as if we were, too were deceived. Uh, we simply wanted to break into the second story and see the baby. And now it's just turned into all this. I've also we heard a baby. We weren't trying to steal a baby. We were trying yeah. to save a baby. Oh, right. Yes. I've heard I've heard phantom children laughing, phantom children crying, screams, music, uh, the smells of delicious food. This place is not is not. It's the most unholy of places. I you'll get no argument from me about that. Well, I say we move on and try to get out of here as fast as possible. Mm. Mm. Have we actually, you know how all the windows we see are bricked up? Have we tried actually, have we actually tried breaking down the bricks or just seeing it and going, oh no, bricks? I've thrown yeah. myself against bricks and walls for days. And you've had magical weapons to spare to break them down if you chose. Uh, I mean, they're magical silver piercing things, not necessarily. When you did do that, though, you've noticed that when you knocked a brick away, before you even pull your weapon away again, the whole brick repairs itself. Whatever it is, it can rebuild itself. As I've said, walls move, doors disappear. Did you try to help any of the screaming children? or I've... I've ran. I've tried to find anybody. You are the only ones I've found that are real that aren't trying to attack. Well, I believe her. Let's go. Would you like something to eat? Some real food? I, I would love some. Thank you. I'll pull out one of my rations and give it to her. All right. Okay. Uh, Mira will kind of go up to the group that's back here and like whisper just so they can hear be like i i don't think she's lying i think we just take her with us and get out of here as quickly as possible just well, so you know uh jen you have been in this floor more than the top floor because the top mm -hmm. floor is where the spider web started Mm -hmm. And uh, you. Have they, sorry, have you guys seen the spider webs? No. Crim oh. Crim sort of noticed them, but he hasn't really had uh, time to spend up there that much. He he, he noticed when he was in the in the crib room that the the whole room was covered in cobwebs. And where all have you guys guys been in this house? The main I can tell floor. You. Okay. I think Crim has seen the crib room. The top floor. 
Oh, we so... know there's a basement down here, but we don't know how to reach it. Yeah, and we think that's where we need to go because Midnight here says she senses evil below. Maybe you should cast it again just to be sure. I wouldn't cast it while we're this high up because I have a range of how far I can go and I don't know how deep below the ground this thing is. All right, well... Midnight, we would know if she can be trusted if you cast it. I don't want to waste it while we're on the second floor, though. Okay. Hi, sorry. We were just having a little conversation, didn't want to hear. I told you, I think she can be trusted. (laughs) Okay. I have a good feeling about her. All right. Well, whatever I can do to help. Uh, I, I'll tell you, I haven't, I haven't spent much time up, upstairs. Um, uh, uh, she look at, at, at who you've indicated as Krim. Um, if he was upstairs, and I'm sure he saw the, the massive amount of spider webs. And honestly, I'm a little scared of spiders. So I stayed away. But I do know that across from here that there is, is an office. Um, I haven't spent much time, but it has some really comfy couches. Hmm. Sounds pleasant. Mm-hmm. As pleasant as anything in this house ever is. So yeah, as you walk into that room, Cole, you notice it's a, it's a really nice um, office. It's a study of some sort. There are red velvet drapes covering the windows, an exquisite mahogany desk, and a matching black high chair. Uh, there's a fireplace. <laughs> you mean like for like little high kids? back chair? He means it. It is a high back chair. Yes. So there's a uh, framed picture of a windmill also in this room. Uh, oh, we should visit that a... sometime. It looks nice. And situated in the two corners of the room are are uh, overstuffed, comfortable looking chairs, and there's floor to ceiling uh, bookshelves on this side of the room. I'll investigate the books, see if anything is there of interest. So, Cole, while you're looking in the bookshelf there, you do actually see one book that, um, for a second there, you think you saw your name on the spine of it. But there, it seems to be a blank spine. I'll pick up the, I'll pull out the book and turn it over in my hands and look at it. And do I feel anything like haunting about it or anything like that no you're not getting a feeling out of it but as you flip through it you see that your name is appearing in the book a few times actually and as you start to read it you're going to take a few minutes if you want to read it but it's um it seems like as the more you read it, it's actually documenting your life and it shows how your father and the uh the council. Of, um, don't tell me. Don't yeah, tell me. Yeah, it shows all about all that. I, have, I don't know how to read. You don't know how to read? I have an intelligence of eight. You, can you do know how to read, read though. In. You know how to read with an intelligence of eight. Seven or lower, you can't. Yeah, you need an int of seven or lower but to you are, be unable to read. Yeah, I was start like sounding out words like. So you're going to take a few ma- yeah. a few extra minutes there to understand what's going on with the book. But you see that it's documenting your life. So then, uh, Mira, we'll go back to you for a minute. Uh, as you're in that room, it is basically uh, what you were guessing before. Um, it seems to be like some servant's quarters. Yeah, I want to attempt to investigate the desk, see if there's any papers or anything of importance. Okay, so give me a roll. It's gonna go terribly. Okay, that's average. So the desk has um, several items resting like on top of it. There's an mm-hmm. oil lamp. There's a jar of ink, a quill pen, a little tinder box for lighting, and uh, a letter uh, containing a red wax a letter kit. Sorry, containing like a red wax seal that has a windmill on it. Um, there's some sheets of blank parchment. And um, inside the desk, the drawer is uh, open. You see the journal, mm-hmm. and it's got a, a page um, holder in it. And the journal is actually, uh, it says Durst Antiquities on the first page. 
Mm -hmm. And it looks like an inventory tracking system for a store that appears to be in Barovia. There's a journal entry. Just like we all huddle together and like open the journal and read together. The the photo, uh, the, the painting is of, um, it looks like uh, the nursemaid um, or like a server in the house. Uh, she's dressed up as in servant's clothing and um, she's holding a baby. I mean, I'll read the journal entry if somebody wants me to, if we're in there now. Yeah, go ahead. Okay. Woe these times, for down in the very depths of my imagination, I would not one year ago have thought that hence I would be sitting here, telling with pen to journal what I dare not say to any man or woman. I fear their reaction when they learn the truth of what our great family has become. I imagine the faces of dread and horror at the telling of my tale. I must venture to tell this story, though, as my f mind is so full of despair that I cannot for the life of me settle myself, and it is my hope that recounting these events will at least give me some further comprehension of the matters. As my store is now closed, I shall not need this log for inventory of my goods, and if it can be of some higher use, then I shall at least attempt to give it such a second purpose and honestly tell what has happened to us all. I had all the things a man could want before the war began, and that devil Strahd poisoned our lands before my affair and the events which have led my dear family here. I remember one sunny day, standing in the portico and watching the children play in the road. A coach approached r rapidly while they were laughing and their attention was off. Then, in a flash, my sweet Rose, she sprang to action and pulled her brother out of the road and away from danger. She scolded her sibling as I once scolded her, and I was filled with a pride that is hard to explain, especially now as the sun is gone and any example I set henceforth for my beautiful children tonight would be one of a such nervous nature that if they should even glimpse me in this state, I would wish I had done this tomorrow in any regard. I am so low. For a time I felt I was leaking all of what made me who I was, just falling out of me slowly. Then Margaret, the slave girl, came along, and I felt the sun again. I felt it fill me up. It wasn't the sun. It was hope. Oh, I loved Margaret so. If there were a way to supplant me with her and let her raise our bastard, who we have named Walter after my father, I would take mm. that road. Would there be a way to reserve such things? I would let you hold him when he cries as you held baby Thorn before him. My dear Margaret, you were always their mother. They just had not realized it yet. Elizabeth, bless her lost soul, was never cut out to be a mother. She lacks the empathy required to care for the children above all else. Oh, Margaret, take me gods and let her come back to them. Yesterday, I rose early to the sounds of a struggle to find Elizabeth stuffing her trunk with a dress. My eyes were blurry, but I swore I saw blood and skin moving about with a flowery dress staining its be beauty. I stood awake to see direct into the chest at the foot of the bed, and my eyes betrayed my heart, for they showed me the worst sight I could have seen. My lover's body, stuffed at odd angles into the trunk, my wife Elizabeth standing over her, blood streaked across her cheek. Margaret's neck slit open with a line of red from ear to ear presumably by a knife or blade of some sort. She stared up at the ceiling. The rest of her looked worse as she was clearly not designed by God to fit into the chest, but there she was in the chest nonetheless. Elizabeth slammed the lid shut on Margaret's head a few times before the latch clicked and the chest stayed closed. I stood in horror as she must have seen me process it all. She said nothing for a minute, then something about how I should have done it a long time ago. What have I done? My love, Margaret, I am so sorry, my love. If only I had been strong enough to do my husbandly duty and never lay my lips upon hers. I will confront my wife tonight and leave tomorrow. First, I must account in part at least the events which led us here for the sake of my own conscience before I go. The writing of this journal has already made my will stronger to depart this wretched place at first light, but this account can be a reminder to me next I read it that the choices I have made, at least of late, have been just. When I first began taking a liking to Margaret, I should have stopped it, but I could not, no. Like a flower to a bumblebee, Margaret's 
me by instinct and I came to her. Elizabeth, upon learning of my new relationship, did not take the news well. I had fallen out of love with her a long time ago. If not for the business doing so well and our public appearance being of such import, I would have left the woman and taken my children from her long ago. Gods, how I hate her. Hate is not strong a word enough to use, for it is far too short and not representative of the hell I wish upon the devil I once shared a bed with and who once gave birth to our children. How had she come to this? Elizabeth was obsessed with herself the way a dog obsesses over the sight of another of its kind. When she looked in a mirror, she became lost in it and would stare and speak to herself for hours, telling worse and worse tales to herself and infecting her own thoughts. I tried taking the mirrors out of her room, but she needed them, if only to always see, in her words, how badly she really looked. I felt pity for a time, before I learned of what she had been doing, the mother of my children. Gods. For a time now, my wife has been meeting with a group of villagers who believe the Strahd is immortal and can grant them the same power he holds over life. She believed that her face had seen too many days of sun and too many sad stories had been told to her for her to compete with a young thing like Margaret. As it turns out, this group of villagers have been meeting in my house. While I work to provide food for this family, while I ride off in the morning with the previous day's labors to sell the return and return with golden food, they meet in secret and perform sacrificial rituals to this dark lord of the night, Strahd, hoping he will grant them his immortality so that they may keep their beauty and live with it forever. I must take the children from this place after I remove any suspicions of my own involvement with this vile cult's activities. I will pack a bag for one of the kids and we will go to my shop in the village tomorrow and none of us will return to sleep here another night. Rose and Thorn have told me now that their mother locks them in their rooms while her cult visits for their bloody rituals. They believe the screams they hear to be of monsters. One blessing, I suppose. I have taken Mrs. Durst's one good idea and spared the children from our interaction. I have locked them in their rooms one last time, just to be sure they do not follow me down there. The first time I went down, I saw the truth of it all, but I must confront her now and tell her not to follow me when I go. She can have this fiendish house, for I wish after tonight to never see her, her or it again. If the children ever know the truth, that those screams were from men being flayed alive, burned, crushed, tortured in every way possible while chained and gagged. I would die then and there to stop their ears from hearing such things, their eyes from seeing such horrors. The cult chanted together and as I approached, their voices grew louder and I could almost make out what they were saying. What I saw, I will not speak of, even here, even now. I will only say that woe is my family. I will try to save Walter from ever knowing of this place and the tragic way he has come into this world. So I write this account now as the truth of it and say to all who can take comfort in it that I am so very sorry. And now I must do what I should have done before I ever lied with Margaret, tell Elizabeth the truth. I hope she can forgive me, but also I hope she can see the error of her ways and allow me to take the children from here for the good of the family. In any case, at least I say, now that I have tried, Margaret, forgive me that it was not sooner. With a heavy heart, Mr. Gustav Durst. How oh, This explains a lot. Told you this house was cursed and evil. Krim, oh, uh, what, what did the that? ghost upstairs look Sorry, like? I, I, I dozed off. She had a maid outfit. I, I admit it was not my best reading ever. <laughs> no, no, no. It was actually uh, that was a very much. <clears throat> it was uh, it was like uh, I don't know. It kind of reminded me of uh, of growing up a little bit. I don't know. I, I just felt really comfortable. Do you think that ghost could have been the ghost of the lady Mr. Durst liked, or one of her sacrifices? Wait, he, if he locked the children's children in their rooms, how did they get out? Where did he go? What if the children are... Is there not... a date? Is there a date in that journal? Um, I don't know. I didn't notice one. Um, let me, let me look. I did find a key in that desk as well. Do you think it's the key to the kids' room? No, there's no date that I can see. 
I don't know. Can I see a date? It's not dated, no. no. Sorry. You can tell that the journal is very old, though. The pages are now brittle. If you were to write in a journal like this, you might even tear the pages. Um, but I, I, I've seen enough antique books in the shop to know that this is very old. Yeah, so something stuck to me when you were reading that thing. I remember seeing something upstairs. It was a mirror. It was the only thing out of place. Crooked. Uh, Cole, you've been trying to read that book, or did you stop reading and start listening? I was half listening, and I was browsing, thumbing through the pages. I realized what it is, and I'm trying to s skip ahead to the parts where my brother might be mentioned, and to the end where it might say what I could face next. Okay, so as you skip to the end, you notice that it's um, it says something like, uh, and as the six of them stood in the small study, they started learning the, of the predicament they were in. And then that's the last thing, the last sentence of the book. I'll tuck the book in my backpack and okay. then I'll sigh deeply and I'll say these books they seem to have some kind of magic and they keep a record of what we are doing here even as we do it I do not understand it but I will save it so that there is a record of what we have gone through Okay, um, Mira's also going to check the bookshelf, one, because that sounds interesting and valuable, um, and two, to see if, like, there's, like, a secret door, anything like that. Yeah, give me an investigation check. All right. Can I do an arcana check on the book itself? Yeah, you can. Okay, so, Mira, you notice... That there is actually at the back here a secret looking passage in the the bookshelf there doesn't look like it's fully attached to the other bookshelf. Hey guys, I, I think there's a secret entrance here. Maybe it leads to the way out. Okay, so you can see it's a small narrow chamber. Mm -hmm. Um there's a heavy wooden chest with clawed iron feet standing at the south wall. Mm -hmm. And closer inspection as you light your torch, uh, you mm -hmm. see that there is a skeleton in uh, old leather armor, and it's leaning into the into the chest. Oh. Wait, it's... Okay, so it's leaning into the chest? Yeah, it's leaning... Like it's looking in the chest, sort of. Is it like a medical skeleton, or is it like a... It's an adventurer's spooky... armor, I think, is how he described it. Yeah, it's like old, uh, rotten-out adventurer's armor. Oh, okay. okay. Well, I'll search the body, see if there's anything valuable, all the time being like, oh, God. Uh, okay. Trying to push it away from the chest. As you're pulling it out, uh, the, the armor is more holding it all together than anything else. And uh, you notice that uh, as you do, it's all the bones just sort of fall apart. But in the chest of the thing, you do see a giant poison dart stuck into the armor. Went right through. It can looks... I tell the trajectory of the dart? Like where it came from? Yeah, you can see in the chest as you pull it away, you can see a crossbow uh, set up. And it looks like it was trapped before. And this guy okay. got the, the blunt end of that. Uh, okay. And it didn't didn't look so well as you guys, but in his hand, in his bony hand, there is another letter, actually. Okay, I'll take the letter. It's much much shorter. My most pathetic servant, I am not a messiah sent to you by the dark powers of this land. I have not come to lead you on a path to immortality. However many souls you have bled on your hidden altar, however many visitors you have tortured in your dungeon, know that you are not the ones who brought me to this beautiful land. You are but worms writhing in my earth. You say that you are cursed, but your fortune spent. You abandoned love for madness, took solace in the bosom of another woman, and sired his stillborn son. Cursed by darkness, 
Of that I have no doubt. Save you from your wretchedness? I think not. I much prefer you as you are. Your dread lord and master, Strad von Zerovich? Zerovich? Yeah. Zerovich. Uh, wait. Um. Second mention of Strahd in this house. Well, and sired a bastard son. I'm sorry, bastard son, not stillborn son. Which was also mentioned in the journal. Yes. Okay. You also notice in this room here, there are um, a couple of tomes that look um, more book? ominous looking than the rest of the books. One of them says um, Necromantic Rituals, is, is what it's called. And one of them says uh, Priests of Osibis. Anybody know anything about the Priests of Osibis? Cole's mm-hmm. ears perk up. I have not heard of them, but I would like to read it if it's possible. As you move the dead body, you saw the crossbow. Uh, it mm-hmm. pops out open with the lid, but you didn't look mm-hmm. in the chest yet. If you did, um, then you would see that there's also uh, some leather-bound blank books. There are some spell scrolls. Uh, there's a bless scroll. There is a protection from poison scroll. <laughs> That would have been useful. And there is a spiritual weapon scroll. There is a deed to this house. There is a deed to a windmill. You've seen this picture of a windmill a bunch of times, so you assume that's the, what they're talking about. And there's a signed will. And in the will, it's uh, signed by Gustav and Elizabeth Durst. And it bequeaths the entire house, the windmill, and all of their earthly property to their two children, Rosavalda and Thornbolt in the event of their deaths. Not Walter? Walter is not in the deed, no. Okay. Um, I I am going to grab the book of the necromancy and the priest's book and stuff them in my backpack. Mira will take a journal because she likes to write things down, like songs. Well, that wasn't a way out. Shall we move on? Uh, Let's keep going up, I guess. I'll actually um, go over to the fireplace and I'll stick the necromancy book in there and I'll set it on fire. Cole, what are you doing? That's Uh, not how you read a book. (laughs) This is an evil book. I cannot allow this blasphemy to survive, to go on. And as the pages... As the pages begin to burn, you hear a slight sound of screaming. Shall we keep going up in search of the children's room? Ah, yes. Krim, you would know that this is the door that you ran from, obviously. Mira will be towards the back with her crossbow pulled out. I would like to be towards the front. I'm last to leave the room. What'd you say, Quinn? Uh, I'll be right behind you. And I'm going to be safely in the middle. So is this the order we want? Like I was saying before, the temperature as you get closer to the top of the stairs is dropping. And you start to notice that this floor, um, that there's dust on the stairs now. There's, um, everything is looking older. All of the, the beauty of this house is now showing its age and how it like the truth is sort of coming out as you climb higher. They're Krim, which room did you flee from? The bottom one or the top one? The bottom one. Definitely this one. Um, Which room to go in? Because it looks like we have three options. Top one, the one right over here, or the one Krim came out of, which has the ghost lady in it. Krim, did the ghost lady look like the lady in the portraits? Did the ghost lady look like the lady in the portrait? Yeah. You said no. she was in servant's clothes. She did not. The lady in the portraits looked um, a little older than okay. this ghost lady did. The ghost lady looked um, like she might have died when she was younger compared to mm-hmm. um, the portrait lady. Would you guys like to go in this room? 
the one that doesn't look like Krim came out of. All right, yeah, uh, let's try. Because okay. I'd like to try this door to this way and not the one directly down. So you see a storage closet type thing. Um, there's a cobweb covered broom in the back of the closet. Hmm. Well, that doesn't seem very interesting and Knight will step away from that door to look into this top broom next. I'm going to grab the broom. Oh, there's a door down there too. Okay, so Krim, uh, Cole, sorry. As soon as you grab the broom, or before you grab the broom, right before you grab the broom. Boop. It does a thing. <laughs> You're fighting a broom. That is your own downfall if you die to a broom. And there is a broom, broom. standing in front of you. And it comes to life. Standing? And well, Don't it's... it's yeah, now it's, it's, like now it's standing. Mouse. Yeah. Yeah, it's like is the broom uh, supposed to be the, is the broom supposed to be the spectrum on the list? Oh, there it is. I'll stumble backward a step or so, and I'll before say, you do that. Persona. Before you do that, because you were surprised, the broom is going to do a little bit of its brooming to you. Oh, so okay. the broom dusts off your armor. <laughs> Would it have Try advantage? not to get vigorously oh, no, I'm shiny again. This is like the fight scene from Beauty and the Beast, and I'm here for it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I see the broom attacking him. I try to throw a dart, even though it's it'll probably be too difficult. <laughs> yeah, that's plus two AC as well. So uh, anytime you're going through more than one of your players in a straight line, I'm just getting it half cover. Just to let you guys know. Um, okay. So that yeah, that definitely missed. The, the broom actually swatted it back and tried to return your dart, like a, using its monk skills, but it, it missed. Wow. Monk broom. The broom is a monk? Uh-oh. It sees you again, Krim, because it can see and move through walls. And as it does so, it... It just flies around to here, and you see this approaching out from behind this wall here. Well, that's not good. You see this thing, and it screams again. It does its thing. Oof. Ouch. 16 to hit. Because your hit point maximum is reduced by 14. And 14? 14? I'm dead. Yeah, he's just dead, dead. Yeah, that yeah, would insta dead, dead. kill him. That would insta kill anyone. Yeah. I mean, it does say hit point maximum is reduced by an amount equal to the damage taken. And you see Krim's body go limp. Oh, man. He nice. got you anyways, Krim. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, he got away. After all that. So yeah, you guys all see Krim's body drop limp on the floor behind this ghostly visage and it's Mira's turn this appears to be the master bedroom that you're in uh, there's double doors that you went through to get in they the double doors sort of do have a, a windmill uh, design on them as well but the whole the whole room is covered in cobwebs um, there is a chest at the foot of the bed uh, that you know you just read this letter and it talked about um, you know, an incident that happened in here. So you have a feeling that maybe at some point you might want to look in that chest. You do notice uh, dried blood stains near the bottom of the bed. Uh, there is a door in the back here as well. It looks like uh, like it might be a, a, like a way out. It's hard to tell. It's looking like it's letting in some light from cracks through the through the bricks. Um, so Mir is going to see that there's the potential for an exit. Um. And she's gonna go over and check it out because I, I'm not entirely sure she knows what's happening out in the hall. You can see that the bricks are still sealed up and it's just kind of giving you just enough of a glimpse through one of the cracks to see that there is a balcony there. Guys, I think if we can knock down this wall, there, there might be a way out. 
Something's happened to Krim. I, I, he's, he's down. Uh, the, uh, Spectre came up the stairs. If she can go back into the doorway and the doorway's open. All right, and she'll shoot it with her crossbows with the magical bolts. 16 to hit. Uh, 11 piercing. Does some damage, you can see. Everybody it run, we gotta get out of here. Flies, this crossbow bolt seems to scare this thing actually as it it takes some of the spiritual form of this thing with it as it flies through. Oh, um, except that she'll give uh, a wolf lady bardic inspiration bonus action. Yeah, she's gonna take a, st a step back over here and she's gonna take out her one of the crossbows that she had from downstairs and also take a shot at it, but she's just gonna have a regular arrow in it, a regular crossbow in it. Yeah, so then she'll look back towards um, whoever it was in in the doorway and let them know, uh, your, your, your friend is down, that, that thing got him. So Cole, it can't go anywhere and it wants to get out. So, it coming. <laughs> oh Lord, Easy, coming. my friend. Easy. We mean you no harm. I'm talking to a broom. Boom. Multi-attack with the broom. Sweep, sweep. 18 for six bludgeoning damage. So, Cole is uh, fallen to the ground inside of this closet. <laughs> you guys see his head pop out the door. Uh, all right. So, that's the broom. It, it's, it's just... Mickey Mousing or whatever Disneying. Um, it's cleaning house. Exactly, and it's time for you to make a death save. <laughs> Me? Yeah. You're at zero, so yes, you gotta sir. make death saves. Okay, that's better than your deck save. So that's one success. And now it is Mr. Cooper. What am I involved with here? Uh, Nonsense. Uh, and then he's gonna just like try to like reflexively see after he sees uh, uh, a crim go down, uh, just kind of push it away. And when he does an, an eldritch blast, poof, fires out. Accidental pew. You hear this thing scream one last. <laughs> As its spiritual form dissipates and wisps, and the 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 bolt actually—it's right behind me, isn't it? It's right behind me. The bolt actually impacts into the wall, and uh, you know does a little bit of damage to the wall too, because it had some force behind it still as it was tearing through. I run by, I run by the other group members, uh, screaming, "It's right behind me! Save me!" Well, there goes the well. Since that thing's already gone, there goes the idea I had of you know praying over the bones but i guess we got a broom we gotta deal with don't we you don't really know that necessarily but you hear cole ow <laughs> kind of thing and right thud it thud yeah <laughs> okay so i see a presumably either unconscious or dead crim look around i don't see cole i walk around to where the closet i opened was and Seemingly, see Cole. Would I be able to like be like step over his body or swap yeah, places he's, with he's his body? Yeah, he's he's just an uh, just a lump on the ground at this point. Difficult terrain. It's like get in so I can try to. Smack I will out. point out that my armor is made out of coral, so don't cut your feet on the coral. It's difficult terrain. That sounds so uncomfortable. That'd be like wearing puma stone as armor. Gotta squeeze yeah. me, gotta get in here, gotta squeeze me. Long sword. Yeah. This thing is held together still, but it looks like um you've cut that in such a way that there's only a couple of strands that are holding together in one side, and it looks like you've almost almost chopped it in half. That's good. It's Krim's turn here. And um, you guys might have a black screen for a minute. Prim won't, though. Do you see that, Krim? Okay. 
Yeah. Let me just get my torch. Or, wait, they can't. Okay, so you guys noticed that um, where Krim was, uh, the ground is engulfed with mist, and then his body disappears. So He trusts me not to metagame. <laughs> so, Krim, as you look around, you hear whispers in every direction. The ground That'll all appear. around you. <laughs> you. The ground all around you is, is uh, like a cobblestone floor, and... Um, it looks like it's ancient, ancient, ancient. There, you, you kind of take a sniff and the air is really stale. And then you realize that you don't even need to breathe. You're not breathing right now. Um, yeah, you're seeing these uh, amber statues or amber. It looks like, you know, when you have, if you had a mosquito or whatever, caught in amber. These things look like uh, moving wisps of blackness inside of amber um, that are quite large, actually. They're bigger than you. Large mosquitoes. Okay. So, if there's something you want to do, then we can do that. And if not, we're going back to turn order. Um, I can investigate... I'm going to investigate one of them. Okay, this so one. as you walk towards that one, as you walk towards that one, you hear it laughing at you. And uh, it's a really, <laughs> really creepy laugh. You hear like a, You are not useful to me. Be gone. Okay. Chillax. You hear Hamburg. you hear whispers saying "come, go. come" from all around the room, though, except for the largest amber blocks. Okay, I go to this one. Uh, it says, uh, it kind of whispers to you, "I am the star of secrets, and no information shall be hidden from me." Or from you, if you accept the steel. Do you crave to know all which lies beyond your mortal perspective? If it's How can I? I'm dead. It's waiting for you to be... It's waiting for you to get... Uh, basically, it wants you to touch it. You can feel like it's asking you to touch it. Okay, <laughs> that's weird. It's asking me to touch it, but okay. It's it's compelling it. you. You can you can decide if you want to or not. But did you say you, you do? Yeah. Okay. And as he does, you guys notice that the smoke reappears in the room again. And Krim reappears beside you as well. Does he still look bleh? You are waking up, but you are very dazed oh. right now, Krim. And oh, he not dead. Well, you see him reappear in front of you on the floor. So, Krim, you are no longer with a dead symbol, but you are prone and opening your eyes, and that's the end of your turn. Krim, you're alive! All right. Um, hey. <laughs> she's gonna run over to him. How how is he looking? As far as like, is he? Krim actually has full HP again. Wow, fresher than yo. What? What so happened? Krim just smiles. Krim, I I saw you. I saw you die. You withered like a like a flower. Uh, the, the feathers dropped from you, and you you shriveled. Go ahead. Krim just looks at silence and go. Uh, I don't know. I I don't know what happened. One minute I I was pawing with something, and then then I'm here. One minute you were what? I was talking with something. I can't remember his name or exactly what he said. What did it I look like? What he said. What did it look it, like? It was, it was just a voice in my head 
I remember the color amber though. Like a sap from a tree. Then... And what did you converse about? I can't remember. Well, that's then, not ominous in any sort of way. As you guys see him talking, you guys notice that his tongue is a little longer than it used to be and it whips out when he's making certain beak words. Does he bite it? He needs to make a dexterity save to talk. (laughs) Can dex save to not bite your tongue, please? (laughs) Yeah. Dex save. Well, um, I mean, I'm glad you're alive. I'm a little worried. Uh, What do you guys say we get the hell out of here? Because there was something that maybe could be knocked down to get an exit. While you guys are having all these conversations... Midnight's the broom is room. still the broom is still what alive. What about your yeah. friend? <laughs> oh. The one that's knocked out on the floor. Oh, right. Oh, Cole. Uh, Cole? She'll lean down and <laughs> put her put her hand on Cole because he's right there and uh, be like, "Stay alive and cure wounds." Okay, roll some HP healing, and then Cole is gonna wake up. Nice. Uh, Cole, you have a bad dream there, um, of being attacked by a broom, and then you wake up. seven plus three? That broom was bristling with death. So yeah, seven healing, Cole. Uh, and that's Mira's turn, so now it is... Avery... Avery. Avery. Just say Ray. We're not gonna get it. Ray Ray! (laughs) No, Peter. You should hear how long it took to say Mira instead of Myra. It's true. <laughs> we still now say it's both. hard to say Myra. We just say or both. Mira? Mira. Okay. Uh, she's going to reload her crossbow. Or her, yeah, her crossbow real quick. Um, she's she's going to look over her shoulder at Chris. Wherever, where is Chris? In another room, <laughs> I think. He went well, back. Wherever... Wherever she heard him make that that pun about being bristling with death, she's gonna kind of give him like a thumbs up and like a chuckle. Um, and she is going to come down here, see what is going on. Then I'm gonna take a shot at the cross at the broom if it's still. Going yeah, it's, crazy. It's still going. Cool. Then I'm gonna take a shot. It's at... Still going. Oh, that's a hit. Wow. Yeah. Please kill it. <laughs> it's not an at twenty though. <laughs> oh yeah. Does so, that finish it? <laughs> so there's midnight just carving away at this thing, just perfectly a crossbow bolt, just perfectly right in the middle of the broom, and it's like. It's like thud. <laughs> it just falls over like a stick. Develops an arm. <laughs> yeah. It develops arms just so it can pose for a second and then falls over. <laughs> it's like <laughs> Perfect. It's yeah, it's a splintery broom on the floor now. And then I'll reach down and help Krim up. Cole is turning purple in embarrassment. You got it's knocked red, out red by a broom. <laughs> yeah. Red, red and blue make purple. Cole is up now. Um, Krim is starting to stand and being helped up, so yeah. Can you remove that skull from my head? You should be able to do it yourself, You can do it if you wanted to, yeah. Uh, I'll do it this time. Just click your token and hit the, uh, circle icon at the bottom of the little menu that pops up and just re-click the thing, like, oop, oop. Did we do it? Are we safe? Is that, is that Spectre thing gone? It's been gone. Everything... Went topsy turvy for me. Are you okay, Cole? You you look a little uh, bushed. Man, you cannot let me keep a straight face in this game. <laughs> uh, midnight. I, I'm I'm a little concerned about uh, Krim. I I saw the specter. I didn't see what happened to it. I just ran away from it, but. After I ran away, 
the specter is gone and Krim is up and walking around. Where did Krim go? Is someone standing get, on Krim? Did he get possessed? Am I standing on Kim, Krim? Yes. I'm, Oh, okay. I was standing on Krim. I'm so sorry, Krim. <laughs> Good night. I, I, I think that I think the spirit I, I think the spirit is inhabiting his body. I've heard stories about this. Angry spirits can possess uh, the 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 living. Chris, you killed the spirit when you fled. I just ran away. I didn't do anything. You well, blasted it with one of your weird blasts again. Yeah. I didn't do anything. I just turned and fled. Chris, um, you blasted it with one of your weird blasts like we saw at camp. Uh, I don't know what's happened oh, I, to you, Chris, but you, you, you have something you didn't have before? Maybe? He also used it downstairs, by the way. Oh. I, 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 uh, yes. I, I, uh, I don't know what to say. Um, I, you're right. Uh, Things have felt different recently. Um, I don't know what happened, or or what happened to the spirit. Um, I mean, I, about these these strange occurrences, I, I I don't know. I just felt like uh, I could uh, project my 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 will my will uh, out outwards. All right, uh, Mira's just gonna like put a hand on his shoulder and says, uh, we'll figure it out after we get out of this freaking house. Let, let's, let's just get out of here let's and then we'll figure out what happened. Around. Okay. And All right. Midnight will want to go into the room, this room down here specifically no. where All right. the specter is no longer in. Well, Oh, that's I, right. I, I need help. I, I need help figuring out if Krim is Krim. It seems Krim, like Krim when I talked Krim? to him. Well, what could we ask him that would prove that he is who he is? I am Krim. Do we really know him well enough to be able to know if he's Krim? Hey, Krim, how do you feel about some meat? Oh, thanks. He's Krim. <laughs> Krim, I have some more of that special wine. Do you want any? Wine? Uh, that sure. special stuff that I had the other day, you know? That we took to the wedding. Yes, that we the took Duchess to the wedding. The Duchess drank. Yeah, that great wine. Yes. The one Don't that I you told remember? you had the mm in it. Oh. You, Chris, brought that? You yes. brought that? Then I look at you, Chris. Ah, he, he, okay. That familiar look of contempt and anger, that that's definitely him. But I guess we could just put that in a little box and put it on a shelf and, and get back to it later. later. Yes. yes. Time to compartmentalize for sure. You said that there was a way out. So, Krim, now um, that you're there, standing, there might be if we smash down the brick wall to the balcony. All right, I'll get to smashing. And while you What's guys a... go to the top there to investigate that uh, cracked wall that's over here, and you can see a couple of cracks where the light's coming through. And you, so you can see there's a balcony out there. Okay, I stand uh, uh, where she, in front of where she says there's a way out, a crack, or uh, is that what it is? Yeah. And I, I uh, Chris uh, outstretches one of his hands and palm forward, and he says, "I, I uh, what do I say? Do I just? I, need, I mean, I. Uh, you, know, you know some magic, right? Smash." Smash! <laughs> blast! So, as this mist... Go, go, gadget blast! No, nothing happens. Go, go, gadget as, as it, uh, Oh, nothing happens? Uh, nothing happens uh, at all. Uh, 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 oh, what is it? <laughs> uh, lightning bolt! Um, well, what's... Fireball! What's something that you said the last few times you did it? Uh, I was, I was, uh, oh my god, the ghost is coming for me, it's killed, <laughs> and then it shoots off. Okay, so as it shoots off, the, the, the mist that comes out of your hand at incredible speeds just destroys this door, this whole window, it all starts shattering out, and before it even moves five feet away, it all sucks right back in and reheals itself. I don't know how much of that was me or how much of that was the house. 
I hate this house. I'm, I'm gonna investigate the mirror. Yeah, I'm with Krim here. I wanted to see more about that mirror. So you can see that the uh, there's little berries and ivory or ivy around the whole mirror there, but the the ivy isn't actually ivy. It's more like thorns, as you can see closer, and the berries aren't actually berries. They're eyeballs. I break the mirror. Oh, that's seven years bad luck. As the mirror shatters, you can see the hole behind you or behind it. And uh, it, you also realize that you could have just slid it out of the way and behind the uh, armoire there to the side. But only you realize that and nobody else, so... You're cool. Yeah, you're well, good. <laughs> while they're all doing that, I only got a nine on my investigation check for the broom. So I'm going to this, just assume that it's safe to pick up. I don't really know. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to take good. my... I'm gonna take my arrow out and I'm gonna go hand the broom to Cole. And I'm gonna tell, she's gonna tell him, uh, my father always said, whatever doesn't kill you makes you stronger. So here, let this be a token. And she of hands you failure. the broom. The, the broom? <laughs> the broom that yeah. killed you. <laughs> Is it broke in half? <laughs> yeah. Is it slashed in half? It's from got the a midnight? slash mark where the where his sword almost chopped it in half, and then it's got a hole in it where it's like split apart, and uh, it was an arrow stuck in it before. Wait, are you telling me that there's flying brooms here? I don't know about flying, but um, they definitely apparently do some damage. I <laughs> tripped and hit my head. Attack broom. You only imagine Cole's secret shame is that he has a broom dash <laughs> on his. I'll kind of thank thank her for the broom, and then I'll like when she turns away, I'm gonna silently let it slide to the yeah. floor and kick it under the bed. Oh, Cole, you dropped your broom. It'll help you dust up on your combat ability. As you kick it under the bed, there you notice that there's um, old blood dried on that side of that chest. And oh, you might see even a oh, little bit of white in the chest. You now. might see even a little bit of white lace sticking out the edge of it too. Remember what the journal said. I know what's in yeah. that chest. There is a dead body. I may in that have chest. a low intelligence, but I get it now. Uh -huh. I'll pick up the broom and I'll I'll say, "Ooh, I don't want to lose this," and I'll stick it in my backpack loosely so. It could easily fall out, you know. Cool. Yeah. Um, the broom is sticking out. It might fall off. Then I help him put it deeper. <laughs> Midnight will shout. So, does anyone else want to go down this tunnel me and Krim found through the mirror? More than anything okay. in the world. <laughs> Everybody peeks their heads Thanks, out of Krim. doors <laughs> along the way. So that's down, uh, down here. If they have found that. Mm. There's um, just a hallway of torches. I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I noticed that too. We're just um, leaving torches everywhere, lighting the sconces. Torches we're also are not free. Opening up this chest. <laughs> in this game, we're, torches we're not are free. In that chest, we know what's in that chest. It's a dead body. Staircase in front of you opens up, and it goes. I don't know if you can see it or not, but it goes up. It goes up. Okay. Uh, I'd also that? like to go up. Okay, so if everybody's okay. going up, go then up. I will be I'm moving. I'm going where the group goes. I'll be moving people. We're moving and we're moving people. You guys are hearing footsteps upstairs? Mm -hmm. So we're hearing footsteps? Oh, there I am. I heard that. All right. Uh, if I'm hearing footsteps... Midnight will use another charge of Divine Sense to try and sense if it's a fiend or undead past that door before anyone opens it. Yeah, you're f you're picking up some undead s from uh, about there. Okay, well, you're, you're picking up two. You believe it's two because they're moving around mm -hmm. a little bit. Nice gonna grab the handle of this door and turn their head back and say, Be prepared, I sense two undead further into this room. 
And as soon as everyone files into the room, Midnight will point towards this direction and say, I can sense them this way. You're, you are hearing, it, it like, there's cobwebs up here. There's a lot more. Um, the stairs are creaking, and, and Midnight, under your weight now, you start to feel like the floor is maybe even not as safe up here as it was down in the lower floors. I think this is definitely showing its age now, and things have become... If it wasn't already a little creepy, things are becoming a little more creepy. Oh, no. <laughs> and if actually... it's locked, we got a key. It, it is locked. That's what I was just going to say. But I have you, a key. And <laughs> as you fits. try the key, you feel it... And a war hammer. ...and move, and the door is opening, and... As we left off, the players had found a note... Uh, a journal entry from Mr. Durst in his study detailing how the children have been locked in this room upstairs, how um, he didn't approve of his wife's actions and her cultist activities. Basically, this family used to be a well-respected family in the town uh, until the husband became adulterous. And... uh, they ended up having uh, a child between the husband and the nursemaid, Margaret. That made the wife jealous, and she started to uh, become obsessed with her beauty, with her age. She didn't want to continue aging and losing her husband's love. So she started down a darker path of looking for immortality. The last we know of, the husband was trying to get the kids out of the house, and it appears as though he was not successful. Finding a key in that study near near the journal, uh, they have come up the stairs now to what they believe to be the locked children's bedroom. And Midnight has inserted the key and is now opening the door. So as you open that door, Midnight, mm-hmm. you see on the floor, quite clearly in front of you, mm-hmm. two skeletons. Oh no. As the door creaks open. They appear to be small skeletons, dainty, lying in the middle of the room. They're wearing tattered but familiar looking clothing. Looks a lot like the clothing from the pictures you have seen around the house, the paintings. The room contains a bricked up window flanked by two dusty wooden framed beds that are children sized. And closer to the door, there seems to be a toy chest on one side and a dollhouse on the other. Eerie-looking dollhouse. It looks very detailed. There's furnishings that are draped in cobwebs everywhere. And the smallest of the two skeletons is clutching a doll. It's like a stuffed animal, but it's made in a form that's something that you, Midnight, would recognize. It looks a lot like you. That's not creepy at all. <laughs> She's gonna, you know, step into the room and say, guys, I think I found the actual children. What, what oh. do you mean you found the, the children? Are they remember okay? How, remember how in the journal it said the children were locked in their room? The children yeah. are not locked in the room. We saw them outside when we came in here. They're fine. I don't think they are fine. These are two child-sized skeletons. Are they indeed childlike skeletons? I guess it'd be medical. Uh, oh, these have... are just illusions. You've been deceived. L- look, we've seen the children outside. They're fine. Look, I'll just put my hand through the bones, and you'll know it's an illusion. It, it's a okay. It's the a... skeleton tumbles off to the side slightly, and you start to hear whispering sounds. In the background. Uh, I'm hungry, light. Rose. Uh, was Rose the name of the daughter? I know, yeah, Thorn. Yeah, it was Rose and Thorn. I know, me too. It's okay. I'm really cold. Here, come sit here with me. Tell, tell me about your doll. Oh, she's really cool. She's a paladin. Oh, wow. That is cool. What, what What's her name? Really her, talkative for being her dead. Her name is Ezra. Yeah. I, children, can, 
can, can spirits of the house, can you hear us? That's hmm. no. Everybody, make me a perception check. You you notice that the the dollhouse sitting right here is eerily similar to the picture that that you're all like uh, sitting in front of actually. It looks a lot like the house that you're in right now. Okay. Uh, I'm just going to go with the one in perception, and he's going to hear these whispers. Chris is going to be backing up, trying to look around, and he's going to step backwards and tumble and accidentally sit on the dollhouse with a loud creaking as the tiny walls bear the weight of his twish. So you knock the dollhouse into the wall, and it falls over, but it's still, oh, geez. It's still together. As you do that, so you see the two ghostly figures of these two um, kids, and they're actually sitting in the spot where their skeletons are. Uh, you hear the boy continue. Her name's Ezra. She could kill the monster if she was here, right? I bet she could. I bet she could. Will you tell me a story, Rose? Sure. Are these children see-through? Yeah, they're ghostly. About about what? Uh, children, Rose, Thorn, do you remember us? We were the ones outside. You invite us, I invited us in. Was that you? They've been not paying any attention to you at all. And they sort of disappear from where they're sitting, move up into different areas of the room. Don't adore me. I asked you a question. Chris, Hi. I don't know if they can hear you. What I are you doing with, with my toys? Oh, this? Oh, uh, I, the the dollhouse snuck up on me. I thought it was uh, bewitched. Uh, sorry, here you are. Uh, and I lift up the dollhouse and try to hand it to him. I can't hold that anymore. I can't play oh. with it. Oh, I, okay. Well, I guess then I'll just put this down. So do you remember we were the people outside? You invited us in. You said that your parents had a monster in the basement. Do you remember talking to us about that? No, we, we've we been in this room the whole time. Our parents, my, our dad locked us in here. If you weren't the ones outside, then who was? I don't know. Well, what do you do around here? We're just waiting for our parents to come back. Where did they go? Well, our dad said he was going downstairs to help mom and... That was a while ago. I think it are you was too long. Are you are you sad here? Are you happy here? We're okay. We play sometimes, and he's gonna come back over to his sister now, and he's gonna try to go into his toy chest, and he just puts his hand right through it. Oh, um, here I'll help you. I open the lid for him. Yeah, you see inside the toy chest, there's a couple of little toys. Um, okay. It's mostly imagination toys that children would would uh, find more. Yeah, that's what my parents told me when they gave me empty boxes. It's an imagination <laughs> toy. Well, uh, this is quite the collection you have here. Tell me, is there any way out of this house? Why do you want to leave? Because I am going to uh, meet my friends, and I have a, I, I'm going to play with them, and, but they're outside, and I can't see them when I'm in here. Let's just play. Okay. What do you want to play? Yay. Do they have any dinosaur toys? No, it's mostly just uh, horses and stick men that are made of wood. Okay. I'll, I'll get like some like buggies and we'll play cars for a little bit. All whispers in Avaray's ear. Who's he talking to? Oh, yeah, because uh... Cole can't see in the room. Mira's going to also kneel down with the little boy and be like, can you show me Ezra? Yeah. And then he holds up the doll. You see behind you? Can you look over there? And she's pointing at midnight. Wow. Are you here for us? Midnight kind of waves and look, says, Rose, yes, look. children, I'm here to get you out of here. They're look, Ezra's here, Rose. 
I I don't know what to say, Thorn. Um, I'm not sure that's that's the real one. Midnight will just kind of kneel to get on their eye level and say, "Do you want to get out of here so you can play outside?" No, I don't want to go anywhere. I don't. I, it's safe here. Stay with us. What if we made it safe for you to go outside? Would you want to go outside then? I don't think we can. Why not? He points down to the bones on the floor. It, oh, those, those are just an illusion. Yeah. No. I, <clears throat> and then you hear Rose, the older sister. We've been here too long. So do you want to leave? It's too late for that. Midnight will speak up and say, I think they need to be put to rest to be able to leave this house. Midnight and Krim are going to make a saving throw for me. Oh, no. A charisma save. Charisma. (laughs) That's what I'm good in. (laughs) Yay. (laughs) Just going to... I didn't jinx myself. <laughs> it's the children. Oh, this Sad is the baby. one I'm supposed to be good in. So, uh, Krim just you see him shake his beak for a minute, and then, um, midnight actually. Here, I'm gonna send you something there. Um, mm-hmm. so you guys notice that the boy just disappears. Uh, but I thought we we're playing horses and carriage. So you see, um, yeah, the girl tries to move towards Krim a little bit and then moves back. Stay with us. Midnight, could you maybe, uh, I mean, this isn't my expertise. Could you maybe pray over the bones? I don't know if anything else is supposed to change, DM. Is there anything that I still respond as? Yeah, you're still you, but you're... Okay. Yeah. But though, oh, I just no. gained those traits. Yeah, exactly. Okay. I can sure try. I don't know if that would exactly help. Usually, I think they would have to be buried, but I can try. I mean, I would kind of just kneel at the bones and take out a sensor and put a little bit of the um, incense in it, light it, and start to pray. As you're over doing the bones. that, you're you're very distracted. These are bones. They're very, uh, you know, this is a little creepy for you now. Uh, okay, so as she's doing this, Chris sees what's going on and takes a hint. Uh, I I I suppose some uh, degree of reverence is warranted. Uh, is there anything I can do to help? with the ritual do uh do you think you could uh kneel beside me and help me pray for them to be at rest certainly you can tell midnight's kind of stuttering now can i okay. does midnight stutter to attune to what i need to do yes apparently now i do okay i'm not a robot <laughs> she's she's trying to do it but she's also stopping herself at the same time all right so i will kneel beside her and pray and you do notice uh, midnight's eyes change to a different color now. They are now green instead of blue. So Chris thinks of her as some sort of robot mood ring now. Okay, so he clasps his hands together and begins to uh, whisper a prayer to Lathander. Uh, <laughs> god of light, god of wisdom, god of birth, please guide these souls back to your embrace. Please take them to your land and from this uh, realm of shadow and mist. You hear loud whispering sounds echoing your own words. Oh, well, that's probably normal. Actually, it is not normal. That's never happened before. Midnight? Well, what does that mean? I've, I'm hearing things echoed back to me. Continue um, with the stutter. That seems quite unusual for midnight. She'll say it, it may be working. Do you need more bacon grease, midnight? N- no, I just feel s- strange. All right, Mira uh, will turn to the little girl who's still in the room, I'm assuming, and go, where did your brother go? Where did Thorn go? And make me a Christmas saving throw. 
Well, at least I have a shot there. Um... Knock on wood, please. <laughs> I said the same thing. <laughs> oh, damn it. I said the same thing. <laughs> I have a plus five modifier. Same, and it's still safe. Because level one is terrible, that's why. <sighs> <okay. laughs> the dice are evil, level one is evil. And you can check the Discord. You are both compelled to either stay in this room or travel downstairs. Well, uh, midnight, I'd say we... Um, I guess swaddle these remains, and if we can find a place to lay them to rest, we do so. Um, I thought that I said that we needed to stay here. Did you? Yeah. Why are you second guessing yourself? I'm not second guessing myself. <laughs> then we stay here. Okay, May I we stay enter here. the room, please? That's what I said. Okay. Yeah, you can squeeze in there, Pete. Uh, Greg, while we're having that conversation, um, given kind of the monster hunter background that I have, can I roll a history check to see if it would be a good thing or a bad thing to move those bones? Oh, persona, preserve us. Well. Yeah, you don't really know. Cole will walk over to the bones, and he'll pull out a bag and start pouring this white substance on the bones. It is salt, and then he'll bring, okay, he'll wait. pull out. Before he'll that pull happens, out. while you're, Let while me you're doing that. What you, well, you what can't you just what finish. You're, you're already doing things that take some time. So um, midnight, you feel a, a sudden shift, and now you have to make a saving throw. Cool. Christmas save. You're you're back to yourself now, Midnight. Okay, let me change the eyes. Seventeen. Okay, so you shake it off. You see the uh, child come back. All right, this is a little too crowded for me. I'm just going to step out, and you guys have fun playing with the children. Midnight's eyes. Hey, I suddenly... said to stay here. What are you uh, doing? I'm Midnight's... still here. Sorry. Midnight's eyes suddenly shift back to their usual bright blue and kind of just shakes their head and says, that was weird. What do you mean weird? I mean, this whole thing has been weird. There's ghost children popping up. Apparently, they're happy here, but they don't want to be here. You're stuttering for some reason. I you was say, stuttering? Yes. What's yeah, going on? It's, what? It's weird. What have, what have you been feeling? I just felt off. But you are currently on. I've seen you off, and it's that century thing you were talking about. But you were not like that. You were you were talking, and you were helping uh, uh, with a prayer over the bones of these children. Can Midnight also attempt to roll history to see what's going on with their paladinness and their background with the church? Hold on. Cole was still doing his bones thing. And the child okay. tried to interrupt him, but does not succeed because he he felt the uh, the a shudder come through him, and uh, something tried to like touch his brain, but he shook it off. And so now, are you continuing, Cole? Uh, yeah. Next, I'm gonna pour some. No. Uh, oil. Wait, stop! Don't do pull, that. I'm gonna pull out a. Don't, don't do that. Oil. Stop. Will somebody gag her? <laughs> I'm right. going to pull out a flask of oil I and pour some on the bones. And, and then I'm going to lean gonna pull down out a and use the flint and go get, after him. You get attacked by the it. child ghost with a withering touch. And it hits you for 17 necrotic damage. Oh, that just probably... Does that kill him? Probably. <laughs> what are you at now? I don't get a save. I guess attack. you don't get attack. a chance to do anything. You just drop. It wasn't a save. It was an attack. He beat yeah. the AC. You, didn't, you don't get a chance to do anything, it seems. You just drop dead, I and think. I don't know what you're... How many are you at? I can't see your I HP have an bars anymore. AC. You got hit with it a 20. rolled a 20. And for 17 damage. Oh. Ooh. So... I had 12, so what's that drop me down to? Zero. Unconscious. Zero. 
Yeah. Okay, so it's not double, so you're just unconscious. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Hard to feel really awful That's fine. I, I think everybody knows what I was trying to do. Let's we not have... panic. Okay, so I, Chris will say, I have no idea what he was trying to do. And I want to apologize to you, Rose, for whatever it was. Uh, we really mean you no harm. Seeing what just well, transpired, Midnight's going to try to grapple Myra, because that's that's not right. Avery's going to start dragging Cole out of the room. So Midnight grabs Myra. And I never got to do my hey, history check. Hey, no, what are you doing? <laughs> Let me um, go. <laughs> you can while you've grabbed her, uh if you want to, you can do a history check. Yeah, Cuz this ain't right. Let's hope for a good roll. Mira's going to be struggling and like kicking and from what you know already, from what you've learned in this world, um this is the first time you've ever heard the word Ezra before where somebody knew more than you it seemed like. Uh so when the, this this child, you know, seems to be your first clue in years as to what Ezra might mean, even. Oh, I was doing the history check on if I know anything about possession or what just happened. That's not really to history, the people. though. Is it? That'd be religion, probably. I don't know. Yeah. Oh, sorry. History is kind of kinda like, thing. you know, stuff that happened in the past and... So far, May I attempt the religion thing? Because I got that really confused. I'm okay, sorry. Yeah, no, I'll give you a religion check 16 instead if you want. Okay, thank um, you. While you notice that uh, they definitely acted um, aggressively towards Cole, um, there are ways to put bones to rest where it's less painful for the spirit. And there are ways to do it where it's absolutely, um, you know, like torture. And what they what Cole was about to do was about to torture these kids who were already dead. <laughs> and so they didn't want to have that happen. Midnight will uh look to Cole and say, Don't do that again. You'll see that Avery is like dragging him out. Maybe we should tell <laughs> uh, him that when he wakes up. <laughs> uh, Midnight, why is it important that he not do that again? I don't know as much about there religion as you are, do. There are several ways to put a spirit to rest and what he just did was an equation to torture. So I he see. was he was hurting their spirits, and it I was see. very painful to them. That's well, why he's pretty thoroughly unconscious right now. I can still see that uh, necrotic wound burning into his flesh. I think once he wakes up, we should have a talk with him about that. Yeah. Do we have any way to? Oh wait, is he going to wake up? up? Uh, nobody did. A, nobody. Nobody stabilized him. Uh, he's he he should be making death saves. Yeah, that's about the first time uh, you're on What's a death save? <laughs> Why are you at seven out of nine, Cole? It should be flat zero. You're, you're changing your um, perception again. Your health bar is green. Okay. I'm mixed up on what the Your passive are. perception is 12, right? Yeah. So you actually had seven hit points. DM, is Cole making death saves? No, he's just dead. <laughs> you guys see a... Because he had seven hit points, and he got hit for 17. So you guys just But it wasn't a see... life dream, Ooh. was it? No, it was... Cool. If you do double the HP, they just flat die. Instant death. It can't be yeah. Yeah, instant death. No. Yeah, yeah, so you and, see... Um, back with giant ears. Did... His, his max health is, what, nine? Yes, so... And he was at 7 out of 9. Is it like so... twice the max HP or twice what they had? Twice max HP. If you get so... over your full health in damage after the... like You, you can't go negative, Reduction, but you yeah. can go negative up until it's your, your full max HP. And then if it does hit that max HP level, which it just did... it. 17. I thought the max HP for him would be 18 because his max HP is 9. You doubled that, that's 18. Yeah. Well, it was at 7 out of that 18, though. But you're you're only you're only dead dead if you get hit for your max HP in one go. I don't he think did. it matters what the right. HP he took, bar was. He took, so he, he took... should be at negative 10 hit points. He had right. 12 hit points as his max. No, that he means has, he's still... He has 9, nine as his max. as his max. So yeah, he's the dead. The 12 was his perception. <laughs> Uh, I'm willing to be dead. 
Uh, so you guys notice how... I've never died before. I'm so sorry, Cole. In so the with few a medicine seconds, check of three, would I know that he's dead? In the few seconds that um, he's been on the ground now, you guys notice that his body is starting to be surrounded by swirling mists, and they're coming out of his body, and kind of just circling around the room a little bit at floor level. And yes, so doing what happened with to a Krim medicine earlier? check of three, you think he's sleeping, but then come you on, start seeing come on, smoke. Cole, get up. This isn't a joke. You're not fooling anybody. We know you're fine. When you say that, everybody's gonna drop him back on the ground and, and be kind of upset, thinking that he's faking. <laughs> like, and like a sack of potatoes, he falls yeah. to the ground. It's like, like, well, then get up. Are you head, are you awake or not? Your head just and bounces. he disappears into the mist as you do that. Uh, oh, that's not normal. Isn't I'm that what so happened sorry. to Krim before? Uh, Mira's still struggling against Midnight. Uh... Okay, so Krim's uh, picked up the the children's dollhouse that got knocked over mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and starts looking at it and starts pointing at Midnight. Hey, look. Is there something up at the house? He's pointing to the room you guys are standing in. And you see in the room, you know, there's a little, little dollhouse even. Mm -hmm. And uh, a, a little, little toy chest. Wait, is there a little dollhouse inside of the little dollhouse? Is it dollhouse the little dollhouse? Is it dollception? Maybe, maybe. And there's a bunch of people that look just like us standing inside of the model. There's nobody standing inside of the house. There's just... Uh, what you do notice, though, midnight when you look at this thing where he's mm -hmm. pointing, you notice that there is a staircase hidden back there somewhere. Does and the dollhouse show an apparent way to get to that staircase? Yeah, it looks like if you go down into the hall here, there should be... A, there's another door. Avare can see that the, there's a door down at the end of the hall here. And it looks like... Um, between, because you're looking in the room there too, right, Avery? You can see they're pointing at the dollhouse, so you're kind of picking up on that too. That it looks like um, down here. There's a yeah, door. Yeah, it looks like there's a door down there that leads to that staircase. There's a secret staircase entrance somewhere. I'll tell shout outside for scary. everyone to hear outside the room. There's a hidden staircase outside. If you go into another room, it should be down the hall out from outside this room. Krim, can you take the bones? I have my hands busy with Myra, Mira. Krim will um, go over to the bed and pick up a backpack that's been tucked under the bed. And it's kind of fallen apart. It looks like it's a, you know, disheveled thing, but it uh, has like moth holes in it and stuff, but it still works for the purposes of he's, he's carefully putting the bones in the bags. And he's like, you know, looking up at, at Mira the whole time. Hey, what, what, what are you doing? What, what are you going to do with those? Well, uh, we have going to go to back downstairs now, right? This is our chance with Ezra can, can save us now, right? This gonna, is what you were telling me about. We're going to put the bones to rest so the two spirits can be at peace. Right, M Mira will look back at at midnight, and uh, I'm assuming the little boy said that, or did Krim say that? Well, Krim is okay. Saying All right. that. All right, <laughs> uh, Krim. <laughs> okay, uh, I'm trusting you. Don't like let. Yeah. Okay. Let's try. Mira, are you okay? You're acting I'm, different. I'm fine. Then why did you stab Cole? You go first. I don't want to go anywhere yet. I don't want. I don't want. I don't want. I don't, I'm did, scared. Did Mira she stab Cole? I, I saw. I saw the ghost touch Cole, and he simply fell over. I mean, you definitely saw Mira kind of pull her rapier, but then the ghost attacked. Yes, uh, I mean, yeah. uh, who, which one of us haven't hasn't pulled an knife on Cole as of late? I mean, I feel like so many of our conversations kind of, at some point, end with that. Right. 
I thought it was just another dialogue. All right. So Mira's going to hold her hand out to Krim and be like, okay, we'll go together. I'll kind of just let go of Mira. And right as they start traveling out the door there, um, you guys are put on hold for a second. Yeah. And we're going to go over to... The Amber Room. I don't know what it's actually called, but it sounds like a good idea to call it the Amber Room. So you wake up on the floor, Cole, and you are a little dazed and confused, and you get a thick stink in the air of death, and you realize that you don't, you're not breathing, you don't have to breathe. Um, yeah, strange room, very creepy. Mist seems to be floating all throughout the floor. Am I able to talk? You can talk, yeah. You don't need to breathe. I'll call out. Hello. Where you hear am whispers I? all around you. Here, 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 here. Tons of different like voices calling you from every direction. Do I have my equipment? Yeah, you have stuff. Okay, I'm gonna cast light on my shield. On the front of my shield. As and... you do, you notice that it doesn't look quite normal. It has like a almost that like there's faces in the light shadows of faces screaming at you in the light but it still works i am going to um cast sacred flame on one of the faces they are all just disappearing like tricks of the light like it's your light that you're putting out and you're seeing faces in it for a second and then they're gone and then so we'll go back to the other crew for now i wonder what where cole has gone he just hit the floor and disappeared myra crim did you see where the ghost children went Maybe Cole is a ghost, like the children. Uh, The ghosts, the children disappeared, and they're ghosts, and now Cole disappeared. So I think Cole may be a ghost. As I I speak to nobody in particular, uh, Midnight, what do you think about that? I think it's rather strange. I mean, Krim and Myra seem to be acting different. Cole just disappeared. Maybe the ghosts... Well, I don't know. I feel we are. I don't feel I know. We need to find a way out of here. Our time is limited, and I feel uh, our presence is unwelcomed here in the house. So perhaps we could gain some favor if we were to help these spirits out and find a resting place for them. Well, I had Krim collect the bones, and so he can carry them around with us, so he can put them into rest when we find a suitable right. spot in the dollhouse. I also saw a secret little passage in this room over here in the corner, right outside oh. the children's room. What? Uh, excellent, excellent, uh, great find. And uh, Chris will put his hand on her shoulder and say, uh, "Midnight, are you feeling okay? You, you, you had me worried there for a little bit. Are you okay?" Yeah, I feel fine. All right. Well, if you start to feel strange again, uh, let me know. Okay, uh, I'm here for you. Okay, I will. All right. Well, let's go to this passage you were talking about. Maybe those be able to find something of interest there and maybe our pass with with Cole will cross again. I'm really sorry for dropping him. That was not intentional. Well, not, not sorry for dropping him, but him disappearing. Try reloading I, Jess. Wait, I'm did you make him disappear? Yeah, I need to reload. Hold on. I don't think so. I was dragging him out, trying to help. You said he was faking. Yeah. I may have gotten a little upset and thrown him and let him I saw fall. that. Yes. And then this mist came and it disappeared. I told yeah, you so, those children yeah, were it wasn't, no good. It wasn't your fault. Well, I mean, they're nice enough. I mean, I played trucks with him a little bit and he seemed like a nice boy. I think they're just a little confused and scared. Um, but Nothing definitely... In this house is what it seems. Uh, okay. Um, I can't sure do anything those, about that, though. I'm pretty sure those children are ghosts because this was the room I felt the entities in. So yeah, I love that nobody's you're... noticed that Krim and Mira are just over there holding hands. Like, what's yeah, going exactly. on? Well, I did mention that uh, you were acting funny. So, Midnight, you're standing in front of a door here. Make me a perception check. Oh, that's a good I'm perception. Right here. Okay. So, yeah, you're getting, you're feeling drawn to all of these outside walls, except for this way. The, these ones seem to be ignoring you on this side. But all the outside walls of this chamber seem to be calling to you. Come. Okay. Can um. I pick a direction to move? I'm going to move north and kind of feel my way forward. Like so. Everything is dark around me on my token. I mean, it's you... dim. Super oh, dim. 
Uh, can you see anything past your token? Like I the can... whole room? You have light on your shield. You should have 30 feet or whatever. Have you reloaded the page? It might be that. He also yeah, has reload. dark vision, so he should see the whole room. Reload your page. Yeah. Do you act, does Triton have dark vision? Yeah, Tritons too? have dark vision according to the latest errata for their page. Yeah, so you should be able to see like everything in that room almost now. But yeah, sometimes you just have to reload Reloading. the page. Because anything that changes the lighting, you have to reload or it won't show up, it seems. Right, right, right. Gotcha. At least that's my experience. Well, try not to put yourself in a wall then, because that might make it again. Break it again. I thought yeah, we'd I'm be still ready. reloading. Oh, you you want to go back to them for a minute? And... You think it's going to be a minute? Oh, no, I'm back. Okay. Which way are you going? Which number are you going? Pick a number. Probably. Pete. If you don't know, do a random number roller. It's like a dice roll, but you can choose the number. <laughs> Six. Okay. So as you approach that amber coffin with a, sh a black snaky figure moving inside of it, you hear, Ah, pretty traveler from the far lands. When I roamed the world like you, all desires were within my reach. None could hide from me as my fire of darkness pierced the veil of my enemies and they fell before me expose who are you i am shambi amore the lady of delight um do you touch the amber statue how can i trust you Come, I shall show. Cole's going to back away. You have avoided traps. Is it the initiative roller? It is. Oh, there's a torch in here, too. Yeah. So what did I avoid? You avoided being attacked by something you did not see. Oh, so Krim gets to go first, but he's just going to hide um, and not do anything. Uh, he can't see what's going on exactly anyways. But then, well, I guess it does get a chance to do something anyways. The door comes at you. The door itself. It is a mimic. Oh, no. I got knocked out. Oh, man. Yeah, I'm unconscious. It's just 10 damage. Oh, just 10? I thought it was... Oh, because the... Oh, yeah. Just 10 I am... damage at level 1 is a complete health bar. It's almost, almost my complete health bar. I got 2 yeah. HP. <laughs> almost. So I'm not in the initiative roller right now. You oh. are the torch. Okay, so yeah, the, the door is stuck to you. Mm -hmm. Ability checks made to escape the... Gra you're, you're basically grappled oh, by the door. Oh, there it is. Oh. Is she unconscious? No, I'm she's not, got yeah, I got 2, two HP. HP. I'm getting there, but not yet. Tight so corridor, tight corridor fighting. Chris is up. What? Okay, I do that. I throw the dagger. Yeah. So six damage. Boom. Mira is going to. She's ten feet away. Yes. So she's going to shoot with her crossbow. I just want to go back to uh, Cole for one second. Cole, what did you do? I'm. Walking over to number five, which okay. is across from number six, and I'm going to say, do you speak as well? A curious fluid blood is, don't you think? It flows red, but it could easily bring death. I say it ought to be black. My gift confers you the power to make this judgment for yourself. All you have to do is accept it. And you will have the power to judge anyone in your own way. That is how I got to be known as Garas, the finger of oblivion. I'm going to touch number five. Okay. You are shot back to the same spot you were just in. Before you got ghost punched. 
and you are back in the house. Mist shooting out from around. 23 to hit, 6 piercing damage. Perfect. Plus 1 crossbow bolts, and I will... Do those disappear, or will I be able to collect them later? They're stuck in the door. If you go back to collect your stuff, you're going to get half of it back. As a bonus action, can I throw a quiver of arrows over to Chris? Yeah. Okay, so I'm throwing him a quiver of 10 of the magic arrows as well. Ah, thank you. So it's an athletics tech to, eh, check to attempt to break the grapple, or because it's mimic, I'm not allowed to? Uh, you are disadvantaged, and you are free. Your head unsticks from the door, and you see it just try to ah, 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 re-grab your, your tassel. <laughs> Evil free. door. Avery, Avery, Avery. Nice reference. Ray. <laughs> Where is it? <laughs> you don't see it? It's right in front of midnight. Um, then, yeah, I'm going to use my two daggers on it. Uh, that's a hit. 17. And nice. Then second dagger. A couple of wood chips go flying. Wait, do wood chips and come off of too. mimics? Or is it just mimic meat? Well, it's both. It's wood chips, but they're... Like, they're, they're this is like they're Schrodinger's, Schrodinger's mimic. They're meat chips. It is and is not a door. Seven plus seven. Nicely done. Taking quite a bit of damage. It looks like you've heard it a little bit there. It's, uh, it's definitely at least down a third of its doorness. Cole, give me an initiative roll. Now that you're back in the room. So we've turned this this mimic and from a full door to like a gabled door. So it's Krim's turn. Uh, he is going to... He has disadvantage, but he's going to try to throw some darts at it. He tried. He's going to hide behind uh, Mira again. Choo-poo-choo-poo, the mimic's up. It doesn't like the way that you attacked it, so it's going to... What are the mimic's hopes and dreams? What If it's... it could aspire to be anything, what would it be? It's going to attempt a bite on Avare. Well, it aspired to be a door originally. Ooh. <laughs> that hurts. <laughs> Did you guys hear about that popular mimic band? The Doors? <laughs> so yeah. Avery takes nine damage, five piercing, and four acid. And it is Cole's turn. As this door takes a chunk out of the... So the mimic is partly out of the door? Oh, it is the door. It is the door. Yeah, the mimic What's going the on here? I see it, and I cast Sacred Flame on it. Well, it's a deck save, oh, anyways. It's, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's right. So the so the door tries to open. It opened. And it opens. <laughs> door dodge. <laughs> okay. Or said nah. Chris, you're up. So uh, it's gonna push past uh, Myra and then uh, fire crossbow bolt into uh, what is left of this uh, quickly diminishing and splintered uh, mimic. Ten damage. Makes it a nice resounding Thud. bolt into a door sound. Just a really. Did I did I get it or did I just shoot the wall? Mira, as a bonus action, is going to look at Midnight and and say, uh, "Ezra, you can do it," and give her bardic inspiration. Yay! And then she'll shoot it with her crossbow again. So that's a twenty-six nice. to hit. That's a hit. For Oof. nine piercing damage. And that's two arrows. This door looks like it's breathing heavily now. It's panting. <laughs> it's buckled over. <laughs> Tired of dooring. So midnight's up. Let's see if I can whack this thing. I'm gonna try to add that T6. <laughs> Please be a six. I don't think that even hits still. I tried. It's worth a shot. Avery. 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 <laughs> She's going to do the double dagger again. Whoa. Oh. And that does not work. No, I don't imagine it does. Make that up for it does. very quickly. <laughs> that one did work. It doesn't look very good anymore. It's uh yeah, it's down to its last wind. Hinge. God it's damn it, this is hinge. the hardest door I have ever tried to get through. Ever. We'll, we'll do this together. To bite midnight. Please, no. I am down. Not dead, but down. 
Okay, it makes a bite and it bit hard. Six piercing and two acid. Pull. Bite. Bite hard. As as you see midnight plump and fall on her butt right in front no, of another door. No, Ezra! Crim's okay. trying, to, trying to see what happened. What? What? Hmm. I heal her. For nine points. Oh, that's really good. Oof. Thank you. It is almost full, yeah. I'm going to throw my trident of Persana. Does have the yeet ability. So it's going to be... Uh... Everybody duck! <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, once again, he levels a uh, crossbow and holds his breath, uh, squeezes the trigger, loosing a bolt. Oh, yeah. You see this thing? Almost, if it had arms, it would be trying to grab itself where the bolt hit. It's just... Uh... Is it trying to grab itself where I just shot it? That's so... Midnight. Myra, are you seeing this? Mira's going to load her... I can't believe I called my own character Myra. Um, Mira's going to load a regular bolt into her crossbow and shoot it. And... Uh, no. No! Now it's Midnight's turn. It smiles it's at you. <sighs> Close quarters combat rage. Scree! Okay, I believe switching your weapon was a free action or no? Uh, if you want to drop a weapon and take another one out, yes. Okay, I'll do that. Midnight just kind of pissed off the door, dropped her, is going to take out the big hammer. <laughs> the war hammer comes out. It's like, time to break, please. And please break. The door flies across the room, smashing into furniture, flipping over and landing over in the corner. It is not moving. Yay. <laughs> All it took was a weapon switch. <laughs> that is the end gonna, of combat. Gonna sheath the war hammer and pick my sword back up. I don't know about you guys, but I'm really tired. Yeah, do you want to just? We could just we could just stay and play in the room. I shoot the door again, <laughs> just to be safe. Is it is it is it dead? Did we get it? Thank. I think it died when I slapped it halfway across the room. How do how do we know it's dead and not just it, it pretends? Right, it was a door a little while ago, but then it it turned into teethy bitey stuff. I retrieved my trident as well. <sighs> Come on, where are you? Follow me. She'll hold her hand out again to Krim. Okay. I'm gonna poke the mimic. Is dead. Is dead? Question mark. Bite your Is finger. Is it dead? No, it's dead. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't move. Gonna... It's actually a really nice looking wood, though. So who's carrying the bag of bones? Crim? You with your barrel experience would, would be like, ooh, this is like exotic wood. <laughs> yeah, Crim's carrying the bag of bones currently. Midnight, do you see the grain in this this mimic? It's extraordinary. Uh, can you help me ply some of this uh, wood from its flesh? Maybe we can make a barrel out of it or something. She just smashes it with the warhammer again. Okay. <laughs> well, Kids at least we know it's dead for real. Well, better safe than sorry. Uh, so the secret passage that you found in the dollhouse, uh, where is it? Should, it should be past this door right here. Where this S is? Oh, I thought it was through the door. Okay, then this the door. secret. I'm just going to be like, and, retcon, it's here. Well, Krim's <laughs> waiting there and he's pointing at the door <laughs> while you guys are <laughs> walking around the room. Coral, where did you come from? We saw you fall into the floor and disappear Coral. in a pile of mist. <laughs> I'm so sorry. I didn't mean to drop you. I hope you're okay. I am fine. Where did you go, though? And then how did you just show back up? I went to a dark place, and I was given a choice, and I guess I chose correctly. Huh. Sounds like me in my early 20s. So, I feel like you in your early 20s made all the wrong choices. Hey, now. I'm still here, and... and uh, I mean, yeah, certainly I've I've made some mistakes, but uh, nothing a little prejudice, prestidigitation can't uh, can't uh, remove, right? 
Yeah. Gonna, you know, try the uh, way to the secret passage. Okay, as you move that uh, stone door, you hear it like creaking with the stone on stone sounds. And then mm-hmm. uh, a whole wave of like stench and stuff fills the room. It's old air that hasn't been released in a long time. And uh, you all sort of, you know, choking to, to just breathe in here for a minute to get used to this. Midnight is unfazed by this Un- breathing you talk of. <laughs> unfazed, yes, exactly. But everybody else in the Cole, room is... <laughs> Cole staggers a little bit. He clearly looks tired. Uh, well, uh, keep your head up, Cole. Uh, we'll find a place to rest. This is a house, after all. I mean, they have Maybe there's beds. somewhere to rest down through this stairway. Walk. Do we have to go now? Oh. Well, I think I think if we don't try now, we won't get another chance for a very long time. Okay. I could carry those bones for you, Krim. No. You don't touch the bones. So, and then I will kind of shout back, oh yeah, Cole, don't salt the bones ever again. That makes the spirits hurt. It's torture. The staircase that you're walking into? is mm-hmm. just covered in cobwebs and dust and you know you can see that it goes from what you can tell goes quite a ways down like st- almost straight down in a very steep spiral just kind of swat the cobwebs away with the sword make clear a better way for everyone so they don't have to walk into cobwebs okay so as everybody's walking down these stairs uh we'll say that everybody's kind of in the stairwell now As you enter, the last person enters the stairs. The door behind starts to creep and close shut. And then you start to uh, see a torrent of mist flying up from the from the lowest depths of this house. And as you you're like just bathed in this mist that's absolutely completely obscuring your vision. You can't even see your hands. You can't you're holding them up right in front of your face. You can't even see them start to see flashes of images like Cole casting his spell to boost Krim's AC and it really wasn't uh, a light effect that happened it was shadows he caught he covered Krim in shadows that um, danced around his body coalesced and then Midnight was uh, bending down to like do her lay on hands and cure the poison from from Mira and when she did, it was like snakes moving through and darkness and slithering forms, like a black ichor almost moving through her into Mira that made her wake up. And then like Mira's dissonant whispers was like she heard like sounds of tortured wailing actually happening when she did it. And you're 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 realizing that all this was happening and that this is like some sort of a magical effect that this house has on you. It's all illusion. The children outside must have been an illusion as well. You're you're feeling all this sort of knowledge, all this understanding come to you. In this moment of of heightened perception, you're starting to feel uh, bolder and stronger. Uh, All of a sudden, you feel like something knows you're here. And everybody levels up. Yay! Level two! Level two! As the silence, as the like, mist passes okay. and the silence kicks back in again, you can see everything again, but you now feel stronger. So we leveled? Yeah, You're level leveled two. Up. Level two now. What do I Can gain? we take a moment to appreciate the irony of going down a level in a house and going up in levels in our character? <laughs> I, that is a very nice juxtaposition. You feel like yeah. you have, as as you're passing down these stairs, you feel like you have just been granted a full rest, a level up. It's like yes. oh. something wants you to be here. And something, lovely. something is very happy to see this happening. That's how you know that there was an illusion over this house before, that, that everything was bathed in falsehoods. And up until now, you've been tricked by them. But this knowledge just suddenly came to you, has, has enlightened you and shown you the way. You now feel... Like you are a little more confident in where you're headed. And we're level two level now. Two. We we level two. Everybody do the level two dance. We're 100% no, just... stronger. <laughs> I have more HP. Yay. 
As you come down the stairs, you all felt that surge of adrenaline. And Midnight has to move a little farther forward to let everybody... Might be more this way, maybe? It's hard to see, even with torch. Okay, so Cole, you can give me a perception check. Uh, Myra, you you're, you're stepping on my heel, Myra. <sighs> Sorry. That's all right. We just got to be quiet, I guess. Yes, we definitely need to be quiet. Midnight. 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 Whoa. What do you Sorry. see? I just noticed something. What is it? I see hallways. I see a wolf. <laughs> where? Okay, so yeah, right where, where, when you say that, um, Krim grabs your hand and goes, whoa. <gasps> Where's the wolf? I don't see a wolf behind us. The wolf is looking over her shoulder. <laughs> Do I see the wolf? Um, there is a wolf standing in the stairwell. Ah. Hey, who's a good boy? Hey, hey. Who's a good boy? And I'm going to use, uh, um, I'm going to message you about what is happening. Ooh, okay. secrets. Chris and his secret Level powers. Level two. <laughs> I will figure them out. Whenever I use mine, I can probably just explain it through the power of Lady Ezra. Hello, uh, little little guy. Uh, what are you doing down here? <laughs> it Let's sounds, hear you bark. It uh, sounds like he's. Mm, you, you can speak, but he does. He's the only one who can understand you right now. Here, here, get get behind me. Mira's gonna pull Krim kind of behind her and switch places with him. Uh, Krim, I think this dog has her best interests in heart. Or, okay. Whoa. Oh, no. <laughs> all smacks does, a flea on his leg. Does, uh, does the wolf reply at all, or what is going on? Uh, can the wolf reply, Greg? Yeah, no. you can speak yeah. in wolf. Okay. <laughs> and only he can understand you. Yeah, only Chris okay. can understand you. Yeah. Okay. Um... Then you'll hear Avery's, um, then yeah, you're gonna hear Avery's voice, and she's gonna be freaking out because she's much shorter, and it feels it feels very weird in here. I don't know why. I feel like I'm sitting on all fours, and I'm strangely at your crotch level. This is not okay. okay. So you guys all hear Chris uh, speak to the wolf. He says, "Avery, is that you? Shake yes. your head, shake your head up and down if it's you. Oh." You're you're such a fine breed. Uh, look at you. Uh, your coat is marvelous. What coat? What do you? And she's gonna like look down, and, she, and then she's gonna start like like the the nervous dog panting, whining. Gonna start. Oh, she to, like, she needs to go outside. Going in circles. She need to go walkies. What are you guys talking about over there? I can't see what's happening. Oh, Avray turned Ooh. into a dog. A dog. She's I mean, like a wolf. Do you guys mean like earlier? No, she's right here. She's a dog. Can't you understand her? No, I don't speak dog. Speaking All I hear is clear an animal whining. All I hear is dogs barking. Oh, tell you what. After being on my feet for so long, my dogs are barking. <laughs> uh, Am I a dog? Uh, I'm a dog. Yes, you are. Uh, here, well, let me hold up this mirror. You're a very pretty dog, though. Um, why am I a dog? I'm not supposed to be a dog. What is happening? I don't know. Honestly. Didn't we already establish she was a werewolf or something? Yeah, when we found you, you were a half dog, half woman. And uh, so this isn't too much of a surprise for us. Um, but, to you? Uh, to me, it's yeah. it's kind of surprising to me. I well, think I would have known yeah, if I was yeah. a werewolf. Well, let me just sit down next to you, and we can just bark this whole thing out. We'll, we'll, we'll get through it. Uh, can you guys hurry up and wrap it up? We need to keep moving. No, she's going through something emotional here. She needs to, to process this. She's a dog now, and she'll probably be a dog forever. Yes, forever? and we'll be trapped in here forever if we don't keep going. <laughs> yeah, I want to follow Ezra. Well, what if we're all turning into dogs? Shouldn't we get a handle on this? I don't think anyone else in this group has lycanthropy, Chris. How do you know? How do you know she's a werewolf? 
she was Maybe a werewolf when we met her. She I was mean... a sleeping werewolf on the ground by a piano. Okay. Well, uh, Midnight says that you should get over yourself and that <laughs> uh, you're what a werewolf saying? and you'll just have to deal with it. So What is he saying? What, he's what, only, he's making barking noises. What is he saying? Do I wait? Do I understand them speaking common about me? You do. You do. You, you do. You understand common. Yes. Right. Yeah. Okay. You just can't speak uh, common. In, right. Right. Exactly. Now. Yeah. Oh yeah. So so yeah. So this whole entire time that I've been hearing them say this, and 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 Chris is attempting to interpret. Yeah, and I'm but I'm but I'm like talking back to you in, I guess, dog, in dog. dog. bark, 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 bark. <laughs> So sorry, it's just funny in my head. <laughs> um, she's gonna keep whining. I guess you'll just hear her start muttering about. Uh, um, well, I guess that means I did get bit. Oh, so you were hunting werewolves. That explains all the silver weapons and the fact that you told us that you were hunting werewolves last time we spoke. Yes, but I didn't think I got bit. Well, well, we'll have to look for a bite marks or something. I'm. I mean. Are you okay? Are you not going to go feral on us and start nipping at us? Um, I don't think so. I am hungry, but beyond that, I think we're all hungry because I don't all think right. we've actually well, eaten. I, 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 no, but... I think I got. I think I got something here. And, and do not hand me a piece of raw meat. That I am not hungry for. Oh, guys, I, I found some branching hallways. I think they have some rooms. I would. I would never, as he drops a piece of raw meat back into his bag. Yes, never do that. All right. Uh, anyways, I think we should move on. I think Midnight found something. Uh, can you smell really good now? Midnight, right uh, now you found, uh, because you walked into that little room there, you see a blank crypt door. Like these doors have been placed in place, but they're not sealed up. They're just mm -hmm. sort of leaning against <laughs> where they will go to seal. You could move it and seal up the crypt kind of thing from where it is. And one of them is, is blank and no name on it. And the other one says Walter. Walter Durst. It looks ahead, like sorry. it's carved quickly. I think it was a rush job. Yeah, the actual slab is very nice and the name on it is very rough. Guys, one of these little coffins says Walter. No, Walter. Walter. Was that the name of the little boy from... That was that... the name of the baby from the journal. That's oh. my brother. You hear Krim say that. Krim? You don't Walter. have any brothers you told us of. He's my brother, too. Krim, Wait. How old are Krim's you? His brother is here? Walter. Midnight's just kind of kind of looks Myra straight in the eye and say, what's your name? Uh... Would she say Myra? Would she say something else? She's DM stubbornly not answering you. Like, uh oh, if I if I tell the truth, I'm gonna get in trouble. Please hand me the bag of bones. It looks like she's worried about. What are you getting worried about getting in trouble for? She called Walter her brother. Krim Does gives you a mean? real evil look, Cole, when you say hand me the bag of bones. He he pulls it away from you and gives you a mean look. And uh, I use my newfound perception skills to see if I can hear her heartbeat racing. See, uh, see if she's getting nervous or something. Yeah, yeah, advantage on that. You hear an accelerated heart rate. Chris, can you still understand? Me? Well, I'm going to assume that he can, and I'm going to tell him that. Uh, what? What? What is it, girl? What is it? She Do you, do you hear oh. something? So yeah, she uh, she definitely heard an accelerated heart rate, and she was telling you about it. Okay. What's the dog barking about, Chris? Um. Well, you're li um. She's lying. Something. What? What's? What is bothering you, um, Mira? Nothing. I. I just. I. I want. I. I want to get out of here. Let's go. Yes, and can't get out of here until you tell the truth. So, until you do, we're just kind of stuck here. Uh, so, mm, it's all right. Nobody's going to get in trouble. Mm, are you trying to persuade me? Oh, here we go. Yes. She's back. Should Good. you guys do some contested? 
Guess whose baby unplugged their computer? So do you want me to do a deception <laughs> roll and him to do a persuasion roll? Because he's trying to persuade the lady? Greg? Um, sure, yeah, that'll work. Uh, deception versus insight? Insight. All right. Uh -huh. Well, even though I have a bunch of evidence to the contrary, I, I believe you. Um, all right. I give up. All right. I mean, I just going to kind of take the person who she assumed was Myra's hands and kind of just like look at her and then I'd say, it's okay. Tell me your name. Mm. Oh, no, there's nothing wrong here. Are you really Ezra? Your brother seems to think so. As you've been calling him. Krim is looking up at you like, like, really wants to find out if it's true. I follow the Lady of Ezra. So you're not... Guardian of the Mists. So you're not really Ezra? I spread the word of Ezra. I don't think that's the same thing. I'm like no. a disciple of hers. I don't feel so good anymore, sister. Yeah, me neither. Maybe we should just go back. Don't you want to get out of the house? It's really scary mm. down here. But and she'll she'll turn to to Krim and be like, "But but we we need to find Walter." And uh, Jen, as you're as Avare uh, comes down there, mm -hmm. you can see um, into the back of this crypt, a tombstone type thing here too, a crypt door sitting. And as you walk in there, you can read two more names on the doors. as Rose and Thorn. Uh, she'll yell, Chris, 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 Chris. What is it? Chris, Chris, The dog's Chris. barking again. Chris, Chris. Oh, wow. These doors. What is it? They say the children's names. Oh, by the light of Lanathor. Oh, this must be where they need to be laid to rest. Fellow adventurers. <laughs> I, I don't even know what to address you as. Uh, hey, the the we found a, a sepulcher f for these these children these these lost souls. I think if we intern the bodies here, it may give them the peace they look for. Do you want to find Walter? Yeah, where's Walter? Mm -hmm. He should be in this little coffin labeled Walter. It's been a very long time. Ha has it been? I mean, I will just like nod her head and say, we don't know, but we know the journal we found mentioning Walter and the Durst's art is very, very old. It's been forever. I mean, that you see in there now, as you move that out of the way a little bit to get a better, better view. And you see that uh, there's some coffins there that uh, have no, that their stones are on them, but they're um, just like off to the side just a little bit. So it's like, you can you know, it's not sealed up at all. You're going to hear in the background Flint striking on steel as Cole is trying to light a torch unsuccessfully right now. Cole needs a torch with his special eyes. I have my vision. Can I just take like five minutes and pet Avare? I think she's a good dog and she needs pets. Uh, The minute they, well, not the minute, but maybe... The second that your hand comes towards her, she's going to be very upset about it. And she's going to be reminding you that, that she is not a dog. I am not a dog. You did not pet me. You did not have permission to touch me. Okay. And she's going to be very worked up and very anxious. Consent is key, Chris. Consent is key. <laughs> you're going to get nipped. All right. I take those chances and I try scratching her behind the ears. One okay. point of damage. <laughs> she's going to nip you. <gasps> <gasps> <laughs> oh no, that has very bad consequences. <laughs> Ooh, did she draw blood? I don't know, do, do I need to do a, I a roll? My, I pulled my hand back and it's like, all right, all right, you don't want to be petted. That's that's fine. So it's like kind of before the nipping happens, you just go like yoink? Well, I mean, I imagine the ears get laid flat back and the eyes get a little you, bigger you and get the fangs the, you see come the, uh, out. Yeah, you I'm see like... The, uh, Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. You make a good argument there. Uh, uh, I, I can respect that. If I got lycanthropy, would I be a blue dog? 
You don't. Would he be a fish dog? Would he be a fish dog? You don't know anything about that. I've kind Very of gotten little. us off track. What are we doing? Here, poochie, poochie, poochie. <laughs> Crim, <laughs> could you, could Let's you hand up... me the bag, Crim? Yes, I'm. I'm opening the doors. Let's. Uh, give okay, so away. midnight just asked Crim to give her the bag. Oh, midnight asked her. Yeah. He's gonna look at uh, Mira and that, like for permission. I would like to do an insight check on midnight. So Mira will look at Crim and be like, "It's okay." I, I think I think she might not be Ezra, but she looks like Ezra, and I think we can trust her. Krim, you can see that he's got the uh, the doll tucked in mm -hmm. into his pouch, and he pulls the doll out and looks at it, and then hands you the bag of bones. And then Mira will hold her hand out to Krim again. Midnight will kind of take the bag of bones and like kind of hold it protectively in one arm while putting the shield in front of her, so nothing happens to them. Is going to kind of try to like shuffle through everyone, try to trade places to get to the back where Chris said the coffins with their names were. It's like, a, excuse me, pardon me, excuse me. And then she gets to the dog, Av Avery. And midnight. Destroy. She doesn't like. She doesn't like being petted. Midnight. I tried. I I don't want to touch you. I just. Can she understand me? Yes, of course. Yes, I of just, course. I just need to get by. Excuse me. Wait, and after... wait, I'm kind of blocking her a little bit. Um, oh, she's standing right next to me. Oh, okay. Yeah, no. Mid uh, for midnight? Yeah. Then, yeah. Um, make a perception check, I guess. Because you have the bag in your hand. Almost. Ah! <laughs> Almost. So He's going to ruin everything. Cole starts to burn the bones in the bag. <laughs> Did, do we see him burning the bones? And when that happens, Krim shakes I set a little the bit. bag on fire. Do I see, like, see the bag on fire in my hands, or? Yeah, no, it's definitely, you, you've noticed it now. Uh, it's starting as to As soon as bag. I notice that bag's on fire, I instantly dump the bag. Mira and Krim come back themselves, and you see the ghost children standing in the hallway. Like, if the uh, bones are still on fire when I dump them out, I'm going to use my Everyone, pouch I, of I... water to... I think I Coral is. Them. I think Coral is possessed. We need to put him down. I point at the ghost and I said, "You killed me," and then I turn undead. You undead, what? you say? That you sounds like undead. I. I need to. Sm I like. I need to smite you. Rose, uh, the girl, is going to reach out towards you, and uh, while you're trying to do these uh, burning the bones and such, um, you're gonna have to make a charisma save before you can. Do all of your things that you're trying to do at once. Talking to me? Yeah. Yeah. Are you and, talking to and at me? At the same time as she's doing that, Thorn is going to attack you. So before if, Thorn yeah. hits you, Rose takes over your body. And uh, you no longer feel like hurting anything. Is this before the bag gets ignited or as I'm dumping the bag is the ignited, ignited bag? You dumped it out. I have on the immunity ground. to possession. Immunity to possession? Clerics get immunity to possession? Not really. <laughs> okay. So, yeah, I'm you're, a cleric. You're I now shouldn't possessed. be able to be possessed. You're now possessed by a ghost. You have a trait about you now, and you cannot alter from this. And meanwhile, Mira's back here, and she's, like, looking down at herself. She's looking at her surroundings and going, where... How did we get here? What what's going on? Krim is like, what what what? I, I don't know. What happened? She'll Hold notice up. that she's holding Krim's hand and be like, oh, sorry. It's, uh it's okay. I think you two were possessed by the children that led us into the house. Uh oh. Coral has attacked them and Coral. they are planning to kill him. So Nope. Um, but he's just the standing there. I don't I have no idea what's going on. Let's just relay these bones to rest so we can move on with our lives. As some uh, extra precautions, Midnight's just gonna douse the bones in water using her water skin. And you uh Why do you have and... a water skin, Midnight? Do you do you even drink water? For people who actually need it. Oh, unlike that's Yeah. Oh, for like holy water. All right. I sorry. I digress. can't have my companions. All right. Dying. Let me help you with that. I'll help scoop up the bones. Uh, all right. No, no. Put the bone down, sweetheart. No, it's not for chewing. Not dog toy time. 
Come on, give it back. <laughs> so uh, once once midnight kind of douses the bones in the water, she'll kind of pick them all up and, and instead of having the shield up in the hand, she'll have like a sword in her hand and says, no one touch the bones again as her eyes are kind of more like red now because you're starting to see maybe seeing a pattern all right red eyes everybody red eyes warning eyes moon <laughs> ring robot has spoken all right she'll kind of just kind of start marching through and just kind of points into that room you said you said that's where the coffins that's, were that's where they are the doors are labeled and you, she'll see just the, start. you see the ghost of thorn standing in front of you here and he's saying Sister, in here. And uh, he's calling towards you, Cole. I'm not sure how I act when I'm possessed. Not how Do you I were just to... acting. Currently, you are uh, possessed by the spirit of Rose. So you would act like Rose. A.K.A. how Mira's been acting for like an hour and a half. Uh, like defensive yeah. and protective and not trying to light the bones on fire. Yeah, like now you're doing the exact opposite of what you were just doing and being like, whoa, 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 whoa. put the bones out. They've got to be safe. <laughs> Give me the bones. Give me the bones. She just handed them over to Midnight to put to rest. Oh. <laughs> yeah, because Midnight is now in possession of okay. the doused water Do I got to talk like a girl too? <laughs> no, you've still got your coal voice. Okay. So, uh, which one is uh, this one? She called me over, so I'm going to go over there. Rose or... and Thorn are down here, A and B, or the top and bottom. There's no coffin in there. Um, mm -hmm. There's no, like, real place, but you, you see Thorn just go in and be like, I like it in here. He just sits in the corner, starts playing with his doll. So, Midnight will kind of arrange Rose's bones in, like, a nice little order to attempt to lay them to rest here she'll like take out a little sensor and a little holy symbol she'll pray over the bones and start trying to you know oh, here, exit the room there's an extra this foot is, in there let me just get that i'll put it with the other one is this is the little boy's bones this is the little girl's one the little girl's that bones, i'm currently yeah. in the one that's possessing you I'll take the others to the uh, other sepulcher and inter them there and uh, kneel down, spreading them out in a ritualistic uh, respect and begin to pray to uh, Lanether for their peace. Cole walks out of the room and then stops being possessed again. You see no, the no. bones uh, of both children. Chris, you see Thorn's bones. Uh, the spirit sort of moves into the bones again. And then the spirit form disappears. Where's my torch? Midnight's going to quickly close the room to the sepulcher and stand in front of it with a shield and sword in hand, barring any entry. And just like assertively say, you will not burn these bones. They and killed me. You, hear like, you are torturing spirits. And then they possessed me. Because you burned their bodies. It's not an argument, Cole. It's a, it's a, it's a, it's a line in the sand. You I mean, dry breathers do not understand. This cannot go up without being avenged. And Mira says, "They're children." If I were in the Siren Sea, they would be disposed of properly. You're not in the Siren Sea. This is disposing of them properly. They deserve this, a proper burial. This is how we bury people on land. We do not burn bones. We do not destroy the bodies. Doing that torches the spirits worse than you can imagine. Have you dealt with the spirit of a human? Pirates are human. That is not a pirate. That is a small child it that you have tortured have grown twice. Up to be a pirate. You have tortured the soul twice. You should not be a cleric. <sighs> yes. <sighs> Midnight, uh, you feel a presence of like a voice in the back of your head that says like, thank you, Ezra. The spirits are at rest now. Let's keep going. See what's else in here. She kind of <laughs> just tries to leave the corridor. Mira's not going to leave until Cole does. Okay. So Chris, you see, oh, geez. Just jumping right in there, eh, Chris? Her eyes return to normal. 
Mm-hmm. All right. Paul is just staring Mira in the eyes, like. <clears throat> and Mira will look at Cole and be like, "I can do this all day." Before, uh, sorry. And before, I... aren't you supposed to be holding Crim's hand? What's wrong with that? It feels nice. Go hold his hand. What's your passive perception there, Chris? Ten. Okay, so you don't see it. Uh, you're standing right in front of something Fine. that comes out and attacks you while you <laughs> while you move there. Um, Cole turns and walks, follows along. Mira's going to follow closely behind. You've been targeted, Chris. Uh, you st- this this thing's waiting for something to come right where you were, you just walked. Um, so it's it's called a Grick, and I don't know if you've ever. Oh, I just know this thing's called a Grick. Seen a Grick before? <laughs> yeah. Probably ugly, like all but monsters. This is what it looks like as it reaches Ooh. out towards oh. you from the alcove there. Oh. That looks. Sticky. So does it I think we're in a gross. Grick house. Does the Grick hit? The tentacle attack is a nineteen. Tentacles that which don't means do that it can actually oh. pull you in for a second attack, and that does the first one does eight damage. The second one with its beak, oh my god, does another eight damage. Stop rolling well. <laughs> yeah, that is a that is a good roll. Uh, so that was its surprise on you. You wandered into like the one spot <laughs> Great. where you couldn't stand in that room. <laughs> Never leave without the party. As it bites, the mists that had kind of been following Chris around react violently, exploding into a sh- uh, bl- uh, icy uh, blast, and it takes eight points of, co- of cold damage. Nice. Nice. You just hear him shout, there's a Grick in here. I know exactly what it is. <laughs> Throw it out the window. Yeah, go so ahead. I hear Midnight. Chris yelling. I'll move here to try and see where he is. You guys have been hearing as you have been uh, moving down farther, especially where you are, Chris. Oh, that's not creepy at all. So it, it was coming before as well, but it's getting louder now. That sounds like a big chant is going on somewhere. Let's try and smack a thing, because I don't know what that is, and it's creepy and gross. And needs to die. Oh, yeah. So Mira sees Midnight dash off, figures there's trouble. She'll pull out her rapier along with her crossbow. And 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30. And she can't reach with the rapier, so she'll shoot the Grick. 25 to hit. 7 piercing. It's not looking so good anymore. Krim. Oh, wait. Uh, so Krim's going to run in, and he is going to get there and do his quarterstaff attack. He gone bonk. Boom. Yeah, so it's two-handed, but he ends up getting a chunk out of it. But he has another bonus attack, so he'll do that Yay. with his talons. Unarmed strike. Oh. That is not a bonk. I'm going to use my crossbow on that thing. And I missed, I assume. 12. 12 is a miss. Yeah. Grick, you're up. <laughs> <laughs> Grick, you that's get a you. snip snip. Oh, wait. It's like, oh, wait, that's me. <laughs> hey, guys, I'm Grick. <laughs> <laughs> wait, was this an NPC? So, so um, come down here for a little snack. He'll do his multi attack <laughs> as well on, on Chris again. Disgusting. Um, and the first one hits. Even more disgusting. It's like slashing. Great. What's its uh, dexterity? It's... it's dexterity? We rolled the exact same number for initiative since it's a dead tie. It's Isn't plus two. Like a... Plus two dex. Mm. Mm. Well, I have plus mm. two as well. But since my name starts with a C, I should start before it. Okay. <laughs> Just because. Uh, yeah, I will let you go ahead. Go. You okay. can go before I'm going to the... take the disengage but and then I'm going to move back. If you miss. <laughs> Oh, okay. You disengage and yeets. I was gonna say if you miss, then it's it that counts as a roll then. But excellent. Um, I was gonna ask you to move next turn anyway. Okay, so the Grick is gonna come out of its hiding hole and make an attack, and uh, might as well attack Krim because he's not here to defend himself. 
14? <laughs> that is a miss. Crim's... It's like, he's a monk. That's Crim, a miss. <laughs> Crim just flaps up a little bit. He just, like, flaps big... his wings all over the place. Kya! Avaray. 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 Um, she's just... She's still freaking out being in not her normal form. So she's gonna come up here as far as she can come. And... She's probably just gonna hold her action in case anything comes her way. She's kind of freaked out, so it seems like you guys got everything under control for the most part. Okay. Top of Midnight. the round. Top of the round with flanking. Yay. Midnight's up. It's slopping around on tentacles that aren't able to hold itself up, and as it does, you chop the tentacles up from underneath it. It flowers on the ground. Its beak is still moving, but it's slowing down and eventually the girdle stops. The grick is no more. That was gross. That's what funny. kind of food source would a, would a grick be considered? Is it plant or meat? It's calamari. You see, uh, Cole, I, I've had extensive experience with gricks, and that's why I knew exactly what it was. Uh, they are indeed related to sea creatures, uh, squids, I believe, and uh, it's unusual for one to be in a basement like this, but, I mean, we've seen nothing but surprises so far, so I think it uh, could make good eating. I was yes, asking yeah. because I do eat seafood. This looks like something that you um, might have wanted to eat if it wasn't in a basement full of dust and cobwebs for what could be hundreds of years. All right, do we still hear that chanting? Yep, it still comes around every once in a while. Can You're I certain? tell where it's coming from? Yeah, can yeah, can I use my keen hearing? Yeah, from down this way. All right, guys, I think we're headed in the right direction, but also towards danger. One thing you guys did notice that at this point that you wouldn't have seen Immediately. Mm -hmm. You're standing in the room that is on your picture right now, actually. Mm -hmm. <laughs> on that table where the skeleton is, is dumped against, uh, you, you see a book. And it looks like a log book of some kind. And as you as you thumb through it, I guess Mira, you're there, and Cole, you're there, so you guys can see. It has a whole bunch of um, descriptions on like people's names, where they're from. So it says, like, Morgan Jovenail Decapitation. Felicia Wright stretched with the rack baythorn stone fist 1000 cuts irvine wimplefoot spike through the heart and just keeps going on and on and on this is brutal she's right here mm-hmm i think um I think some really bad things happened here, which I know we kind of knew from the journal, but... Um, yeah, the wife was murdering people. Yeah, it's a, it's a little strange because it's very well documented. Almost, I don't know, almost experimental. Were they making something out of the bodies? I don't know. But whatever it is, it sounds like we must put a stop to whatever's in the basement, maybe, to let us out. Meanwhile, Cole whispers under his breath, burned bones can't be raised. Oh, oh okay. Uh, yeah. Dirty 20. Uh, 16. Dirty 20. Okay, yeah. So from, you can smell that the air's a little cleaner this way than it is this way. It smells very foul down this hallway here. So you guys are going to hear her whining and trying to start heading this way. And she's going to tell Chris, it smells much better up here. Whatever whatever is down, it's much, it smells much better this way. Whatever is down in that door, it's just like everything else in this cursed house. It's just, it's awful. I'm sure it's nothing good. Avery says go this way. Isn't that opposite the way of the chanting? Yeah. Well, I trust her nose, well, so I'll follow her. So we oh, test one you. way. If that doesn't provide anything, we go the other way. All right, Avray, I'll follow you. Go ahead and lead the way. Okay, I'll start going this way. But it's, it's more of like an anxious, like, I just want to get, get out of here kind of thing. It may not be, I mean, yeah. Okay, so as you go up those stairs there, Okay. there's a little uh, short staircase that goes up. Mm -hmm. And, yeah, when you get to the top here, you have a T intersection you can choose from. You, you hear the chanting down here again. But you see 
There's absolutely no footprints in this hallway. It still smells better heading this way. Oh, there's no, there's no bad smells. There's not really that many bad smells coming from this side compared to the staircase where the chanting is. Yeah. Okay, she's gonna keep coming. Miro's following behind. Still following. Briss, are you coming or not? Yes. Torch. And she's gonna get down here and she's gonna do like another like sniff in the air. <laughs> See if there's anything weird coming from this room, or well, there's just a, there's that well there. It looks like um, at the bottom of it, it looks like there's probably some still water at this point. Uh, it hasn't been pulled up or anything in a long time, but there's a bucket sitting in the water, all rotted out. You can see there's a bunch of little side rooms that must be sort of like beds for people that stay here. Probably these cultists you've heard of, this cult. Maybe they have rooms down here. Who knows? We should take a moment to turn over these rooms, see if there's anything valuable here. Uh, yeah, I I mean... As far as you can tell, there's no exits down here, but it looks like uh, people were staying down here. Uh, the, the mattresses are rotted out and the chests are fairly uh, are decayed, right? but there are chests that are uh, in each of these rooms. I Does open it? the one in the room I'm standing in. Okay, uh, you find that it is locked. I smash it with my mace. You've got some rage to work out, it's fine. Yeah, I'm like, wham, 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 kill the kids, wham, wham, wham. <laughs> yeah, it roll. Oh, I got a roll? Okay. Yeah, why not? You're attacking something. It's my whalebone mace. It's, it's a, a six. six. Yeah, so uh, Cole's having a fun time. He'll eventually get in there. Yeah, Mira will go ahead and open this one, I guess. It's locked if you have thieves tools or an attack. And you can get in. Depending on Mirals how hard. Are a thud. Uh, Mira will try to cut off the lock or pry the lock open with her rapier. Okay. Gets right in there, uh, in that in that room there. Uh, you find eleven gold and sixty silver pieces in a pouch that's made of human skin. That's gross. Can I tell that it's made of human skin? Well, does it you feel like your skin? Can't tell, but it. Yeah, you can. You can guess. <laughs> I'll just leave that there. Human um... leather. Yeah, so pretty sure. Take the money, leave the pouch. Um, I, I'm. If you want to take the money, go through. Mm -mm. You can have at it. I think Midnight will try to see what's in this chest here by bonking it open. Okay, as you do that, Cole, you finally get into yours, and it's a black leather eye patch with a little gem in the middle of it. Oh, really? Yeah. The gem kind of looks like a skull. It's kind of shaped like a skull. And Midnight, you definitely get in. It's got a silver short sword. Oh, that's neat. I'll take that then since it's silvered. As you see that uh, pull out there, Avery, you uh, take a step back. I do what now, sir? You take she, a step she back because they pulled out a silver sword. Silvered sword. Oh. <laughs> Yeah, so she's already, so yeah, Chris is like trying to get her to calm down, and she got, like, did like the nervous like dog, like sitting and then getting up and pacing, and now she's just back to pacing. I mean, trying Mirror to... Mirror will turn to Chris and be like, is is she okay? Uh, no, I'm not nervous. okay! But all you hear is dog. She, she's, she's really nervous. Ooh. She's telling me she's not okay. Um, She really wants to get out of here. I mean, like, just kind of turns around with the silver I'm... blade and says like, what's going on? Um, I think I think we need to try to get out of here. Avray is getting really nervous, and that makes me nervous because you would be nervous if you were a dog. You didn't know it. I'm, Again, she all you hear she's not a dog. Well, I think that might have been as much news to her. I think we might have been less surprised by that news than she was. 
I, I didn't find any exits and I, I just found creepy things that I, I don't want to take with me. Um, so, uh, unfortunately, and she'll kind of look at Avery. I think we need to go follow the chanting. Kron's going to notice that nobody went up to this room and he's going to try to open that chest. Do you want me guys, do you guys want me to, uh, attempt to sense the evil that's down here again, since we're closer? I Maybe can smell the evil. <laughs> I yeah. think that if you can, can you determine what type of evil we would be doing if you do that? I'm guessing ghosts. I will know if it's a type of evil. I should know. I mean, it might be helpful to know what we're probably going to be facing. I really don't want to, but yeah, it'd probably be helpful. You're not going to like it. Midnight will briefly have a little white glow as she's using her divine sense to try to see where and what type of evil is down here with us. Where normally she would have a white glow, she was expecting a white glow, Mm -hmm. it's actually more of a shrouded figures of shadow mixed with the light. And you see things passing by that, you know, it's playing with your imagination and with your very soul because you're, like, affected by this magic when you do it. It definitely feels off. Below you, another level below you, there is serious evil. Now go, okay, one level below us is some, um, a lot of evil, and down that corridor that we didn't go, there is an undead presence. Okay, Meryl turned to the rest of the group. I mean, do you guys think taking care of the big evil will let us out, or do we need to clear the whole house? It might be the big evil, and the smaller evils are just manifested from it. So do you think think we should just head down find the stairs down i think it might be by the stairs down since we heard the chanting coming from that hallway yeah i mean what do you guys think i think there's only one way to go and that's forward well let's try to find the stairs down i'm constantly walking into danger but that's fine she's murmuring again this entire house is danger all right let's go all right, nice. so we'll continue to follow Avre. Oh, I was going to go towards where I was sensing the stuff. Does she seem to be going the same way? Well, does her senses seem to be coming the same way that the bad smell was coming from? Yes, because there I did detect a singular or like an undead presence coming down right. the smell bad hallway, and that's kind of where we have to go. Right. It seems. Yeah, she's gonna she's gonna pull herself together, and she's gonna be saying, "Okay, you can help. You can do this. You can make you can make the best of the situation." And she'll start leading back the way that she smelled, if that's more helpful. Like try to lead the group. Yeah. Make way for the wolf lady. Okay, so wolf. as you're right there, your passive perception's high enough that you see uh, in front of you, there is a trap on the floor. Right here, there's a trap on the floor. And so you can get around it by, you know, nimbly walking around. And like do like a cool wolf jump over it. If you hadn't done that, Midnight was going to fall into a, a spike pit. <laughs> oh, <laughs> cool. Well, then she's going to do... So you could do like the wolf jump off the edge? like a, Yeah, like a exactly. Matrix. Yeah, yep. Matrix wolf. Yeah. Like do a little, kind of like little, do a little bounce off the wall onto the other side of it. Wolf parkour. Right. And I will just kind of <laughs> just see that the wolf avaray kind of avoided a spot in the floor and will do the same while they were searching the room, could I have taken a short rest? Yeah. You would have had, yeah, because that's about 10 There's minutes. Beds in so, there. yeah. I mean, I would kind of say, watch this area. It's, the wolf didn't like it. So, try this one right here? It. Yeah, try not to hit that. The wolf didn't like it. All right. Well, I can't go anywhere until you guys move. Keep going, Avery. We so, need when you room. passed by that corner there, you do need to make a stealth check. <laughs> A stealth check. Okay. No. Uh oh. Thirteen. That is uh good enough. That's yeah. nerve wracking. All right. All right. So she'll jump over there. All right. Uh, she'll turn back to Chris and I don't know if you heard, but don't step there. Wait until I move forward and then step where I am. All right. Thank you. As everybody goes down, I think the only person who's going to notice is going to be Prim. Because <laughs> his passive perception is so high. So everybody gets down a little bit more, I guess. 
But when Krim gets to here, he notices down the hall that there is, uh, he says, oh, shh. And he points down the hall behind you guys, and he sees uh, an undead creature lurking the hallway down on the end. My senses are accurate. He says it, it, it looks uh, very, very dead. Let's... Oh, let's you. Let's try to be quiet and just not draw its attention. Okay, so as you come down to this room here, uh, you snuck past something very creepy upstairs, and you're happy to not have to have fought it. And... Uh, so in this, the ghostly chanting that you guys have been hearing is a lot louder now. You're starting to be able to even make it out. He is ancient. He is the land. And so this ghostly chant seems to emanate from through this uh, open gate here. Basically, there's a 20-foot um, room here with little alcoves and you see in each of these alcoves it seems to be that there's like a a relic or a treasure or something placed like spiritually placed coal actually you would notice that it seems to be a religious placement of I'm, artifacts i'm not in there yet well when you are in there which one looks the most valuable do any of them were any of them consecrated or desecrated because the divine sense would have been able to pick that up on the items if they were no, there's a large mummified bird claw with like sharp talons and it looks like an aracocra hand. Um, or crim. It's, it's <laughs> on a loop of rope. Uh, there's a knife carved from human bone. There's a dagger with a green piece of glass cut into it to look like a gem set into the pommel. There's an eight inch diameter varnished orb made of a Nothic's eye. There's a cloak made from stitched human skin. There's a desiccated frog lashed to a stick looks important a clear glass jar full of dried bat guano a taxidermy figure of a raven with its wings ripped off a six inch tall wooden suit of armor that looks exactly like midnight an iron pendant adorned with a devil's face a shrunken shriveled head actually dozens of shrunken shriveled heads that are bat heads uh, hanging together on a small rope and a small wooden coffer containing what looks to be a dire wolf's tongue. Me. And there is a jug that looks very interesting. Avery knows. And Midnight has a pretty good idea. That's a jug of alchemy. Oh. Pretty wow. jug. Down this area here, there's a grate that uh, you can see is sort of stopping this water from... Um, like debris and stuff from going through. It's like basically it's a if there's any water it runs down into here. And there's like a portacullis on the end of it. And uh there's also a, another way down into this labyrinth over here. Midnight will uh, point out the armor and just exclaim, Why does every suit of armor in this place look like me? <laughs> and then she'll also point out the jug and she'll point out then say, That's a jug of alchemy. I think it definitely worth coming back for that but i hesitate to remove it right now midnight's highly considering because you know a good chunk of us know what it does crim's already picked up the uh aarakocra hand and he's like trying to you know does anything happen as he removes it from the pedestal no he's playing with it trying to put it around his neck maybe well, it seems safe to remove the objects. Nothing has happened. All right. Krim, that, that seems a little macabre for you there, Krim. Does it? <laughs> yes, because that would be like me wearing a human hand around my neck. He takes Bid the thing will... off for a second and he hands it off to you then. <laughs> and I will kind of go to the jug of alchemy and, I, you know, wait, pick it up. Wait, let me check it to make sure there's nothing that could go off. I mean, I kind of just retreats the, her hand from the handle. It's like, okay. For I would like to respect. check the pedestal with the alchemy jug for traps. Absolutely no traps. <laughs> All right. safe? I, th I, I think so. You see that this is sort of like a place where these items might be stored. Mm. Like uh, a storage room. This doesn't room. look like a... It looks like a, like a holy storage room. It doesn't look like th this is a room that they would do anything in, do anything with these in, but they're being stored here for now. Midnight's okay. gonna take 
the jug and put it in her bag. We could use this later. It could help us help, well, help you guys stay, uh, I guess, refreshed. This should be the term. It can produce many types of liquids. All right. That seems like something worth holding on to. And she'll just Probably. put it in her pack. Not like the ghosts need it. They're probably all useful in some sort of way. Cole is taking off his backpack and saying, I say we grab everything and just I'll, I can carry it and maybe we'll need this stuff to get out. Crim's already shoving stuff in there. <laughs> I mean, that kind of just wants to look at the armor and just try to see any comparisons with her. Um, yeah, no, it kind of it looks very similar to you. And actually, it's like a suit of armor that's standing on a little pedestal. Mm-hmm. And you see on the bottom, it says, um, "Is no fun, is no Blinsky." No Blinsky. Is no fun, comma, is no Blinsky. B l i n s k y. B l i n s k y. Prim, do any of these have inscriptions that you're grabbing? I uh, didn't read them. No, I don't think so. Can I see one and take a look at it? Yeah, there's nothing else that's really um, okay written on or anything like that. Whatever Krim didn't grab or someone else didn't grab, I'll be shoving in my backpack just in case we need it later. Yeah, that's okay. a good idea. Just in case right, you need a right. cape of Copy human skin. what the jug can do. <laughs> we, we are greedy people who see things that are shiny and we take cape of human skin who can resist that's too <laughs> close to necromancy a lot of this stuff is is a lot of the stuff is very necromancy except the alchemy Mirror jug doesn't hear it. the alchemy jug's probably like the safest item in this room well they've been so doing they that ever he's ever has been down here like just keeping an ear out an eye out a nose right. out so. down here was covered by like a tall grate that we can't pass it's like a slide down that you would do if you wanted to go down that way it would be like a slide it's more like just a, a gradual slope actually it's not 15 feet but um Chris. you could probably get back up but it's like slick with moss and there's a porticullis at the bottom like a iron bar door how high is the water look down there it's hard to tell it's all black and murky but it could be deep it could be not at least a foot and i will kind of continue on where the others are gathering chris um yes you're a little pale skin there i think this cloak would probably match your skin tone it look <laughs> good on you oh thank you oh there's a few faces in this um i i don't think this would really do much to keep the wind at bay oh oh that's just to keep people from uh, um sneaking up on you Ah, well, that's thoughtful of you. I appreciate the effort it took you to to think of this. Anything else? Uh, Yeah, I would like to ask you a question. I was wondering if you could maybe explain to me why you humans or dry breathers, whatever you people are, why do you not burn the bones of the dead so that they cannot be raised again? Some do, some don't. Uh, What we had here was just a situation where... Uh, the spirits did not want that to happen. And since they had such a strong footing on this plane, uh, I think they made a good argument. Midnight will kind of just turn around and say, because it's literal torture of the soul. Only until they're totally gone. I'm glad this is a good discussion. If it doesn't hurt, it's not helping. I mean, I was kind of just going to ignore him at this point, just keep walking. Yeah, exactly. <sighs> All right, Mira's going to come up to Avre, even though she can't understand anything Avery says and she'll be like well, what's down here what what do you smell uh 18 perception check this is really dusty uh cobwebs everywhere you're hearing Krim walk along what sounds like crunching and then Krim starts to realize what he's walking on too it's not just like old dirt or anything these are he's he's walking on piles of bones uh quite a few bones are sitting in this hallway and these look like cells with piles of bones inside of them as well. Looks like possibly even hundreds of corpses have been Guess brought. Guess we know where this. they kept the people. There's uh, so guys. much death here. Yeah. Said Do you Krim. see a way out of the room or is that just a dead end? And as you say that, Krim's oh. like, oh, um, you mean like there? He, he points out to what looks like a piece of stone wall that can move. Oh, that's stone wall. And as the wall moves over as you push through that doorway you come out into a, another room here and this is that room that you couldn't you could see through midnight there's a sort of a pool here around um what looks to be maybe an altar of sorts 
How deep does the pool look? So the chanting stops as you move into this room. All of a sudden, it's quiet again for the first time in a long time. The smooth masonry walls provide excellent acoustics in this room. You can hear yourself breathing if you're a perceptive enough wolf. Featureless stone pillars are supporting the ceiling, and a, a breach in the west wall leads to a dark cave heaped with refuse and moss and stuff. Um, maybe even body parts in there. Uh, murky water covers most of the floor, and stairs lead up to uh, the, the dry stone ledges that are hugging walls. So basically just this perimeter. And uh, there's rusty chains with shackles dangling from the ceiling directly above the stone altar. And the altar is carved with hideous depictions of grasping ghouls and stained with dry blood. Sounds like that needs to be bonked real hard. The water is about two feet deep now, as you can see. There's a crank on the wall here, yeah? And you can only assume it's connected to that gate. I'm going to take a rock and just throw it into the water. See if anything comes up. No, seems to be plunk. still water. It, it It's like the first time that anything has moved this water in a long time. It's sort of sludgy water in a way. It's all brackish and not something that looks appetizing to Cole to swim in. Well, I guess uh, this is what progress looks like. Uh, do we see a source from the chanting? The chanting stopped on the, the end of the room, I think? The abruptly stopped, yeah. But we don't see like stands anything. or uh, anything that could have been producing it. No. All right. Well, I guess I'll go over here and take a look at this altar in the middle. Eat in the water? Solution through the water. Yeah, it didn't look too deep, right? I, I threw he a rock in there. He said it was about a foot. And... He said it was two. about two feet. Yeah, yeah, two feet. So if you're taller than two feet, you can walk through it. As you yeah. step onto the altar, you hear the chanting continue. Midnight's gonna walk towards the altar as well. Do you guys hear chanting? I hear chanting. Uh, n- no. One must die. You see shadowy figures. Um, there's 13 apparitions that sort of float around, or appear around the room in the perimeter around the room, right beside you guys, even on the wall there. They're flickering in the torchlight like they're not really there. Each one of them is like a black-robed individual, and they all keep chanting, one must die. Uh, well, we've had two die, so uh, I think we're good on that. Who must die? Keep saying one must die. But uh, who is the one? I'm not sure it discriminates against who dies, but I don't want, I don't think we should you know, sacrifice ourselves to creepy chanting on is an altar. There... Midnight, do you see anything on this altar here? See anything? Yes, on this island altar. Is there any magical, ritual, religious... I think that would be a check because divine sense does not work like that. And I would have to use another charge if I wanted to detect anything. Could do a religion check. I could. I guess I shall... Do religion check for any religious objects and symbolisms on the okay. altar and the pedestal, or at least try to. Yeah, even with that, you can put together between the chanting and your knowledge. They're asking for the sacrifice to be a, an individual. So, Midnight will just the say... one must die. <laughs> one must die. Midnight will say, well, it seems to get, to get whatever benefits they were attempting to achieve down here, someone has to die. And I'm Grim. not sure I want those benefits, whatever they may be. While you're discussing that, I'm going to pull out a seaweed food bar, all plant, and see if the wolf wants to eat. Uh, she's going to come up, and you're going to notice that she's been getting just more and more anxious. And she'll come up to you, and she's going to attack you. trying to feed her looks How like she rude. transformed again you dry breathers are so rude and as you are trying to feed her right in front of you you see that she's actually turned into from a wolf into a human wolf hybrid don't and... bite the hand that feeds you bad dog how could you jen 
She'll roll 20s. Oh, a five. That a one, one says no, but that 19 says yes. Okay, so seeing the transformation, I'll yell at Avre. Uh, Avre, are you still you? Yeah, both of your vicious uh, jaunts out towards Cold Mist somehow. So yeah, yeah, that happened. Hey, what are you doing? She's going to keep going after you. And we are in initiative. Okay, one must die. You hear them chanting still. One must die. They might be even getting a little more excited. Uh, shout out. It, it's not her anymore. Something's happened. And uh, I guess I'll shoot with a crossbow. And these are magical bolts. So you get shot, Jen. Mira will turn to Chris and say, you don't know that. Um, it's possible that she's just scared. And she'll be like, She'll turn to Avery and be like, Avery, stop. You don't need to attack us. We're not going to hurt you. And cast Charm per Person. Avery needs to make a wisdom save. So. so that passes. Yeah. So you shake it off. Still keeps going after Cole. So one, one bite and one claw. The claw hits, I believe. Yeah, so Cole, you are slashed with wolf claws for four damage. As long as he doesn't get bit. Oh, scratching won't do it? Looks like it has to be a bite, according to that. That's every That's turn. The turn. Yeah, midnight's up. Midnight will shout, Don't kill her. That's what the spirits want us to do. Restrain her instead. And Midnight's going to use her movement to get behind Avare, since that's just enough. Going to attempt to grapple Avare. Okay. So contested strength checks, I believe. I hate Ooh. NPC sheets. <laughs> I can try. <laughs> Almost. So she wiggles out. Oh, you're up. Okay. I cast command sleep. But question, because she's an elf. Yeah, so you're immune, immune to that. Immune to, immune to magical being sleep. sleep. Immune to magical sleep. It, it, well, it's a magic, but it's not magical sleep necessarily. I think you'd still uh, have to make a saving throw, but you won't be able to sleep right away because it's not magical sleep. So you're just going to like try to close gonna your eyes for a second. Gonna lay down and try to sleep. But wisdom save. Um, so she's going to sit down and try to like, you know, find a... Okay, I guess I'll try to sleep. And she sits down against the wall, closes her eyes for a second. How long does this last? It says duration one round. So it wears off after a round, I believe. Yeah, so she's not sleeping, but she's trying to sleep and confused. Actually, I can move away from her. I'm going to move over to here. Uh, so Krim's going to, what are, what are we doing? And he's going to come in slowly and be like, I'm going to attack her. <laughs> Wait for anybody to stop him. He wouldn't, did he not hear a midnight shout, don't attack her? That's what the spirits want us to do? Because she shouted that on her turn before she moved. Okay, so he'll hold off. And she re recommended restraining instead of attacking, since that's why she tried to grapple. Uh, he will try to do a grapple. Yeah, so Krim has put a grapple lady. on the wolf lady. Or he's grabbing her, and Chris is up. Okay, I hold my action uh, to fire the crossbow if uh, she wakes up, uh, or if she attacks somebody. All right, so Mira is going to take a bolt, and she'll actually... <sighs> That's going to be like a couple actions. Uh, she's going to take one of her magical bolts and she's going to stick it on the end of her torch, hoping that to heat the metal. And then she's going to fire it at this pile, hoping that there's like some kind of like rat or something inside that might count as a death. Oh no, no one ever listens to the walking armor. So 14 to hit. You're arrow goes into a dark pile of debris right. and it hits the the pile of debris she can't because I should have done melee first it's fine she'll step over there close to the altar you're on the ground and being held by Krim this is the turn where you sit down and try to sleep so then I don't really have a turn this is where you miss right. your turn yeah okay. yeah it skips it Midnight's got it up. now there's two things I could do and both of them are very drastically different but I think I'll use my movement to get up here to where the altar is, take out her sledgehammer, well, not sledge, but the warhammer, and kind of look at Myra and look at the altar 
trying to like signal what she wants to do. Oh boy, this could either do something really good or really bad. She's going to bring the sledgehammer or hammer down on the altar, attempting to break it. Okay, so you do a little bit of damage to the altar. And upon doing so, you start to see or hear a, a rumbling from the oh, back. Oh, that's the thing Myra shot at, Mira. I was just hoping it was a rat. It is not a rat. It still says one must die. Yeah, so the altar isn't fully broken yet. Paul is going to move over and use his mace to start bashing at the altar. It's like, you can see that this thing is pretty solid. Midnight did like a minor chunk out of it. Now is it with a war hammer? With a war hammer, yeah. Your your mace, uh, it if, doesn't if do there's... anything, basically. After you tried it, boom. It's very, okay, very tough. Okay, I was right there, right? Well, no, you've then attacked gonna... with your mace, but you found out that it's not really doing anything. Pretty useless. It's not hurting the altar the way Then you I'm going to move over to these, this crank over here. That's what I That do. would take an action to play with the crank. Uh, <laughs> so okay. I wait till next turn. Yeah, before you can play with your crank. <laughs> Krim is up. <laughs> he is going to... So what do we do with this? <laughs> and uh, he'll turn around and see that thing there. And... Isn't he grappling her? Yeah, but he can still throw a dart at the thing behind him that's moving. And he'll miss. So now... It's the thing behind him's turn. So this thing, this pile of gross actual flesh, all kinds of bodies sewn, stitched together. It starts shambling towards you. It moves actually a little faster than you guys might have thought and couldn't come up 20 feet. It, Whoa. yeah. I'm so glad I moved. It's going to do a multi-attack. Oh no. It's going to use its blinding gore and that sounds gross it spits blood and gore at a point within 15 feet of it and uh it's going to splash midnight with uh a bloody gory thing dc 14 dex save please oh no and for everybody all the three of you dc 14 dex save because you're within five all feet right. of midnight i'm not <laughs> Yes. Not, not oh, Chris is. Oh, 14. Yes. <laughs> so, Chris, you're blinded until the end of its next so turn. So am I. And so is Midnight. And then Can it's going to make a slam you? attack on Mira. Can my hand... Six bludgeoning? Six bludgeoning damage on Mira. And one and thing that you guys notice now, something else was moving with it. And so anything within 20 feet of it has to make a... Technically, everyone can't. Everyone has to do the thing, I think. Yeah, you're all stuck where you are, pretty much. Um, Unless we make the save. Before yeah. you before you run, or before you move. You Chris, have... it's right in front of you! <laughs> so you have speed, you could move, but you can't see anything. I'm gonna disengage, and then go to there. Okay, Mira. You can see, you are all right. terrified. Mira is going to swipe at it with her rapier. Sixteen. Yeah, sixteen to hit. Uh, sixteen is a hit. Yes. All right. So you see that actually you stabbed into a leg that's twitching off to the side. Uh, it stops twitching as fast. So that was piercing, and then because she successfully made a one-handed attack. She's going to shoot with her hand crossbow at no disadvantage. So that'll be six piercing. Please tell me that's a tail hanging down between its legs. It is. Okay. A tail made of it's body not, parts. It's not the nasty. <laughs> and um, I can't really move without doing an opportunity attack, which would probably kill me. So I'll stay there for now, which will also probably kill me. <sighs> Okay, Avery's up. So this is technically like the, the hybrid form you said, right? Yeah, you're, you're werewolf now. Okay, um, then she is going to... Uh, oh, uh, Cram has me grappled, right? So I need to try to break that. You're on the ground, so half your movement's used for getting up, and Krim has you grappled. Uh, I'll just attack him. Poor Krim. 
You're going to feel bad about that if he comes back all sad. Yes, but as we have learned, death is not permanent here. You've imagined that you've learned something. Yeah. Maybe. Death has not seemed permanent so far. Uh, Bodies disappear and bodies come back. It was actually beneficial. Is Avery completely feral? Or is there any sort, sort of intelligence in her eyes? I don't think anyone's tried to figure I tried that out. talking to her. Yeah, she didn't really respond to you. The first one, the bite, doesn't succeed. But the five slashing does go through. And Krim's like, what the heck? In bird. I feel like somebody's going to die. <laughs> We're in a tentacly situation. <laughs> We're about to show everybody why this is called Death House. <laughs> In our mm-hmm. last session, our, our PCs uh, all met the ghosts of the two eldest Durst children, Rose and Thorn, and the kids have been locked in their rooms by their father, who promised to come back for them, but never did. They waited there helplessly, and eventually they starved to death, their skeletons clutching each other in the middle of the room on the floor. This is how our PCs found them. And Thorn was carrying a stuffed doll, which had an eerie resemblance to Midnight, our paladin of Ezra. The PCs learned that this doll was some sort of facsimile of Ezra, and the children seemed to trust her more than the other adventurers who had stumbled into their room. And the ghosts of these children were able to possess some of the players and try to keep them from leaving leaving the kids alone again as they were convinced that this is their last chance or their best chance to get down to the basement and find out what happened to their mother and father and their baby brother, Walter. Uh, Cole, our Triton cleric of Prasanna, tried to pour salt and oil on their bones and burn them, believing this to be the best way to lay their souls to rest. (laughs) The ghosts of the children did not appreciate this action, and the younger brother, Thorn, reached an icy hand out to Cole and stopped his heart dead. Cole dropped dead, and his body was transported to a dark, mysterious temple of some sort, surrounded by giant amber blocks that contained black, snake-like spirits writhing and calling out to him with whispers and promises. This was the same place that Krim was transported to, but neither of them wanted to explain their experience to the group, and so they were unaware of their shared experience together, so... Uh, After choosing the gift given to him by Nagranus, the Hand of Oblivion, Cole was returned to Durst Manor, and the party uh, found the hidden entrance to the basement they were searching for. They ventured down into the depths of the house and found the cultists' quarters and eventually uh, some more information about the fate of the Durst family. They have learned that Mr. Durst was mostly ignorant of this whole situation, but was guilty of adultery and had a child with the nursemaid, Margaret. Mrs. Durst had tried to accept the child into the family, but her shame was too great, and while Margaret was pregnant, Mrs. Elizabeth Durst began a cult that sought immortality in an attempt to stop her aging and retain her beauty. They sacrificed anyone they could lure into the house with hopes that they would be granted the same gifts as Strahd. Mr. Durst was alerted to her crimes by a letter he received from the warlord, stating that the cult's actions were chaotic and pointless and would only lead them to further suffering. When Margaret's bastard child was born, Mrs. Durst finally snapped. She killed the nursemaid, stuffing her body in a trunk, and took the infant to the basement to sacrifice it. After some further debate about how to lay the children's bodies to rest, the party were able to get them safely to the family crypts and place them into tombs with their names already engraved upon them. Cole, angry that the children had attacked him, again tried to disrupt this burial process by lighting the bones of the children on fire, but Midnight was quick to stop him, and Rose possessed his body, and the children entered their tombs and Chris performed a burial rite, hoping their spirits would find peace. Our adventurers have now come across the altar where the cult did their evil work. Being in such an evil presence, Avare, who was played by our guest star, Jen, awesome, last week and the week before, uh, who was recently bitten by a werewolf and has been fighting against that change, finally succumbed to her curse and began to turn feral as her new werewolf form emerged fully. After attacking the altar, they were able to draw out the creature that lurks there still, a shambling mound of corpses, 
body parts grown together unnaturally, all lumped together in an amorphous mass of grasping and twitching limbs that are trying to hold on to anything that comes near it. So now the party finds themselves fighting on two fronts, with Krim grappling the newly turned werewolf and everyone entangled by the fleshy tendrils reaching out from this horrifying creature. As they come out of the water with grasping fingers and hands holding you all in place. Midnight has been blinded by the monstrosity as it spewed its thick bile-like gore out of a giant mouth lined with teeth that look like broken bones. That's where we left off. <laughs> and we are well armed. Turn order. Boom. Is that working for everybody now? Clear as day. Mm -hmm. It is actually Avaray's turn, the werewolf, and... She has been grabbed by Krim, I'm, and as there's everybody... explosions, I'm hearing explosions. Yeah, this might be the wrong, uh, the wrong thing. And here. gunfire. <laughs> like we're storming Normandy. I mean, can I have a gun? <laughs> that would be super handy right about now. Silver bullets, anyone? So yeah, Avery, who's been turning into a wolf, a werewolf, uh, in the midst of this terrible place. She's not really in control of her actions anymore, and Krim and the whole team was saying, like, you know. Hold her down, stop her, you know? I was saying throw throw her it into the monster. Let the monster cheer her up. <laughs> well, there were some debating opinions, I suppose. But uh, <laughs> overall, the uh, they decided not to attack her and instead attack the altar. So she is now um, frustrated by this whole situation and getting angry. She's going to try to break out of your grapple. Six. Aha. Uh -huh. Okay, so she's not breaking out of your grapple. Um, that's her turn. Midnight, you are up. Since yeah. I'm blind, I can still assume everyone would be in the same... I would just assume everyone was in the same positions I last saw them in? Yes. Okay. You can assume that. I would like to assume that. Don't stab me. <laughs> I'm not going to stab you. <laughs> There's water all over the ground, so you can feel... You know, you have some sort of idea of where you are. I think first I'll try to save against the tendrils to see if I can move at all. Strength save. No, I cannot. And the hands grab more hands than you were expecting or grabbing your legs. Okay, so since she can't move currently, she will point her hand to the last place she saw the werewolf and use cast command and just say the word approach. Then after she casts her spell towards the werewolf, she'll just say plan B, kill the werewolf instead. So I believe that's a save the werewolf has to make. I think it's a DC 13 wisdom somehow because she's so full of all this rage and strange emotions she's not able to listen to your command Cole is standing beside a, um, a crank wheel and it looks like it would control this portacullis that has blocked them from exiting this room or entering this way it's your grapple by the floor by the grasping tendrils do we really have to kill Avery well she was an ally of ours and I don't think it's her fault that she changed do what is, your character would your do. Your character has six seconds. You have a... Would Cole kill her okay. or would he not? If you want to quickly say something I'll like... I'll shoot her with a crossbow. You're going to shoot the, the werewolf? Yes. Okay. I like how you had that internal struggle, but on my turn, I'm just going to throw her into the monster. <laughs> That's a, a hit, so give me some damage. So your crossbow bull hits her in the back, and she doesn't really move very much. She just... Ah! Uh, Krim, you're up. Oh, and just oh. one second. Let me see if I have a bonus action here. Um, yeah. Nope, I don't. Okay. 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 I'm gonna try to free myself from the grapple. Um, strength save. Strength save, DC 11. You're free to move. The, the, the grasping hands are wet. I'm gonna fly. Well... 16 feet up, and then bringing the werewolf, then I'm going to drop the werewolf. Uh, so she is no longer held by the tendrils either, or grappled either, but she has been dropped on the mound. So the mound and the werewolf both take five damage okay. as they collide um, into each other. Awesome. And Avery, I'm going to get her to make a deck save. Easy deck save. Yeah, that's good. She lands on her feet. Okay, so the shambling corpse mound. It's still got 
Mira grappled in front of her. It's gonna open its mouth, its wide jaw just ripping and tearing the flesh to become even wider. You can see as it's opening its mouth, the, the teeth are all made of broken bones like femurs snapped in half, and it crushes down on you. It tries to engulf you, but does not. So I'm gonna fire an Eldritch Blast at it. Uh, actually, uh, no, I'm gonna stick with a crossbow. It sort of gets lost in the in the mix of body parts and deflects off. It almost did find purchase, but it did not. All right, I'm gonna swipe at the mound with my rapier. Oh. That's a crit! Yes! Nice. nice. All right. All right. Um, Hi. 10 piercing. Okay. Education, though. And then because I hit it with my rapier on a melee attack, I can shoot it with my crossbow with the magic bolts. Oh. Uh, 10 to hit. Uh, no. Hey, Avery the werewolf. Uh, she's going to start running back this way and run towards this door. Does she still count as a person? Or is she a beast? Or she a monstrosity is technically a werewolf, so at one point she can be a human again, <laughs> or an elf again. Sorry. I want to. I, I, never mind. I'll just talk to him about it on my turn. Um. So yeah, she. You can see she's like, "What is this?" You know, like ah, and she pulls away from this thing, as it as she does so and turns her back on it. It decides it's going to attack her again, and it slams a fleshy fist of bones and arms but it misses and the water splashes everywhere she dashed away okay midnight boy let's see if I can get out the grapple one more time oh no boo yeah so you're stuck in place let's still see is there anything I can do How's Myra looking health-wise? I mean, she's pretty bloody, but, like, standing her own. Keep your sword. Not using the sword. <laughs> Don't keep your sword. Throw your sword. <laughs> I because not wanting to lose weapons in the mound of disgusting, <laughs> I'm going to put a hand on Myra's shoulder and give her five of my lay on hands pool thank you yay i'm so squishy guys cole is um frustrated he saw avery run out through that doorway which i assume closed behind her she just left it i'm gonna lift my arm my hand and point at the creature next to crim and i am going to cast sacred flames on it and i'm gonna say the lord rebuke you it does not save Ooh, I did so much damage. So it's gonna fly down and then it's gonna try to prone this thing. <laughs> can you prone a mount? Let's find out. Uh, you can sure try, because I don't know. <laughs> I don't know if I should even roll this, but it's immune to prone. <laughs> oh. And it beat you. <laughs> It, it it's almost looks like it's um, some kind of gelatinous cube almost, but it's made of body parts. It roils, oh. it moves, the flesh pulsates. It's flesh it jelly. Moves. It's it's a bunch of body, it's maybe 50 corpses all piled together, rotted, but then reconstituted. So just absorb my kick and I'm just gonna stay there, um, hovering, that'll end my thing. And the corpse mound will again attempt, I suppose. It's going to try to recharge its thing first, though. Oh, no. It does not. Yay. So then, yeah, it's going to do its uh, giant bite attack and try to engulf again. Mira, you does are grappled and bitten. Yep, yep, that hits. So two psychic? And no, you don't take any psychic damage yet. Uh, at the start of the mound's turn, you do. But right now, what happens is yeah, you, you've been picked up by your feet, by this mound. So your whole head, your arms, everything, you're, you're standing like this. You get swallowed by the whole thing. And you feel your ankles and your feet being grabbed by the teeth and held in place there. And so what you see 
inside of the thing is so I'll put it in your journal right now. Lots of nasties. Hey, Davy, I'm Santa Claus. <laughs> you found my magical kingdom. <gasps> no. <laughs> so you're that engulfed by terrible. this giant mouth Come full of jagged, with us. broken bones, and your your legs are restrained. With your arms free, you can struggle against this creature as it pulls you deeper inside of it. So this is what Mira sees inside of the corpse mound. I and don't see anything. He's not showing us. What Mira sees. Oh, oh okay. Because she's swallowed and you're not. Um, Mira, it looks like you're having a fascinating experience. Care to share it with us? So right now, you don't see any of that, but you hear. What, you, what you're hearing is very disturbing to you, and you're starting to feel it inside of your brain so Chris seeing Mira's legs sticking up through the teeth of this <laughs> fleshy corpse you're up her legs are kicking <laughs> <laughs> uh, strength save to move yeah DC 11 move. I will roll that I'm really good at strength nicely done so. and then is it difficult train through the water it's two feet deep so yeah uh, I'm going to use my action to free Myra. Mira. Mira, Mira, Mira. You can assist her. It's like I should just change her name. <laughs> On her turn, you could give her advantage to escape. But, uh, with the way she is held in this thing, you can't just pull her out. I do that then. Thank you. Do I hear a muffled? Exactly. Mira, you're up. Um, I want to... Uh, in her head she's going I'm so sorry but she's going to stab the baby with her rapier okay um baby you can see that there's something attached to the back of its neck mm -hmm. and it looks like as that thing moves Oop. around it does too so 20 to hit 10 piercing and then shoot with crossbow oh that doesn't hit you see that as as you do that attack that thing holding the back of its neck definitely looks like it's lost some of its integrity the head itself seems to re be repaired but what you've done has definitely hurt the creature i assume trying to get out would not be included as movement it would be an action right correct okay um so yeah i the should have thought about that i'm sorry avaray's turn and she is Still I guess she likes it in there. Drifting it. <laughs> she wants to. Yep. She likes the fleshy feel. Yep. So the werewolf is, as far as you guys know, had enough time to escape this area. Come on, dice, please, please. Yay! I can move. You can move. <laughs> Would I be able to skirt around the edge of this platform here to get behind the creature? Yeah. There's enough of a ledge there that you can make it not difficult terrain. Up until the time you're behind it. Because I would like to try and get an advantage on Big Boy, because I'm seeing some lines here. Yeah, you've got a flanking advantage there, with Chris. I would. At least. I would like to kill <laughs> this thing eventually. <laughs> okay, come on, Longsword, please hit. Come on, Longsword. Longsword said no. Longsword said no. And why, uh, Longsword? Why? At least you didn't lose it in the corpse mound. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Okay, Cole, you're up. Cole is going to try to break free by twisting his body in ways that only people from under the sea can twist. <laughs> Let's do the underwater so, twist. Under the yeah. sea. Under the sea. Ah, these dice are killing me. <laughs> so Cole is dice stuck jail in for place. them. There's a kraken tentacle on Chris's screen. You missed it. It, it was kind of tabby colored. There it is. Now it's gone again. Yep. That's the cat. Oh. oh. Precious oh. baby. Did Maybe Cole break time. free or not? I, yeah, Cole, no. Cole has not broken free. Up. And then this... there was a cat. In order to move on your turn, mm -hmm. you have to try to break free, but you don't lose your turn for doing it. Okay, 15, then I am going away. to cast Sacred Flames on that creature. 20 on the deck save. Nat 20. Oh. It figures. Wow. <laughs> the save was at 12. I cry internally. I finally get <laughs> good damage and he saves. I'm going to go here and then attack it with my quarter staff. Sure. Advantage bonk. 
17 bomb? 17's a hit. 11. Oh. 11 damage, nice. Corner staff seems bonus to action. go into the thing and break a bunch of bones as it does. Bonus action, Talon. And 23. At advantage, that's a hit. Seven more damage, wow. Nicely done. Okay, so now you're gonna have to make me a save, Mira. 17, okay. lucky 17. Uh, so you've saved and you you uh, avoid your brain being torn apart by screams of this thing inside. And uh, it is going to... It needs to roll a d6 quick. Let's see if it gets its thing back. Oh. It does! It's going it has to, do a multi -attack. to pick a direction. Oh no. It's going to do its blinding gore on, I guess, Krim. And so everybody within five feet of Krim has to make a DC 14 deck save or be blinded. Oh. Can it hit I itself? I just got rid of it. <laughs> no. It just got rid of the blind. Yeah, you did, but... <laughs> so no. you're blind again. It's going to do a slam ah. at Krim Dex as well, because it just hurt him. Is a 13 hit? No. I like this. Miss. Okay, so... I will take a step back. Well, actually, let me roll my strength save first. Zero! I stay there, and okay, no, I no, stab no. it. Ten. So roll that again. And a 13 hits for okay. six more damage. Um, so I'm just going down to town on this thing. I see like a leg dangling. <laughs> and I just grab the ankle of it and I just chop it off. That's exactly it. And then now I'm really confused because I'm holding a leg. Awkwardly hold it and I just drop it. Like, <laughs> All right, how do I get out of this thing? The wiggle, wiggle. As the uh, thing I thought you wanted to wiggles stay. around inside, <laughs> uh, you, you can try to make a... It's going to be a strength athletics uh, check here to get out. Uh, we'll the DC, take the athletics. Because you've injured this thing once there, the DC is a little bit lower, but it's pretty high. That's not quite yeah, enough. Don't think, mm -mm. You try. She's trying to get out now, but... Your feet are fairly pinned, so it's difficult to uh, even imagine doing that. But as you, you could feel that as you did what you did before, uh, it did release you more than trying to get out did your last turn was more effective great and that's my turn come yep. on i want to smack and Straight i want to shot. smite i must smite please crit, crit, crit. no i don't i jinxed it yeah you did <laughs> you didn't knock on wood first that giant baby is surrounded by evildoers cole quick kill them the giant oh. corpse mound is surrounded by enemies. <laughs> Save it! <laughs> the mound, uh, it's danger. I'm gonna try to break through. How do you know there's a baby inside? Only I can see it! It's covered in... Okay. Oh, you got it. Made okay. me waste my nat 20. Chris, Chris did it. Okay, so you heard Mira. There's a baby in here. Well, of course there's a baby in there. There's like 30 people all stuck to the outside of it. I, uh, I mean... There's a lot of people here. Cole, you heard her too. I heard too. You heard okay. there's a baby in here. <laughs> Wait, is and, it and... okay? Does it, do you want me to pull you out? Are you coming out with it? Whoops. It's creepy as hell. I'm going to move up over to here and I am going to use my whalebone mace on it. He would have a vantage, I think maybe, or no? I won't need it. Oh. oh, look at that. He didn't need it. <laughs> he was right. Five more damage. And and um, my bonus action, I can't really tell if Mira is taking damage because she's inside that thing, and I guess that's the end of my turn. Mm -hmm. Yep, bonk and slash. One bonk. 17 hits and... Nine bludgeoning. It's starting. You can see this thing starting to slowly move a little jiggle. slower and yeah, jiggle a little more. Uh, it's got Chris grappled as well. It's going to attempt to engulf Chris as well. When did I get grappled? Every right. turn, there's always hands coming up to grab everybody. So if they want to move, they have to uh, Roll. make a strength check I, to move. I thought they were tentacles. It's grasping tentacles. It's a flesh version of a tentacle. I mean, Grasping hands and grasping tentacles is the difference between a horror show and a hentai. <laughs> well, oh, it, either way. Oh, you're not wrong. It's, it's going to. That's a hentai. Wrong. 
It's going to try don't to tell him, you. don't break his head. Anti is a type of uh, dramatic art. Let's see here. Kind of want to jump in its mouth just to see the baby. The bound can only have one creature engulfed at a time. Oh, well, I and guess Myra's it's still in there. Out, oh, spits out Mira and grabs Chris then. Oh, hey, Mira, I'm glad you got it. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> Wait, he changed uh, his mind. Hit the baby. What? What, baby? Oh, my God, there's a baby in here. <laughs> I'm gonna, I'm gonna, um, I'm gonna sing. Uh, I'm gonna clap my hands together, and I'm gonna go, baby shark, do 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 do, do <laughs> baby shark, do 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 do, baby shark. Does it sing along, or is it? it does yeah. Not. Do, 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 do. Oh, okay. And I was like, well, you it's obviously in pain, man. have no sense of humor, and I'm gonna stab it in the face with my dagger. Okay. Baby, baby killer. <laughs> Oh, it's okay. Myra does it, but when I do it, all of a sudden, I am I am a villain. All right. Um, okay, so you can see it definitely recoils, and that um, thing holding onto it, onto it, the back of its neck or back of its head, is wiggling around even more. You see its body limply moving around inside of it. It didn't like that attack. I'm gonna shout, uh, Mira! Uh, grab my ankles and pull me out. I'm gonna grab this thing. But wait till I give the word. All right, I'm gonna Blanking. do what Chris said. I'm gonna grab his ankles and get ready to pull when he says so. Then... You have a firm, masculine grip. Well, you know, Oof. it's all that sword play. <laughs> <laughs> you can tell because uh, Touché. between the two of you guys attacking this thing, it doesn't look like the thing in there is held on as strong as it was when you first entered. Midnight, you're up. Come on, smite, please, for the love of God. No! I, oh, wait. She just screams. Advantage. Smite, you. Smite, damn you. Six extra in radiant. All right. And you see this burst Team of energy damage. fly out from this thing as the smite takes hold. What are you doing out there? I hear explosions. I just got my sight back. Oh, <laughs> are you okay? You see a smite blade uh, I'm appear. yelling at myself. Chris, are you okay? I've been better. Chris just sees this smite blade, though, appear right near him <laughs> as it kind of carves through the creature. <laughs> He's like, whoa, that was close. <laughs> I grab Chris by the ankles and pull. Nope. I kick him off. Ah. Oh. <laughs> Do you, that means you kick both of us off. Now just him. I have very sensitive ankles. I know who's who. <laughs> He only and wants I, Mario I, touching his ankles. And I, and I shout, I need to grab the baby first, then you can pull me out. <laughs> okay, I'm going to ready Is that myself a... to pull him out. Okay. You can grab my ankles. I consent. Is that a warlock <laughs> class trait? Um, I consent. An ankle sense? It's learning ankle consent. Sight? Ankles are my patron. Ankles. Blind ankle My sight? patron is ankles. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. It's a Victorian era god. While Goddess I'm waiting, and... though, I'm going to take off his boots and tickle his feet. <laughs> Cole, uh, uh, wait. Uh, my, Mira, your your hands are so soft now. What happened? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, you're holding your action. Crim's up. Much oof. Okay. Same thing. Bonk and slash. Bonk and slash. Bonk and slash. 16 and 17. Two hits for 11 damage. Yeah, you can see this creature starting to sway a little bit, and it's its turn again. At the start of its turn, Chris, you take a DC constitution. 14 constitution save, or take five psychic damage. Mira, you've already heard its cry, so you also would take the same save. Thought I was free of that. Now that you've heard it, it's easier to hear. Mm. So I take so that's five, five psychic. psychic damage. And Chris, DC Must 14 constitution save. Oh. So Mira's... It, and it's the start of its turn, so it's crying. And... So Mira's ears and nose and eyes are starting to bleed. She's not looking so great. My Mira... ears are still plugged with the viscera of the creature as it sucked me in. Do I take any <laughs> damage from the cry? Not... You no, constitution you save. save, you pass, so you, you're good. It's oh, okay. going to do its um, multi-attack, and it'll do two slams... Uh, one on Krim, who's been hurting it, and then one on Mira. Krim and Mira. Hit, I'm, I'm down. Yes. I can help. 
Chris, you're up. All right, uh, we ready to action to help pull him out, right? I'm guessing he grabs the baby. That's what I'm doing. I'm gonna grab reach out baby. and I'm gonna grab it. All right, okay. then you gotta single us. And then I think I take one fail that save, don't I? Oh, you're down, Grim? Yeah. You would only fell. just, he felt him. Grabbing the baby inside of it. And, and then just, they're pulling him out. And they're going to pull me out. Everybody make me strength checks with advantage. Everybody involved in the pull. Because Cole's helping as well, uh, it was enough between the two of them that this creature, actually what I can show everybody now is, boom. Ugh. So you see this baby come out with Chris's hands. There it goes. Oh, that's disgusting. So that was what's being held inside of this thing and what they have been hearing crying and so as the baby is pulled out chris is holding it it's its body is like all of the liquids have been drained from it only its head is actually alive everything else has been sustained from the creature as you can see that that tendril that was in the back of its neck i take my dagger and i'm gonna stab it right between the eyes like i'm gonna hold it in my (laughs) hand and with a look of just sorrow and empathy uh I'm going to lift the dagger up and just drive it right between the eyes, trying to put okay. it out of its misery. Oh. Nothing should be kept alive in that state. Well, because it's a dagger in the head, yeah. The baby stops crying, but the corpse mound is still moving. Well, that's a problem. And it is Mira's turn. Okay, is the baby dead or did it just stop crying? I mean, obviously it's kind of undead. Is it still moving at all? The baby has stopped moving. It hasn't dissolved or nothing's happened to it that shows anything else, but it stopped crying. Is the thing still attached to its head? The, that's what Chris and you were able to rip out. The tendril is like the mucusy tendril came. It's not like an umbilical cord or anything. Yeah, it's a little bit like an umbilical cord. No, is there an umbilical cord? Well, that's what you ripped out of the back of its head, and it was attached to the creature. That's so... kind of in the wrong place. Cast right. fetus to fetus. <laughs> I, I was going to, um, I'm going to go to Chris and, and say, hand the baby to me. I give her the baby. And I'm going to take the baby over to the altar and put and it I on the altar. Take my hands and... Okay, so, kind so of it's like, I'm literally place. like, Chris is here. I'm grabbing it from Chris and then right. I'm turning and I'm putting the baby on the altar. And I'm going to shout to the voices that we hear chanting, are you happy now? This poor child. They are not, um, nothing has changed in the room as far as you Still can Still chanting? Yeah. So since I saw just Krim just like drop to the ground, gonna use three points of lay on hands to get him back up. Right. So he doesn't have to make death saves anymore. Uh, 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 thank you. <laughs> and I hear lay on hands bring him back. <laughs> Yeah. Wow, props to the dungeon room. <laughs> the map room. Uh, Cole, you're up. Okay. Mira, are you okay? Do you need help? I mean, define okay. The answer is no across all borders. All the things. <laughs> Mentally, physically, emotionally. Okay. Is the baby <laughs> still alive? Mm-mm. The baby has stopped crying. So. Oh, That's not an answer. <laughs> stop moving that doesn't tell us if it's crying. dead or not. I look at the baby to see if it's still moving at all. It is not moving. It is not crying. It has a knife in its head or a knife hole in its head that has not repaired itself. Okay. I'm going to say poor little baby and I'm going to reach out my hand to it and I'm going to suddenly swing it to my right and cast sacred flame on the creature. On the shaman mound? <laughs> yes. That is a hit for two damage. Two. <laughs> of course, because I only rolled a two. <laughs> oh, wait, I'm sorry. I have a bonus action. Yeah, mm-hmm. go ahead. I would like to cast Healing Word on Krim. Nice. Eight, Eight. points of healing. It's nice. I stand up and then I go bonk and slash. Bonk, bonk. Bonk and slash. Nine and four. Both of them hit, and this thing starts staggering around a little bit. Two slam attacks again as a thing. Uh, this time because Chris uh, pulled the baby out of it and it hit him miss. with both of them. Pulled the baby out of it. Not miss. <laughs> Ooh. 
So seven bludgeoning, it looks like. It, oh. it furiously okay. is trying to the attack. The shadow you armor explodes and it takes five points of cold damage. Nice. <laughs> Yay, effects. Uh, okay, my turn. It's your turn. Uh, I'm gonna once again uh, take the knife and hold it uh, hilt up, uh, so it's like a cross. And then I will cast Armor Agathis again, as his shadows are missed once again swirls around him, and uh, temporarily hardens into transparent plates and then fades. Excellent. And that's my turn. Uh, then I will take a step back. Uh, strength check. Oh yeah, step. thank you. Step, mm -hmm. step, step. Stepping off the plant thing. He I got a three. Step. Which is a natural one. Probably no, I good, got a four though, because it would have had an opportunity attack. That's all right. He just um, wants to get away. Mira. Rapier. Oh, um, Six piercing. Crossbow. Yay. Okay. And as you do this combo attack with the crossbow following the rapier, um, this shambling mound, as it tries to do another uh, slam attack on you in your direction, uh, it stumbles and falls and topples to the altar and lands in a pile of body parts as they start to come apart and the flesh stops holding it together as much and what did you do away this it whole killed thing it. goes back into like a pile of bodies i kick one of the skulls across the room are we still <laughs> hearing chanting uh there is no more chanting um the baby is still and silent the corpse mound is still and an eerie silence comes over the room no more grappling. All of the hands yeah. that were holding you guys let you go. I high five one. <laughs> As it just disappears. Yeah, yeah, like, good job. High five. Does it high five me back? It tries to, but it's dying. So it's. <laughs> it's like, eh, I too grab slow. it by the wrist and say, come on. Come on, you can do it. It's like, oh, too slow. <laughs> Down low, too slow. Uh, oh, oh, <laughs> bye, bye. Do we hear the werewolf anywhere? Not in your immediate area. Is baby Walter still corporeal, or is his form He is dissipated? still the same as when you pulled him out. Ugh. All right. I'm gonna Assuming we can't that. revert that. Yeah, Mira's going to yeah. wrap him up. And... That poor thing. Um, it seems like we the should mount... put him back in his coffin. Let's bury him. Uh, yes, uh, post haste. Uh, May I make a suggestion? What, yes. what is that? No salt. <laughs> I knew oh, someone would think Only that. Pepper. Could we perhaps jam the secret door shut that the wolf went through and then get some rest? Uh, I think Walter kind of takes precedence right here. I, I am all for taking a, a rest. And... I would mm -hmm. rather take a rest when we are out of this fucking house. <sighs> if we must rest, it'll be either in, I would suggest, servant quarters or once we leave. The, also, like don't a... forget there's a wolf. Yeah, I, 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 well, let's just there's take care of Walter here. and then we'll we'll deal with... We'll the do wolf. the work on the rest thing. Just keep our guard up in case Avaray comes back. Um, oh, oh. I'm you, you, Mira looks pretty bad. Like she is definitely like bleeding, like from her mouth, her nose, her eyes, her ears. Her like that psychic damage really did a number on her. But she's just like carrying dead baby and walking on. <laughs> Cole, could you perhaps heal Mira? I'm almost tapped as, out. As she's uh, well, I asked walking, her earlier, as she as Mira walks by Chris, uh, he kind of uh, puts his hand on her shoulder, uh, helping her uh, through the the water. And when he does a uh, some uh, mist kind of wraps around it and uh, down your shoulder, and you're healed for two points. And you'll notice she'll notice that her nose has kind of stopped bleeding, and look at him and go, "Was that you?" What was what? But what? what do you mean? I I don't know. I guess for some reason I feel well, I was, a little I, better. I, I I was just wishing that I could do something to help you. Uh, is that how is that how it works? I I I don't know. Maybe, but I think we'll figure it out. It definitely seems like your magic kind of conforms to your will. 
I heal her for 13. Okay. Mira's looking great now. She's like, oh, <laughs> like, that's fantastic. I was like, and she's like, oh. she just takes a deep breath out I of have here. One heal left. <laughs> I can keep people from dying. That's all I can do. I can heal people if I need to, but as an emergency, can, let's keep I it totally, going. I could totally heal for that much if I wanted to. I mean, I just. <laughs> guys, I'm you want, sure you, guys you wanna... could, Chris. You are <laughs> yes, a very let's... capable person. <laughs> Let's head back to the crypt. Coffin. As you guys mm -hmm. move the baby out of this chamber, you start to hear a rumbling sound. It's as if the whole house has begun to respond to this action that you've just taken. I don't know if that's a bad rumble or a good rumble. Is there like stones like falling hurry. out of the roof? Now, or, that yeah. you've, now that you've started moving quickly, away quickly. from it, I need everybody to... As, the house is shaky. As we go... Start of every turn, you're going to make me a dexterity save. And you can move through players uh, in this section. It's sort oh. of, you feel um, the whole thing above you. Mm -hmm. As soon as you start stepping on these stairs, you feel like even the floor underneath you, it's all carved stone, but you feel it moving as well. But as soon as you step on these stairs, it's going to get even worse, you see. And cracking in the in the stone... Um, it looks like this whole crypt might even be caving in at some point. Yeah, I'm going to be like just booking it out of here. Yeah, I'm following her. Everybody onto the stairs. Maybe. Mira, you do know yeah. where this, where Walter needs to go, right? Yeah, I do remember where his all right, crypt I'll, is. I'll follow you. And then I'm going to use all my actions following her. Yeah, I'm just going to be like dashing up. For this turn, you don't have to make a deck save because you're in the basement. So I believe the top of the stairs is like 35 to get to the top I believe. I guess deck save once I get at the top to determine that which will go terribly um, I, I do not dex Okay so you fall prone at the end of your turn Okay and there's a dead thing there now lovely Chris, Mira. I, I use my action to help her up and I, I lift her up and say go go So Midnight you see that the <laughs> trap that was has right here has been set off has been set off, and there is some kind of undead thing trying to escape from it. Is it that like a, a trap that's level to the ground, like, or a, a trap you can just jump over? It's a spike pit, but it's fallen in, and it's standing up, and it's stuck in the spikes. Okay, so jumping over it, it shouldn't be able to grab us? No, you should be safe if you're going to jump it. Okay, yeah. Chris, do you have any key points left? Or Krim? Yeah, I have two left. I believe dashing again should get me here. As soon as you move past right here, though, mm -hmm. you can stop yeah, right here for a second. There are things. Yeah, and so like, you oh. have a choice. Do you want to keep running or... Do I keep running or do I try to kill it? <laughs> oh, dear. I don't even know what it is. Because from the stairs, it looks like I can see another one in the room just faintly. Yeah, I mean, I'll scream out, guys, there's things that aren't dead here. Myra, give me Walter. Uh, let me hand him to Krim. He's faster than all of us. All right, I don't know where... she'll pass Walter up and go go straight up the hallway, go right, follow the hallway around to the left, turn left, and then turn right, and then turn left. There's the crypts. Okay. That's I guess good, I'll... good memory, and I'd say he's already been there once, right? I'll risk That's it and awesome. keep bolting. So it's going to just do a swipe at you then? Oh, come on. Ooh. Of course it hits. It hits, of course. Are you immune to... No... No. Poison I'm immune stuff. to disease. So <laughs> I'm resistance to poison. This claw attack is based on more of a necrotic thing. DC 10 con save. Nope. No. I'm paralyzed. So you guys see Midnight just run up and stop all of a sudden in the middle of the hall. We don't even see anything hit her? You see a hand come out. Because I did yell and warn, warn them there are two not dead things Prim, here. Don't go that way. <laughs> Take a right here. <laughs> <laughs> and then follow it around to the left and go straight. <laughs> yeah, like, the good like thing, Maya said. The good thing is you see this creature looks like it's already been injured a little bit midnight. Mm -hmm. um, maybe something was through here already. If you're very perceptive, you can see a little bit of werewolf fur on its claws. If it's paralyzed me, I can't do anything for a full minute. I'm going to get wire back. I'm going to carry the baby and I'm going to dash. Since I can't fly, I only have 70 feet. Oh, God. Yeah, so I'm going to start flying as soon as... There's a bit more opening. This is nah. really a very tight area to fly in. You're, you're pretty much just walking and hitting your wings on the walls. Can I jump 
wall to wall since I'm a bird. I don't know how that. Like you can matrix it a little bit, but this is like a seven by five corridor. I so, so yeah. wish we could see that. It's hard to <laughs> it's hard to to do a bunch of flying moves in here. At the start of your turn, you have to make me a deck save because the whole place is moving. Oh yeah, and that's enough. So as an action, I'm gonna push this one forward to give me enough space. Oh boy. Oh boy. Okay. Oh, look at that. Oh boy. <laughs> so it gets pushed back. Yeah. Then I'm gonna push on forward. Okay. So bonus action, I'm going to use one of my key points to dash. Step of the wind. And you see another one um, of these things waiting in the kitchen area. I'm going to swipe at you as well. Misses. Yep. Can you reach right there? Can I? <laughs> I want to say yeet it into the coffin, but I'm going to be a bit more respectful <laughs> than that, and then wait until my next turn. <laughs> that is exactly where it says Baby Walter, or it says Walter Durst on the tombstone there. And uh, you, because you just have to take a second of, after all this blurred motion, to like, yeah, that's the one. I'm just going to win there. Chris, deck save, please, as the floor starts shaking for you as well. Then I level the crossbow at this... Uh undead pale skin creature and i let loose a bolt you see it takes a good chunk out of it, it looks like it was probably about 25 percent of its health gone and then i end my turn behind the wall trying to use it as cover i just want to i just want to give props to crim for like matrix <laughs> matrix seeing his way through a hallway full of zombies <laughs> i have no idea how he's there already that's amazing <laughs> Just a surprise oh 30 feet will land me right on top of the trap uh all right, well, she'll stop right behind Chris and she'll take a page from his book and shoot the ghoul with her magical crossbow. So that's a plus one to each of those. 23 to hit, six piercing. Sorry, bonus action. Oh. Bardic inspiration to midnight. So be like, midnight, you can break free. You can do it. You can do it. Think positive. That creature is down, though. The one in the pit is still moving, but it's stuck in the pit. And can't attack us if we were to jump over it. Okay, I'm going to dash forward and jump across the pit, and I'll dash to there. Uh, it's going to make an opportunity attack against you there, then. That's fine. As you move out. 13. I have an 18. Now it's its turn. Ooh. Oh, no. 19 ties. Oh, 19 no. 19 to hit for 11 piercing damage on midnight. And then this one's turn, and it's going to start running up towards Mira. Wait, if that's on midnight, it's up a crit. Is it really? Unparalyzed. Unfortunately. Why'd you have to speak? Yeah, it's enough to drop you, I think, because that was a six on the dice roll. So Midnight, paralyzed by this creature's attacks, is now no longer paralyzed as she falls limp. And this other creature comes up and... Doesn't hit. Yay, saves. I hate saves. Okay, so yeah, you're going to make a death save now, I guess. You're good. That's one success. Chris, can you do that handy thing that you did earlier on Midnight? So I have no idea. Turn. I'll try. I think that'd be a good idea. <laughs> it's Crim's turn here. He's got the baby in one hand, two in front of him. Yep, so stopping from that motion, I'm going to slowly cradle down, then move forward and put it in the coffin. Okay. And then wait for rumblings or sound or light. You actually see... As you place the baby in the coffin and you're pu you're pulling the top of it over, like the, t the tomb lid over top mm -hmm. of the coffin, you see the spirit or the bones and everything. It all shines and shimmers in there. And you hear like a giggle of a baby. And uh, it's like it's a relaxing like, oh, like, yay. For the first time, it feels joy for you know and uh you are you feel pretty con convinced that um you've done you've done what you needed to do here yeah, i nod to myself and then go back to however the, the building is still shaking hesitantly but it's still going here i can't uh, the you, you do have to make me a deck save before you move i, I almost didn't do it because you're crim so Hey, Chris, you're up. Deck save. That's a beefy nice. number. All right, so I'm going to go over to uh, Midnight. I'm going to place my hand upon her forehead, and I'm going to say, all right, all right, all right. Uh, uh, be healed! 
nothing happens. And then I go into a panic and I just pull out one of the potions uh, Vasani gave me the other night and then uh, I just smash it on her face because I don't see a mouth. There is a hole. There it is does. a visor that is semi-open. This is the first word she says when she comes back to consciousness. I don't know how you work, all right? You're a stone woman wearing metal. There's a zombie right here, all right? We have other things to talk about. How much am I healed for? You're healed for 11. Yay. Ooh, that's a big roll. Resetting the save. Nice roll. Okay. That's what, I, that's what I'm here for. <laughs> that was a great heal. <laughs> Mira, you're up. <laughs> All right. Uh, she's going to swipe at this thing with her rapier. Swipey swipe. Do it. I'm assuming an 11 does not hit. But <laughs> I did find out that as long as I make an attack with a melee weapon, even if it doesn't hit, I can still shoot with my crossbow. So I will do that. That it does hit. That one's Seven good. piercing. And this thing's like just got a limp going. It's not looking like it's going to even be able to chase you if you run away. All right. I'm going to run away if that's what I see. Um, <laughs> oh, yeah. I guess you still have movement if you want to try. Uh, f- right. 5, 10, 15, 20. I'll try to go to the... Just uh, need to make me a deck save to make... Oh, you know, right. You're right. Your All footing. right. 26. I roll natural 20. <laughs> five, we have 10, had so many 20, nat 20s on five, five, saves 30. today. It I would like one. Attack. All right, so I can get up past Cole. It makes one movement. last bite attack at you as you leave, and it's for six piercing. Dang it, you said it looked like it wouldn't hurt me. It won't follow you. Oh, okay. Yeah. There is a difference. There is a difference. It lunges with its face, but that's all you get. Am I too close to use my crossbow on it? Can't you can see. hit this one with your crossbow, no problem. Mira's gonna go, just run! We gotta get out of here! <laughs> just running got me paralyzed. I cast Sacred Flames on the one right there. And it dodges deftly. And then I'm going to run past Mira and say, Excuse me, pardon me, pardon me, excuse me, to there. And that's my turn. Excuse me, pardon me, pardon me, excuse me. <laughs> Ghoul's turn. It's going to make another bite attempt. Mm, that's on me. That's stun. no. I whack this I man. Some... Well, uh, that's a hit. And 13. Move. You carve this thing right into. Um, stops making evil ghouling sounds and starts making gurgling sounds as it falls to the floor. It's like, okay, let's go. And I believe that's all as far as I can go since I attacked. Since the ghoul down here went away, I'm gonna like, proceed okay. upstairs. It's still coming back around again. It just doesn't know. It's not that smart. Oh. So. It's not smart or fast. <laughs> it's going the other way. This is MRT. Way. You sort of hear, um, coming from this area, you hear a banging sound now. But you, And you're wondering, is that from where I left baby Walter? Because you just put him in here. But it's actually coming from the other side of the thing. You're hearing a banging sound in this. Here. From when you're standing there, you can see that the slab in front of this tomb is actually moving. A little. It says Mr. Durst oh. on it, and it's, this slab is starting to shake. Yeah, I'm just gonna keep going. <laughs> um, up to here, and then action dash. So there another 35 feet. So you are upstairs, oh, and you still have movement. Yep, 35 feet. So you make it to back up to the fourth floor and i'm gonna make sure that every door is open and then that would end my thing uh all right seeing the undead fall he's gonna start moving ahead trying to squeeze past and then dash kind of seeing that this is the general gist of the momentum and in my turn there and then he'll look back and say keep up slow pokes chris you hear and see the dust moving over here when you go past mr durst's tomb do I still need to make a deck save? All right, 19. Great She's dexes. about five feet up the stairs. She dashed. Okay, I'm going to dash. Oh, I got to do a deck save, don't I? Yeah. 15. Okay, I am going to dash for the steps. I have Midnight. 10 feet left. Okay, so you're going to be on the stairs next turn. Uh, Midnight, you're up. And as you pass by this last, uh, this crypt entrance, you hear, you finally see this wall that's been battered by something for the longest time break open and you see the 
corpse of Mr. Durst compiling out. Oh, okay. I see that. That's yeah, disgusting. Yeah, he's, he's not coming at you right now, but he's... Yeah, but he's I see just, all the token once you put it out in darkness. He just That's pulled disgusting. out of there, yeah. And he's like... Bleh. You can see he's... Like, it's not human anymore. It's Basically, he's been trapped in there for hundreds of years. And now that the house is finally moving around, he's finally free to get out of all his rage. Uh, his, his wife killed his new baby son. Uh, he just... He, He's learned over the years that he's killed his own kids by trapping them in their room. This guy's angry. I have the number of a good therapist if you want to talk, talk it out. Want me to roll that deck save? Yeah, give me a deck save. Okay, so you uh, fall prone, but you are able to use half your movement. To get, to get up and up. then just dash for the stairs. Yeah. Which I believe we put everyone on the stairs somewhere, at least. Yeah, like, I'm five feet up, Cole's five feet in front of me. So yeah, he's ten feet up. All you guys with me, and copy this. Uh, yeah, I'm running up the stairs. Chuk, 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 chuk. Conga, conga, conga. Do, 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 do. Okay, so you can Running hear this from thing the zombies. You. This this ghoul of Mr. Durst is chasing you, but you all emerge. There we, there we go. Okay. Yeah. I was like wondering, like, why are we still down here? <laughs> oh, I remember this room. Spooky. Okay, so this is attic level. Okay, so you guys are on the fourth floor in the attic again. Yeah, um, that's 30 feet of movement. I'm gonna kick Dex. open this door and then I'm gonna... Dex save. Oh yeah. Dex save. Keep forgetting that part. I know, Dex like save. you, the deck save. Okay, you're good. And then Kim opens the door and then dashes down stairs for another 20, 30, 50 feet down. So I still have 30 feet down the stairs, and I'm blocked. Oh. I'm blocked again. <laughs> you can move that far. Please. Krim's gonna escape the house where I just and all kind of just die here. <laughs> the house will just cra- collapse on us. Krim's the only one who escapes. Deck save, I go. Yay! <laughs> here, here. And to here would be five feet left for a full dash. Run, Chris, run! Use my movement and my action to dash. So if you could move me to the, as closest to the door as I could get. Right Mira. up in front of the secret door. Follow after him. Oh, I will. We don't want to stay here. <laughs> All right. My turn? Yeah. All right. 24. Oh my god. Nice roll. If your movement can is you 30, then you can get to right here. Okay. Yep. We're all cluttering the escape route. Cole, you're up. Deck save. Come on. Somebody fail this. <laughs> oh. Why? Why should we fail? <laughs> Was that a fail or save? That's a you're pass. Good. You're good. Okay. I come around here. I okay. bump into Mira, and I said, oh, sorry. <laughs> hey, Krim, you're up. Okay. Krim's probably already on the first floor. Deck save. Krim's making lunch in the kitchen. He's good. Yeah. Don't eat the kid. Don't eat in the kitchen. You, you've noticed that you can open your wings finally up here, and, you know, you could fly down there if you wanted to. Yeah, I'm going to dive down. I don't know how high that is, how deep that is, but I'm going to fly down, so just less movement. That is, I'll tell you exactly, 20 to 30 feet from that floor to the bottom. Okay, so I'm going to fly down and then dash. So I still have 40 feet of movement. <laughs> so you're outside. <laughs> I'm just going to go um, wait at the front door. I'm going to keep it open with my arms. Okay, you moved so fast that you didn't even notice that uh, the, the bricks that are boarding up the windows... <laughs> it have, uh, have started to fall out as well. Um, everything is coming apart in this place. Midnight, you're up. Next save. Am scared. We could have dove out that window upstairs. Would you want to take oh, the fall damage? Uh, uh, <laughs> okay. So Midnight topples, and as she does, she falls Where to Dick? the floor. Oh, you already said the result. What's that? I think she still had Bardic. No, she had... Actually, you do. No. Yes, I do. 
Yeah, yeah. he gave it back to you. But the DM already gave their soul. You could, you could still do it, I guess, if you want to. You need, <laughs> you need, you're nice. gonna need a four here. Oh, I did. Okay. <laughs> so as you're falling through the floor, and you can see you would have fallen through the floor, you hear one of Midnight's or one of Mira's uh, jingles in your head. <laughs> and you, 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 I nope. You're inspired enough to uh, to hold on no. to yourself. Okay, so you're able to keep running. Unlike Bird Boy, I can't just go through the hole. <laughs> so I get to 40 at the top of the stairs, and I guess I'll use the rest of the dash to get as far down as to the stairs as I can. Jump down, superhero landing, and then I'm gonna bring you back down to the crypt. I don't want to take fall damage. <laughs> I don't have much health. Okay, I think you're there. And... Now it's Chris's turn. Okay, I'm gonna uh, fall the same path, go down 20 feet, and then, ju uh, and then jump off the edge and free fall the last 20 feet. Deck save though, right? Deck save for Actually, I'm just going to... Uh, all right. As this whole thing is starting to shake, the whole house is toppling, you guys are able to somehow surf your way through this thing <laughs> of broken boards and buckling things snapping under the weight of the... You know what? I'm just going to jump off the top of the stair, the stair banister. I'm just going to fall the 40 feet. Are you well, sure about that? Yep, I am. Roll okay. 3d6. Not worth it. Semi so worth take it. Take nine damage and have a sprain. He still has ankle. the armor. And then minus nine. Bring me down to thirteen. Okay, so then I I do that and then I use my action to dash. So wherever that gets me, I don't know. And you have whatever Here's movement you have left. Uh, <laughs> you got to make a deck save to land on the ground. Uh, that high of a fall uh, to land on your feet if you want to continue okay. moving. Boop. And look at that. Nice. He does like a whole superhero move. Boom. So you're, able, you're able to continue moving to where finish your movement, and it's Mira's turn. All right. Uh, deck save. 14. Um, dash, wow. dash. Okay. Move me 60 feet. Uh, I'm going to estimate that that's somewhere right A little bit ahead midnight. of me. Yeah. Right about there. Yeah, so you have a, a 10 foot drop basically uh, to get you onto the main floor where Chris just disappeared by you. A drop is worth it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but I don't have any more movement because I dashed. So. Yeah. Okay, Cole. The last one upstairs now. Oh! But I'm going to use my inspiration. Okay. Right? You roll. Roll again. Oh! meter beat right oh wow okay you're good you held on okay i'm dashing that was close would that be like right around behind me wow everybody really ran there eh? to be right behind, behind me. midnight there oh i'm down there okay crim okay, you're up <laughs> it's already waiting by the exit <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I'm just gonna wait until everyone's pass and then I'm gonna go on. I'm just gonna keep holding the door. Good night. Dex save, please. The worst possible save. Yay. Oh my God. You said it's only a 10 foot drop from here? Yeah. I'm taking the. I'm jumping. No promises. Because you're gonna... jumping on purpose. I can take damage, it doesn't matter. So you land it's just a d6, I think. Take d6 damage. That uses half your movement. Plus, so you have about 10 feet or 15 feet left. I'll use the 15 to keep on trucking. You are now there. Do you just hear the crunching of even more boards as I just drop? Uh, Krim, because you've had enough time to sit there for a second, you can see where um, there were werewolf claw marks on that door that you're holding now. And they look fresh. And then they stop. Like, obviously, it's probably as soon as you guys entombed the baby, Avare was able to get out of here, so... You guys hadn't seen any sign of her until now. Okay, I still keep going with my mad dash to the door, so another dex roll. Did I fall down, I guess? I yeah. fall down. So I use my action to get up and I keep going. 
You do notice, though, that as you are face down to the ground, as you are so close and you've made a thud out of the dumbwaiter area here. Okay. There shouldn't be anything in the dumbwaiter. Nothing can fit in that tiny I was about to say, thing. we couldn't fit unless it's a halfling corpse zombie. <laughs> Come you on. See or a baby. A swarm of baby swarm. rats. Well, baby, they're not baby rat. Rats. <laughs> doot, 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 doot. They're large. <laughs> Adult rats, but they're they're small to you compared to. Okay, you. now I'm really about. I was like, oh shit, oh shit, oh shit! I get up and start sprinting for the door. Don't leave me here with the rats. So you can probably get <laughs> out from where you are if you want to avoid the rats. Um, I do. I want to do both those things. Okay, so Chris breaks through the plane of the of the house and finally gets some fresh air as the dust is going up behind him like an Indiana Jones action scene. By you're the out, gods. Did you see those rats? Mir is going to leap over the banister and drop down 10 feet. What have I started? And as you land, you see there's a swarm of rats sitting right here. And nope. uh, they are piling out of the dumbwaiter still and trying to find a victim to attack. Mir is going to call up, watch out for the rats, and run for the front door. I think she would be through these doors about 10 feet. Okay, I'm dashing down the stairs. She doesn't I'm want to drop. jumping. But jumping's fun. It's too high up for me. I can't handle that. You don't like heights. You got it. Where'd those rats come from? I hate rats. It looks like they might have a chance to attack you before your turn's over. Before you get out. Uh, Krim, you're standing by the door there still. Uh, you can see you're holding the door for people and you can see the rats piling out still. Yeah, um, I'm afraid to let go of the door, so I'm just going to stay there. and then Until he has to. <laughs> Yeah. Then dodge. Take the dodge action. Dodge action. Yep. Okay. More deck save. Yeah, I guess it it would still be a deck save because the house is still shaking, and you managed to hold on. I'm just leaving the house. Fuck. Screw those rats. Not dealing with rats. Okay, so the rats are gonna take a bite at you while you in. while you run away. They miss. They can't and... break through your midnight armor. And as I get to the door, like. You're going to have to move me, I think. I'm going to get to the door outside the house and hold that door open for everyone else. So I'm holding the front door open. So I'm like kind of like in between, like right here, holding the, just holding the door open, trying to push everyone out. Okay. Chris, you're up. Outside the house. <laughs> I'm outside the house? Yeah, you've made it outside already. Trim was holding the door friendly. open for you last time and you just booked it out, so. Who is still in the house? Is do I, I do a quick head count. Who do I see? You would see Krim holding the door still at the end of the hall. Um, Mira has almost gotten all the way out, and Midnight's almost out, and Cole is still nowhere to be seen from you. All right. Point of view. Okay. Krim, uh, we've lost Cole. Just shut the door. No, I don't say that. <laughs> uh, I I don't do anything. I, I do a head count, and I uh, wait anxiously with a held breath, with bated breath, to see if Cole makes it out. The swarm rats. of rats starts advancing. And it's going to take an attack against Cole. Can I defend myself with a ration? <laughs> it missed. <laughs> the it rat missed swarm anyway. is not able to bite through your triton uh, oral armor, and they're hurting their teeth and turning away. <laughs> Mira, you're up. Awesome. Mira's just going to book it out of the house and... She'll kind of run as far as she can before, like, her feet kind of get caught up outside, and then she'll kind of tumble to the ground, panting. Okay. Cole, you're up. Krim's still holding the door for you. Rats are trying to get you. What's up? Run. Okay, I am going to deftly avoid an opportunity attack and run. And as I run past Krim, I'm going to yell, Come on, Krim! You have a speed of 30? So your dash is 60? So your dash okay. is 60, or your um, if you disengage from the rat swarm... My dash is 60. I'm 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30. So the rats are going to make yeah. another bite at you, is what I was getting I'm get, Yeah, I'm going to make a partial dash, not the whole they, thing. The rats can't hurt you. <laughs> so that's perfect. Uh, all right, so you, you, you get out. And, and I turn to Chris. Krim's still in there! He's Where's just, Mira? 
He was holding the door, waiting for everybody to leave. So as soon as the last person's through, Krim is moving through too. She's out in the field, like 20 feet from the house. Oh. So everybody has made it out successfully. Yay! And behind you, you see the house toppling and more boards falling. You hear the screams of rats and other things that you didn't know were even alive. And they're pouring out of the walls now. They're falling out from between things. You can see rats being crushed by bricks and falling debris. Getting hard to stand this close to the place, so you guys probably back away because the, the smoke is coming up from trouble. And you have successfully lived through Thirst Manor. The Death House. Yay! <sighs> well, some of us did. <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, as far as you know, everything's peachy. Everything's fine. <laughs> You know, you're freaking me out, Greg. <laughs> That's his job. <laughs> I know the point, yeah. Um, all right. Yeah, so as you guys um, move away from the place a little bit, uh, it's probably a good time for us to take our uh, intermission, eh? Uh, mm -hmm. What's the idea on everybody's brain right now? You want to get as far as you can from the house? You want to go back get to the house? Get as far as we can and just rest. Is the house collapsing or is it just totally still? The house is collapsing. Okay, I'm going to run away. So you guys see along the road here that leads away from the mansion. There is actually an old fire pit set up and it looks like a makeshift campsite, like a couple hundred feet down the road. And so you're able to meander your way through this little campsite area. Does anyone need healing? If we're going to take a long rest, it wouldn't be worth it. But Midnight's yeah. looking a little bit banged up. If you can see well, on this I'm map, I'm asking because someone's going to need to keep watch, right? Okay, so welcome back to the camp, everybody. Back to the light of the living. Out of back that to... horrible house. Back to the land of the living. Okay, so as you guys... Um stumble out of this the collapsing house and you collect yourselves and look back and finally see the house for what it was the illusions that shrouded the house and the curse that kept it here are now gone and what remains is just a pile of rotten wood and toppled bricks the signpost on the house is still there it still depicts a windmill but the colors are faded and worn by time and there's no sign of those illusory children who lured you into the house originally you all feel the silence and peace wash over as, as the dust is settling. And you're getting your bearings, and, and you find this campsite. You, you look around. The road heading west is cleared of some of its fog. And there are fields that run along this road that are lined with rows of dead vines. And uh, you see they're barren of life right now. You see an area on the road just to he up ahead that looks like this old campsite, and you guys all make your way there. And uh, it's a makeshift fire pit, and there's a fence that sits just off, just off to your uh, west, and it, it's sort of one of many of these types of fences that are near the road. They look like um, old farmhouses that. Um, at one time they grew grapes the walls of the farmhouses are partially collapsed and the roofs are are, are gone um the, this whole area looks like it's been abandoned many years ago you can see that um like a tree has fallen over into the house that you're near and uh it looks like it's been exposed to the elements for at least a hundred years from what the looks of it are and uh further south you see a handful of small farmhouses and lush green fertile farmland and it disappears into fog that it floats just above a river about a mile in the distance just to your south and then as the wind is picking up some somewhat you feel it's chill and you feel like it would be a good idea to get that fire going and you get a, a good view of actually to the west of what it looks like in the distance and you see the outlines of what could be a town or a village out there uh, whenever the the fogs move enough to give you a glimpse for a brief moment. And that's the direction you guys were heading before you were diverted into the Durst Manor. And uh, so it's just, just over a mile away or so that uh, it seems like there's a village sitting there disappearing into the fog. 
So, yeah. What do you guys want to do? 